Good morning, everyone. For it our voice of here Gerardi Sapphire. Welcome to Sapphire Gardens for the third day of the Vitality Cup. Uh, well, it's not me. Between Glamorgan and Derbyshire, they will be resuming on time this morning at 11 o'clock. Glamorgan Cricket would like to thank all of their sponsors and partners for their continued support besides extending a very warm welcome to everyone here today at Sapphire Gardens. A warm welcome in particular to the players and officials from Derbyshire, as well as to our two match umpires, Rob Bailey and Neil Bainton, plus match referee Mike Smith. The official Glamorgan website, www.glamorgancricket.com, contains details of how to purchase tickets for all forthcoming matches taking place here at Sapphire Gardens this summer. That includes the internationals here on the 28th of May when England meets Pakistan, as well as on the 13th of September when England play Australia. Also on the official Glamorgan website, the details of the various matchday hospitality packages available for all home games here this summer at Sapphire Gardens. That includes the games in the Vitality T20 Blast, as well as the 100. If you're seeking a score sheet for today's game, they're available free of charge from reception. Reception is situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. Also available from reception are copies of the 2024 Glamorgan Yearbook, as well as copies of Chris Cook's testimonial brochure, the testimonial brochure is available for a minimum donation of £5. The Glamorgan Club shop run by Missouri Sports is also open today. It's situated opposite Gate 2. It will be open until the close of play this evening and as always. It's selling a wide range of cricket equipment and other items, including replica Glamorgan kit, plus a range of recently published cricket books. Now, as far as refreshments are concerned, a full range of food and drink can be purchased in the Pyramid Lounge, which is situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. Remember, this is a brand new initiative for 2024, and the Lewis Lounge on the top floor of the National Cricket Centre is now a viewing area only for members. Snacks, though, can still be purchased from the vending machines situated at the rear of the indoor school. The CC4 Museum of Welsh Cricket is also open today. The museum is situated on the first floor of the National Cricket Centre and it contains a number of displays celebrating the long and very proud heritage of cricket here in Wales. The museum also has a number of second-hand cricket books as well as old Glamorgan yearbooks all of which are for sale. And the museum will be open until the end of the tea interval. Finally, a reminder that we stand against all forms of discrimination. There is no place for it in our sport. We will embrace and celebrate differences everywhere, knowing that with diversity, together we are stronger. Here at Glamorgan County Cricket Club, we are dedicated to raising the game. So, if you witness any form of discrimination, you can challenge it and call it out by contacting, in strictest confidence, your nearest steward. Also, the number shortly to appear on the replay screen, you can send a text message. Many thanks for your support. Diochen Bauria.
Very good morning and welcome to Sophia Gardens on a dry and reasonably sunny morning for day three and potentially the last day of Glamorgan against Derbyshire. I'm Nick Webb. Alongside me is Dave Fletcher of BBC Radio Derby. Glamorgan 74 for four, lead by 113. How do you see things, Dave? Well, uh, yeah, you're right. We won't be here tomorrow. Uh, unless it rains and it's not forecast to rain. I think this game will be over today. Derbyshire what, trailing by 113, or Glamorgan leading by 113. Um, if they can get another 80, I think they'd be right in the box seat. Derbyshire really need to uh, get among the wickets before lunch, I would suggest. And uh, if they can restrict, oh, I don't know what would they like to chase. We did try and uh, get it out of Wayne Manson. Mm. I didn't expect <laughs> it would give me a number. Um, and obviously the number is as few as possible. But, yeah, it's whoever plays spin the best, isn't it? Or the better of the two sides. Alex Thompson's going to be huge. I expect Mason Crane to be equally important. And Wayne Madsen trying to take a chair out into the middle in an amusing fashion. <laughs> that would be novel. <laughs> if he could sit in the slips on, a, on, a, on the uh, 12th man's chair. But yeah, it's been brilliant, uh, to coin a phrase, <laughs> uh, which was completely accidental. What I would say is you look around the country and you see an awful lot of games that are, you know, 600 plays, 500, and they all shake hands at the end of it. Nobody wants to see that. It doesn't do the game any good. It can't attract supporters of, of the two sides or even the neutrals. And this has been wonderful because the ball has a chance. And uh, despite the fact it's a kookaburra, perhaps it isn't the kookaburra ball that's the issue. Perhaps it's the pitches. Well, frankly... Um Amazed that any ground staff can produce any 22-yard uh, surface oh, after the weather we've had. So uh, yes, and a, and a well done to everyone, absolutely whatever they play like. A huge shout-out, as I believe the kids say these Good days, uh, to the ground staff. Yeah, because it's, it's been a terrific pitch on which to play cricket. Uh, looks like Alex Thompson's going to open the bowling, so uh, fancy that. Spin, spin, spin at the, uh, at the River Taff end. Indeed, Dave Fletcher will be uh, departing to put his spin on things for BBC Radio Derby listeners uh, with uh, vast amounts of Sunday morning riz, as I believe they say these days. Uh, 74 for four, which leaves me to uh, commentate on Alex Thompson's opening joust with Colin Ingram and with Mason Crane. And uh, Glamorgan utilising the night watchman. They had options, really, because James Harris has done the job in the past. No Tim van der Huchten, who is the, probably their first choice watch night watch person. There was no night hawking basball style from Mason Crane. He just uh, blocked it out until it got too dark. 74 for four. And... A quiet Sunday morning here at Sophia Gardens with a few more spectators trickling in as uh, we speak. And Mason Crane will face the first ball of the morning from Alex Thompson with a slip, a leg slip and a short leg and Crane is forward defending. There's also a short mid-wicket. Mid on, deep mid-wicket and... Backward square leg, stroke leg gully on the leg side. As the off spinner Thompson bowls the leg spinner Crane, who is forward defending to a Niren Donald at short leg. On the off side, well, they're not going to hit against the spin, is the Derbyshire thinking, because there's just a, a cover and a mid off in addition to the slip. As Crane stretches forward and defends. Now, how will Glamorgan go about things? Will they try to defend and accumulate? Or will there be a degree of hitting out on the grounds that uh, you're bound to get a good ball sooner or later? A lot of turn in this pitch as down the pitch comes Crane and then defends when he gets there. Back to the bowler. We're likely to see, I think, a, a pattern of uh, Thompson bowling as long as he can at... Uh, the River Taff end, the far end from us. There's a few Sunday morning joggers and cyclists and walkers proceed along the path behind him. Next delivery sees Crane pushing forward, getting right to the pitch of the ball. And uh, 
defending it back to the bowler. Mason Crane's first first class innings for Glamorgan. Uh, second first class innings, rather. First first class match. He was bowled by Thompson for 13 in the first knock. Took four for 60. As uh, Crane defends that one out on the off side. So if you are just logging on, tuning in, whatever, you have missed one maiden over. 74 for four. BBC Sport Online, Dave Fletcher, BBC Radio Derby, Dave Pritchard and myself, Nick Webb, are your commentary team Two once more. Plus interjections from uh, Dr Andrew Hignall. Blair Tickner, the uh, New Zealand paceman, is in the attack from uh, the Cathedral Road end. As the sun comes out, there are patches of blue sky dotted around. And Dave Fletcher is back in time to uh, describe the first over from the Cathedral Road end. Yeah, Blair Tickner, looking forward to this. Uh, he, he was unable to bowl yesterday evening, not because uh, he was unfit or anything, but the umpire said he was too quick. You're not allowed to bowl, you're far too quick. Can't remember the last time that happened to Derbyshire, but there we go. Uh, here we go. He's on his way, and he's going to be bowling to Colin Ingram, who's on 10, and Ingram defends the first delivery up to uh, Lewis Reese at mid on. A couple of slips, man on the backward point boundary. Hmm. Interestingly. Um, cover mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and a square leg on the boundary, and a long leg as well down there in the far distance. That's uh, Alex Thompson, who's just getting his breath back after a frantic first over. To be honest, I think I'd rather have a man on the cover boundary than the backward point boundary for Ingram. Yeah. Does seem a bit strange, but here comes a Tickner again, and that one is driven to the cover fielder, Anuj Dahl, extra cover really. And there's no run, but uh, a show of intent from Ingram. It was a big flourish of the bat for no runs, but uh, with the ball in its 29th over, it doesn't sound an awful lot, but uh, it does tend to go soft around now. And uh, so the bowlers have to work harder, and conversely, the batters also have to work mm. harder to hit it any distance. Yes, timing it has been an issue for most of the batters as uh, this next delivery from Tickner is driven up towards mid-on where it's fielded by Lewis Rees. Plenty of long sleeve sweaters out there. It's still quite chilly despite the sunshine. But uh, Yeah, touch better than yesterday. Well, it was supposed to be colder today than yesterday. Was it? Was it? Yeah, my, uh, my travelling companions oh, right. were all complaining about how cold it was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they weren't happy at all, really. Uh, there's nothing anybody can do about it, clearly, but, yeah, they were very cold. As Tickner is in and bowls, and that one is driven, <laughs> and it's stopped by the knee of Anish Dahl, falling backwards at uh, cover. Again, a fairly uh, aggressive enough shot from Ingram. Have we lost, you, you, you might have already mentioned this, and I apologise if you have, we lost five overs yesterday due to the bad light. We don't get them back because we lost them after six o'clock. <laughs> was the exp that's the explanation these are these <laughs> these are the regulations take this in again that one's on his hips and it's turned down to long leg for a single Thompson gets around to do the fielding it is only a single Ingram was quite interested in a second but I'm not sure that uh, Mason Crane was particularly interested so Ingram moves on to 11 75 for four lead 114 I don't think, I think anything above 180 is going to be tricky to uh, chase down. They do have the, they would have the advantage of uh, time, although the forecast for tomorrow morning is not great. But it's better in the afternoon, which is the worst way round. <laughs> <laughs> when, one, when, yes. when both sides are desperate for it, desperate to win. They will both not, sides yeah, would prefer will, a conclusion tonight, I think. We'll stay around if you don't mind. No, no, I'm more than happy to hang around, but it's just very frustrating. That's, a, that's clearly some kind of park run, is it, in the far distance? Do they call them park runs? I think park run runs here is on a Saturday. Oh, OK. Well, they're, just, they're doing it in their spare time? Actually, there's, I believe there might be a, a charity run today. Oh, OK. There's a lot of them. Here's Tickner, bowls to Crane, who flicks this away nicely, out towards uh, 
A square leg boundary where Sam Connors will do the fielding. He'll pick up a single. He'll move on to four. He'll keep the strike. And uh, Little Morgan are 76 for four. They lead by 115. Good morning to Leighton, who has emailed me on nickweb2017 at gmail.com. You can also email Fletch Cricket at gmail.com. Leighton says, good morning. Looking forward to watching your coverage. Enjoyed it so far. He likes our interaction. Consists of two blokes of a similar age taking the mick out of each other. Yes, very much. Um, realistically, Glamorgan need another 70 runs, in my opinion. Hope that we can bowl them out for less than 190. Cheers, says Leighton. R from Burryport originally, but now living on the Wirral. Ah, good man. Good man. What a fine place to live. As Thompson starts a new over, there's the first appeal of the morning as uh, Crane pushes forward, but it was uh, more more uh, sort of gentle warming up of throats rather than anything serious. Two runs added so far. As down the wicket comes Crane, drives on the onside diving stop by Dahl at mid-wicket. Anish Dahl seems to be a ball magnet. Yes, everywhere. He's Dar such a good fielder, though. Derbyshire obviously put him in prime positions. As Crane is forward, there's a very optimistic appeal because it was a good stride forward. There, Mason Crane. What I would say is that the second Glamorgan use of the heavy roller was this morning. So uh, it might just deaden it for a, a short while. As Crane turns one off his legs, he'll get at least one run, probably two. There should be two, and indeed... Oh, dear, that's a long slide from Sam Connors, who went down deliberately, but then found himself sliding probably rather further than he'd expected towards the boundary. He was safely in, well inside the ropes. But the ball behind as well at one point. Um, shows you that the outfield is still somewhat soft after all the rain that we've had all year. As uh, that sees Crane pushing forward into the offside, fielded by the Sun Hatted Chapel. 78 for 4, 117 is the lead for Glamorgan. Well spotted with the heavy roller, it might help them for a while. Mm. You've got to, get, uh, got to get to a ground early to get past anything past me, uh, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me. <laughs> I missed it completely. Is uh, Thompson in bowls and uh, turned away on the leg side by Crane through the infield and uh, out towards deep mid wicket. Another single taken. They are all welcome. Uh, Derbyshire apparently have had their two yes. heavy rolls. Yes, that was going to be my next thing, yes. saying that Derbyshire don't have a heavy roll left. So. Uh, but we've seen so often Sophia Gardens pitches in the last couple of years just flatten out on days three and four, but this doesn't appear to be a typical pitch, so we have no idea really which way this pitch will go on day three. It would be a remarkable flattening out, wouldn't it, if this one did flatten out, mm. given, given what's happened over the first two days. But following, following on from what Leighton said, he said, what, another 75, I think he said, which takes them just beyond 180. Rogers asked me on Twitter uh, how many... Do I think uh, Derbyshire can chase and uh, less than 200? Mm. I mean, they can. I think 200 would be about yeah. a 50 50 chase. Yeah, they can. They can try. 220 in Glamorgan's favour. Yes, to have to score 180 in Derbyshire's favour. Yeah, I think so. So in the balance at the moment, as Tickner begins a new over, and that one strikes the pad of Crane. A big appeal, not out, says. Umpire Bailey, there's a shy at the stumps as well there from an Iron Donald. They go through for a leg bye. So presumably missing leg. I'm guessing. Are we going to get a replay now? 80 for four. The score moves on to. Uh, yeah, it's missing leg by uh, oh. distance, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, fifth stump. Yeah. yeah. But, um, fair, yeah. Fair play to, uh, f to Blair for... Crane, I think, beaten by the, the pace there on that occasion. He is sharp. This is our first, everybody's first view of him in county cricket. 
go to central districts in New Zealand over the course of our winter as he comes in now and bowls to England, who drives very pleasantly. But just to the right of Anish Dahl, who gets around to do the fielding, no run. Yes, Ingram has been known to hit a very fierce off drive, but he's trying to today. And the ball is just not beating the cover fielder. It's a, a soft ball and a soft outfield, which is uh, not a good combination for Mr Ingram to deal with. So we get to see Tickner with the Cookerborough and next week we get to see him with the Dukes. That might be interesting as he's in now and balls to Ingram who just defends this up to mid-off. It's like Chapel is the man who does the fielding there in his sun hat and shades. Too cool for this team, I think, that chap. 80 for four, a lead of 119. But I'm looking forward to seeing him with the uh, with the Dukes on a pitch at the County Ground in Derby, which has been a bit like the pitch here at Sophia Gardens, certainly last season, where results were very difficult to come by. As Tickner is in, and that is driven, and that's a glorious drive for four runs out to the extra cover boundary. There was a dive from Anuj Dahl, but that's a beautiful shot, the best of the day so far from Colin Ingram. He moves on to 15, 84 for four, Glamorgan. Yes, that is Ingram's best shot, certainly in red ball cricket. He's uh, also got a very effective smash over mid-wicket or square leg in the, uh, the white ball stuff, but uh, that is classical Ingram in the county championship where we hardly saw him for about four or five years. A uh, combination of uh, a knee problem, which he got sorted out eventually, and uh, doing a bit of gun for hire in uh, franchise cricket around the world. Well, any way you can. Absolutely. And uh, the ball is now being shown to the umpire. He has a look at it and th yeah, well, it's, it's hopeless, but uh, what, what do you want me to do about it? So he's now thrown it to Lewis Rees, and Rees is going to dry it. Uh, he must have, uh, must have gone a bit damp. Mm. Past the rope, so uh, Rob Bailey just inspecting. Uh, Leighton also sent me the uh, the email, but he's, he sent it me at least twice now. All right, same e same email. Come on, Leighton. <laughs> so we want some fresh thoughts from you after lunch. All right. Sort that technology out. Ian Evans says a hundred more for Glamorgan would give a chance for victory. Hundred more. Hundred more from overnight. Mm. I think mm. that would be more than enough. Tomorrow, right off weather-wise, lovely to hear Fletch again, my favourite non-Welsh commentator. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. That's quite a large group of people as well, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. The we play fav favourite Welsh commentator is the smaller group. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to uh, offend me, would you? <laughs> or indeed uh, any of my uh, no. BBC World's colleagues. Absolutely not. Is Tickner, the ball is now dry around the wicket. Oh, and that was a, a ball that he just about got the bat down on there, Colin Ingram. It seemed a little bit late on it. Managed to get the bat on and force the ball out into the onside where it was fielded by an Aaron Donald. That little bit of extra pace. Uh, he's got a look. Uh, I think he's... No, I can't say that because that would be um, uh, insulting to other people. He's got a look of... Um, George Scrimshaw about him. Uh -huh. As uh, Blair Tickner, Scrimshaw now at Northamptonshire. 84 for four. He bowls, and that one is driven out towards the uh, the cover boundary. They've got one around the boundary. Comes Sam Connors. Ingram settles for a single, moves on to 16, pinches the strike as well. 85 for four at the end of the over. We've, uh, well, they've, they've moved on without much alarm. So far this morning, and their lead, Glamorgan, is now 124. Started the day, of course, on a lead of 113. So even I can work out that they've added 11 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so Glamorgan ticking along against Tickner. Alex Thompson will have some uh, sore fingers at the... Uh, at the end of this, if anyone knows what the uh, run is in Cardiff this morning, do uh, do tell us so we can give a, a deserving charity a plug. Nick Webb 2017 on Twitter or Nick Webb 2017 at gmail.com. As uh, that, well, Ingram played a, 
inside it in the end, I think. Took his bat away at the very last moment, having observed a prodigious bit of uh, turn from the off spinner Alex Thompson. Dave is uh, at Fletch Sport on Twitter, StrokeX, and FletchCricket at gmail.com. And David Pritchard is Dav Pritchard on X as Ingram pushes forward and uh, Lloyd scampers round from slip to field. Everything was as simple as Dav's uh, Twitter, mm. Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> Life would be so much better, wouldn't it? There's only one David Pritchard. Yeah. As uh, next delivery from Thompson finds Ingram working, I was going to say, into a gap in the leg side, but he's played it rather straighter than he intended, I think, and it's fielded by the bowler himself running in front of mid on. It doesn't feel like there's much turn out there at the moment. Perhaps that is the heavy rail. I'm going to watch the mm, screen now. Previous, previous one spun a bit. Yeah. One that he got his bat out of the way of. This, this time he goes for the slog sweep and chips it gently <laughs> in the air. The umpire might have caught it, but uh, Zach Chappell was back on the boundary and it uh, pitched gently halfway back. He didn't middle it by any means, but it was safe. And he gets a single. 17 for Ingram. 125 the lead. This feels like hard work at the moment. As uh, Crane drives on the leg side, but Mr. Elastic Anuj Dal dives, springs, fields, and there is no run. 86 for four. Crane has seven. There's Night Watchman. We've got Cook and the all-rounder Douthwaite to come. As Crane pushes forward. Followed by Harris McElroy. Who I presume will be able to bat. Uh, he has a shoulder injury which prevented him from bowling. And Hamza. 86 for four. Ingram 17. Crane seven. The lead is one Two five attritional cricket is the order of the day once more. Yeah, don't mind that. Don't mind that at all. Uh, Dr. Wayne Trotman says hi, Dave and Nick. Hi, Wayne. Uh, we have a, a viewer overseas. He says that, uh, I'm watching closely in Izmir on the west coast of Turkey. Mm. Big Derbyshire fan since the early 70s when he played locally for Derby Parkside and was coached in the indoor nets by Edwin Smith. Harold Rhodes and Keith Stevenson. So you ought to have absorbed some uh, cricketing knowledge from that. As Blair Tickner begins a new over. That's turned into the leg side by Ingram. They fancy two here. It's Harry Kane running around to do the fielding. And well, I say yeah. they fancy two here. Uh, Colin Ingram fancied two there. Uh, Mason Crane didn't. It's slightly surprising. Given there was two there, wasn't there? Yes. yes. Ingram is the uh, is more mature in years of the pair. And the senior batter. Dr. Trotman is going to be spending the afternoon flitting between watching Derbyshire chasing hopefully not too many and cooking the monthly Sunday roast. Monthly. It's hmm. an interesting concept. <laughs> Here is Tignet. There is more there are more. That one's down the leg side and Crane has nothing to do with it. Good tumbling take by Guest. It's probably more often than I have a, a Sunday roast at Sunday lunchtime. To well, be I never have one. No, so, no. Wor working mostly in the summer, and um, my better half tends to work Sundays all year round. So, uh, oh. and, and I wouldn't uh, attempt a Sunday roast single-handed. Uh, no, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> Unless you can do them in the microwave. Um, <laughs> take now. I'm sure you can. In and bowls to Crane, who gets up on his toes to a, a short of a length ball that does bounce. So the first sign of uh, proper bounce when the ball's pitched in line with the uh, with the batter. Paul Teasdale's listened to the commentary from Tenerife. Oof. Perfect accompaniment to a view of the mountains, the blazing sun, and no doubt the odd cocktail or two a little bit later. Oh. Uh, uh, he's, ooh, now that I like this bit, he, he was from Lancashire, he moved to uh, Rotherham. Why you would do that, I've no idea. <laughs> 87 for four, Glamorgan. It comes Tickner and balls. That one again is down the leg side, and Crane 
lifts his bat high out of the way of it and watches it go past in as far as you can watch it go past when it's at that pace uh, so born, born and bred a Lancashire fan there, but equidistant from Old Trafford had only Trent Bridge and Derby and I must admit the Derby what a struggle. are actually becoming my team to follow excellent looking forward to seeing you at Derby later this season Fletch he says wish I could bring this Tenerife sunshine with us here is uh, Tickner again balls to Crane it again down the leg side he thinks the bowler, that is, that Crane got quite close to getting a little feather on that one through to the keeper. He didn't. He's actually having a little bit too, more, too much speed for uh, Crane at times, I suspect. He gets one straight. He might uh, pay dividends. Uh, Jonathan Price. Um, I'm not going to read this out. Uh, but he, Well, I'm not going to read most of it out, but he says uh, Glamorgan to win tomorrow, late afternoon. <laughs> wow. So another night in Cardiff for me, he says. Well, I don't mind that at all. Here is Tickner bowling. That's uh, struck him on the pad, a big appeal. A shake of the head from Rob Bailey. Hands on the hips for Flair <laughs> Tickner, <laughs> which is becoming a, a familiar sight. I think we're going to see that a lot over the first half of the season when he gets uh, uh, a negative reaction from the umpire. And Crane survives. 88 for four. It was the final ball of the over. Uh, what was wrong with this one? Over to you. Doing a bit too much, you maybe. It, yeah, but it, it did something, and it wasn't height. It did come back, and it uh, did pin Crane rather on the crease. And I was expecting to see the finger go up in in real time, but uh, umpire Bailey knows a lot more about these things and has a far better view than uh, us in real time. Yes, he does. But what I would say, Jonathan, is thank you. You're very kind. Uh, and most of it is, uh, is not true, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Sunday. It's been nice to your commentator, no, Dave. Well, it obviously. seems to be. It seems to be. All very welcome. 88 for four. Although Can there is somebody here who describes, says, Morning, Dave and Edward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Edward will be back during the next home game, uh, sharing duties with Dav for the next one. As... Uh, Forward pushes Crane, the first ball of Thompson's 17th over. He's conceded four off the bat. And his figure's three for 39 at the moment. As the fielders cluster around Mason Crane. On the leg side, there are four crouching to catch on the leg side and no one on the off. As Thompson bowls his off breaks and Crane goes back on his stumps but watches it nicely onto the bat and defends back to the bowler. So there's a leg slip, a short leg, a silly mid on and a short mid wicket. There's also a deep mid on, a deep mid wicket and a backward square leg so it's a 7-2 leg side field. There's Thompson bowls and Crane Hits it at an Iron Donald and it lobbed up and for a moment I thought it might be a catch for Madsen. But uh, we shall never know whether that was on the full because it didn't quite carry to Madsen that silly mid on. 88 for four. As Thompson jogs in gently and Crane drives but straight to Madsen. It's a thicket of players on that uh, leg side. Very difficult to uh, penetrate. 7-2 again, isn't it? Mm. Leg side. Which tells you that Thompson is confident of turning it as uh, that one bounces off uh, an Aaron Donald into the keeper's gloves on that occasion. But uh, it hit the ground somewhere on the way. It's going to be... An Aaron Donald is... Um, functioning slightly as part of a pinball machine at the moment, mm -hmm. isn't it? The ball's ricocheting off him as uh, this one manages to beat Donald. Crane's flick on the leg side runs out to the sweeper came on the mid-wicket boundary. And they go through for a single. One off the Thompson over and uh, Glamorgan 89 for four. And Mark Crosland sent me a message and says... Uh, he thinks that Blair Tickner reminds him of the great Danish bowler Derbyshire had in the 80s and 90s, Ollie Mortensen. I never saw Stan Bowl live. Uh, I have met him 
since and uh, his character. Uh, he took 434 first-class wickets for Derbyshire. Hope Blair is as successful. If he takes 434 first-class wickets in his uh, two and a half months stay <laughs> at Derbyshire, that would be, be remarkable. Special. But I know what you mean, Mark. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll double-check that with my travelling companions, who obviously saw Stan Bowl back in the day, uh, and speak in glowing terms of him. He returns to Derbyshire on a regular basis. Blair Tickner begins a new other balls to Crane, who drives off the back foot up to uh, Chapel at mid-on. I was just looking up in case Derbyshire's best bowling in a match, but Alex Thompson won't get it. No, he won't. No, because uh, 16, 17, 17 is the record in a match by W. Mycroft in 1876 as yes. the way to Hampshire. Yeah, Griff was at that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bill Mycroft. Wow. What a character he was as his next delivery is defended uh, on his toes by Crane back to Blair Tickner, who just punches the uh, the middle of the pitch for some reason. Robert Logan says it's the Big Moose Ultra Fun Run going on in uh, Butte Park. Uh, Big Moose being a, a local charity come coffee shop enterprise. Oh, okay. Well, so good luck to them. Absolutely. There's uh, a lot of people doing it. Thank you to Graham Smith as well, who points out the same thing. There's Ticknett. He's on his way in now. Bowls to Mason Crane down the leg side. Taken to his left by Brooke Guest. Thank you to Peter Miller as well, who, like Graham Smith, both of them saying, uh, you can run anything from 5K to ultra-marathon distance. Well, you can't, can you? Because if I tried ultra-marathon, if I tried 5K, it would probably kill me, but <laughs> ultra-marathon distance is definitely not on the cards. I think it's uh, you and the uh, yes. broader one can run. <laughs> the, the chances of me running full stop are fairly slim. Yes, my uh, my daughter's uh, planning to take on an ultra marathon in uh, in September. Wow. So it clearly doesn't run in the family. The athletic talent. So uh, big moose, they're uh, a good thing. Mm. Local uh, charitable enterprise. It's like change to the field here. We're going to get the short leg for Mason Crane, and they. Where's he going to stop? Harry Kane. He's going to stop at a sort of leg gully, backward square leg, quite close in kind of position. There is a slip as well. There's a man close in at mid-wicket as Tickner is in. Bowls a full delivery that Crane does really well without any fuss, just to push up to mid-off. And it's fielded by Lewis Rees. Uh, David Battersby says he thinks he made the wrong decision yesterday wearing shorts and puts a picture of himself and Mia hams up, uh, both wearing shorts. Mm, rather you than me. I know people who were wearing shorts at the start of the day who had long trousers on by uh, by the clothes. And one of them is a person who rarely wears long trousers. As Tickner is in, and that one is defended again by Crane. Uh, ben Bonney on Twitter says, would we say 220 minimum? For a Glamorgan point of view, that is, obviously. Um, 200, I think, would be competitive in terms of the lead yeah. and the target. So thank you to everyone who has uh, responded via Twitter or email this morning. A lot of people having a leisurely Sunday morning listening to the cricket. What could be better? I think that's Mrs Tickner down to our left-hand side. Her husband Blair bowls now, and that strikes the power. There's an appeal. That's going down leg side, isn't it? I think so. Even from here, that's going down leg side. I think uh, Tickner knew it. Stefan Rolnick uh, emails, just to add to the international listenership after hearing from Turkey, it's 5am in Bogota and I'm wide awake as I arrived last night so my brain is still on UK time. Yeah. Nightmare of cancelled flights and rerouted emergency landings. Ooh. That sounds uh, nasty, Stefan. The gentle rhythm of four-day cricket is the perfect remedy. Just need an Ingram half-century and I'll be golden. Thank you, Stefan, for your thoughts from Bogota. Bogotar, all the way around the world. Well, I'd hope that we might have one or two uh, interested New Zealanders watching Blair Tickner play for the first time in Championship cricket. If you are mm. listening down there, do let us know. But uh, for a moment, we've got Alex Thompson 
Yes, if you're listening in leak. With bowl in hand. <laughs> and bowling to Ingram, who's defending. Uh, I think I'd better uh, wander off after this over and let uh, Dav Pritchard do some broadcasting. 89 for 4. Lead 1 to 8. Morgan creeping onwards, 15 runs in the first half hour or so, as Ingram manages to find a little gap on the onside, or a rather large gap actually, Zach Chapel is on the boundary at uh, square leg, and Ingram gently turned it away for a single, 90 for four. These two uh, came together on the dismissal of uh, Billy Root for 32. Morgan's top score so far in their second innings. Will it remain so? Crane drives, but uh, not hugely convincingly. Back to the bowler. It was 69 for four when uh, Root fell in the 25th over. So Crane doing a job in terms of crease occupation, but Morgan would like a few runs off him if at all possible so that he's got more to defend with the ball because I suspect that he he will be bowling uh, from the River Taff end for most of the Derbyshire second innings Seems likely it's been the preferred end from the spinners we've seen a little bit of Kieran Carlson the odd over from Harry came when Derbyshire needed to turn to spin last night in order to stay on the field in rather gloomy conditions. It's nice and bright at the moment as uh, back on his stumps goes Crane Usenars, even though he's played it off the middle of the bat along the ground. The uh, amateur dramatics auditions are uh, next week. Always optimistic, aren't they, bowlers? Oh! If he hadn't middled it, I would have had him out. Thompson bowls. Crane flicks it on the leg side. Uh, Ingram wanted a single. There probably wasn't one there. As came came round quite sharply. Uh, that is the end of the Thompson over. He's bowled 18 overs. 3 for 41. Glamorgan 90 for 4 on BBC Sport Online. Leading by 129. Dave Fletcher joined by Dave Pritchard. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, it was interesting talking to Wayne Merton last night. Nick mentioning that the, the, the two... Specialist frontline spinners, Alex Thompson and uh, um, Mason Crane, as we see a change in the bowling here. We're going to see Sam Connors come on. They've bowled pretty much entirely from the uh, the River Taff end. Uh, and Wayne Madsen was asked about if the fact if the bowling from the River Taff end, because it's turning more from that end. It's, it was more to do with the drift from the prevailing wind. That the bowl, the spinners prefer to bowl from the the River Taff end. Not that the ball is turning more on this half of the pitch or anything like that. But Sam Connors, with what is definitely a burgeoning mullet. I must ask him about it when I next see him, Sam. What is he thinking? Impressive mullet in the works. It's, it's a belter, isn't it? Morning, Dave. Morning, Dave. So, yeah. Go on, you go. Here is Connors, and his first ball is dispatched through the covers by Colin Ingram for four. Nice. Yeah, nice looking drive there from Ingram. A loosener from the mulleted change of bowler. He's got a couple of wickets in the match, hasn't he, Sam Connors? He, he was the one who got rid of Billy Root uh, yesterday, got Jamie McElroy in the first innings. So he's turned David Lloyd to Connors ahead of. Zach Chappell, who did open the bowling first time round. Still haven't seen the left arm option of Lewis Rees or even Lloyd himself. There are plenty of options available at the end that isn't being occupied by Alex Thompson. Yeah, bright day here. Much sunnier than the gloomy affair we had yesterday as Connors is in to Ingram, who works this off his hip and will scamper through for a single. Yeah, Connors, like you say, cleaning up Billy Root yesterday, clean bowled in the first innings. Leaked a few more runs than he might have mm. liked to. But a, but a busy bowler, isn't he? 
Yeah, 51 off his 15 hours is, is a little bit more expensive than he would have liked. Yeah, no, two years ago he had a real breakthrough season, 50 wickets in the championship, youngest player to do that that year. A little dip last season, but he was carrying the bowling attack on his shoulders for much of last season, which and he is still a relative youngster. Well, everybody's a relative youngster, aren't they, to me, but he is a relative youngster. He's back over the wicket now to the right-handed Crane, who defends the first ball he faces from Connors for no run. 25's young, isn't it? Oh, still young, yeah. definitely. I, I think so. I think so. So this is only his, well, it's his 44th first-class match. 117 wickets at, at 35. He'd like to get that down. And good for him to have someone of Blair Tickner's standing to work with this season. He might pick up some tips and you know you're talking about age Tickner at 30 and only mm. just taking his first strides in test cricket isn't he here's Connors again slightly fuller delivery which Crane blocks once more McGeath had a had a plan because Saranga Lakmal the Sri Lankan opening bowler retired from international cricket signed a two year contract with Derbyshire two years ago so in 2022 uh, his elbow fell apart not long into the season had to have an operation and came back last year didn't really feel like the same bowler and was a little bit injury prone as well and and has now departed that didn't quite work and I think it would have been nice for Connors to have worked with him here is Connors to Crane a full ball which Crane tickles down the leg side that looks like it might run to the boundary and indeed it does yeah, full and strain down the leg side from Connors and Crane dispatches it nicely for four. He moves on to 13, Glamorgan and 99 for four, a lead of 138. Mm, that was good do with the breakthrough, couldn't they? Not quite desperate yet, but getting towards that point, looking for the breakthrough that they uh, so crave, but they have been relatively economical. Here comes Connors, final ball of his over. Again, Crane works this down to the leg side, but a, a squarer shot this time, and he'll collect a single. So a productive over for Glamorgan. Ten from it, and that brings up the 100 for the home side. They're 100 for four after 37 overs of their second innings. That gives them a lead of 139 runs. Yes. I wish I needed to see a clatter of wickets here, I think. Although... Pitch hasn't looked quite as lively today as it did on the first two days. Whether or not that is the heavy roller, and that will wear off if it hasn't already started to wear off very shortly. Alex Thompson hasn't... He's turned the odd one, but they've been turning square, like we've seen on days one and two from the uh, from the River Taff end. The ball's obviously getting old, but... What's that old? 37 hours old. It's not that old. Thompson's going to continue... Bowling and running towards us. Bowls to Mason Crane, who drives it straight back to him. When Madsen tried to intercept it in that uh, short mid-off, uh, mid-on position, just about half a strip across. Let's try to see if he's clapping. It's normally Harry Cam. Thompson bowls. That one is it's identical. Driven back to Thompson once again. The little knot of supporters just to the right of the sight screen at the far end as we look they're, they're pushing the boundaries I can see one of them leaning into the sight screen quite clearly from here as that one does turn turns down the leg side Crane can't catch up with it it's not taken cleanly by uh, Brooke Guest batters can be quite particular with uh, sight screen interference can't they so yeah. slight surprise maybe that or maybe it's a, a sign that Mason Crane is more of a bowler than a batter that it's not irked him quite yet Seems to have bowled a lot around the wicket as well, doesn't he? So it's not quite in line. Alex Thompson is his next delivery is defended to Wayne Madsen. Put a few more in today than there were yesterday. Just goes to show the call for more Saturday cricket might not be the uh, might not be the way forward. Who knows? I'd, I'd expected one or two more yesterday. Alex Thompson currently in conversation with Wayne Madsen, who. In the past has bowled, but his shoulder doesn't allow him to now, which is a shame, because uh, 
Occasionally he proved to be something of a golden arm. He's going to field at slip. Yes. No. He's going to have a chat with David Lloyd. Because Alex Thompson looks like he's coming over the wicket when Matt and he's going to field a slip. Which is where he generally fields. A very fine slipper he is too. 100 for 4, Glamorgan. As Thompson is in, he rather slung that one down. It's been hit out into the onside. It drops short of Harry Kane. I lost it completely. I'm not sure Harry Kane picked it up initially. And there are lots of hands on heads out there. And as Darl's hands are still on his head. That ball aerial for a long time. Probably dropped about, what, five yards in front of Harry Kane? I, I can't imagine that he picked it up. He's looking straight into the blue seats of the grandstand, which I imagine is difficult to uh, to pick the ball up. Anyway, 101 for four, Thompson bowls to Ingram, who just turns that ball into the leg side for a single. Pinches the strike as well from the final ball of the over. He moves on to 25, Glamorgan 102 for four. Yeah, quite a gear change that from Crane charging down the pitch to uh, Alex Thompson. Had been uh, cautious innings, had you expect from a night watchman so far strike rate of just a touch under 27 but a very aggressive stroke even if he didn't time it properly interesting that Thompson did come over the wicket to him as well to change that angle of attack maybe getting slightly frustrated it can be annoying for fielding sides can't it when the night watchman hangs around the, the next oh, morning oh yes he's already helped to see off the first Blair Tickner spell which is a, a bonus for Glamorgan Absolutely, and Tickner is the, the likeliest option who would have uh, maybe been able to put in a few short balls to make Crane's life difficult, but hard on this pitch, which, as David said, a, a little flatter today than it was yesterday, as Connors bowls to Ingram, who defends on the offside for no run. I didn't watch the replay of that, the ball that was in the air, but there were certainly one or two fielders out there who thought perhaps it was a better catching opportunity than it turned into. Crane probably did himself a favour by not connecting properly, didn't he? He mm. kind of mishit it with the spin and uh, seemed to drop, like you said, a, maybe a five yards or so short of the fielder. Jack Morley coming out to sit on one of those chairs, perhaps. Derbyshire 12th man. As Connors comes around the wicket to the left-handed Ingram, who drives nicely but for no run, fielded at mid-off. Yes. Sorry, he's talking to he's talking to Harry Kane. I found this fascinating. I'd love to know what what he was saying. Was you know, keep your chin up. Could, did you not pick it up? It would be interesting to hear, wouldn't it? One day, mm. uh, they, we've seen the player mics in T Twenty matches. Have he? He's very deliberately come out to have a chat with him there, hasn't he, Jack? So uh, it might be passing on information that might be passed on to David Lloyd. Who knows? Connors is into Ingram, who drives yet again. Mid-off is in the game, Zach Chappell, and he manages to stop it with a slight tumble for good measure. Yeah, loves a tumble. Yeah, it's interesting, this relaying of information, isn't it? We've seen in the test arena, England passing messages directly from the, the balcony. Oh, with the numbers. Messages and numbers, yeah. yeah. I don't know if anyone's managed to decipher those yet. More old-school approach with... Uh, the subfielder having a word here as Connors continues around the wicket to Ingram, who drives wide of Zach Chappell at mid-off this time, and he'll get at least a couple of runs. Chappell doesn't look like he'll make it to the boundary. Indeed, the ball wins that race. Four runs to Colin Ingram. He moves on to 29. To Morgan now 106 for four. The lead creeps up to 145. David McCardle wonders if Derbyshire are bowling the wrong seamer here. Reese or Dahl's pace might be better suited. What I will say, uh, David Lloyd's making these decisions, but he doesn't hang around in making changes. We've seen three and four over spells, and not just because of bad light, uh, over the course of this and the previous Glamorgan innings. So he's, he's a very proactive captain, it would appear. Connors around the wicket to Ingram, who defends for no run. I'm sure he's uh, currently computing all options, and he has plenty. We haven't actually seen Reese in this match anyway. I'd be surprised if, if Reese bowled ahead of Dahl or Chapel. 
but neither Dahl nor Chapel at the moment appear to be warming up. Yeah, plenty of bowling options in this Derbyshire side. David Lloyd has got through a fair share of bowling work during his years at Glamorgan. Connors bowls to Ingram onto the leg side. He whips it through mid-wicket. There'll be at least one run here. Indeed, they return for a second at a very leisurely pace. Uh, that's the end of the 39th over. Ingram moves on to 31. Glamorgan 108 for four with a lead of 147. Worcestershire have avoided the follow-on at Trent Bridge thanks to half-century from Brett D'Oliveira. Uh, it's been described here on Twitter by uh, the BBC's correspondent as a well-manufactured 50. I don't know what that means. Uh, from 89 balls, four fours and a six. They trail Nottinghamshire by 140. And that game nowhere near as advanced as this one. Clearly in the first division. Uh, that Nottinghamshire managed to escape the, uh, the wilderness of Division 2 a couple of years ago. Alex Thompson is going to continue at Middlesex 152 for 1 in reply to Northumbria just 552 for 6 yeah, terrific uh, Yorkshire lead Gloucestershire by 165 they're 102 without loss in their second innings and a game at Grace Road, Leicestershire of course at Derby next week Leicestershire made 338 and Sussex are 329 for 6 Good luck to uh, Adrian and Richard for the remainder of that game on the BBC Sport website. I'm sure they're enjoying each other's company, though. Here is Alex Thompson beginning a new over from the River Taff and turning to the leg side by Mason Crane. And I mean that genuinely, by the way. I know most of the time I'm being facetious, but two of the good guys. And we will see them both in the next two home matches, actually, at Derby, which is good. Leicestershire next week. Then a trip to Yorkshire and then home to Sussex. As Thompson bowls, defended into the offside by Mason Crane. And, uh, Northamptonshire at home coming up as well. Good to see Andrew Rad again. Well, I'm sure he would prefer to have still been in the first division. Ben Smith, the new Derbyshire batting coach, arriving from Northampton in the winter. This next delivery from... Thompson is turned almost one-handed into the leg side by Crane. Dahl does the fielding. And there is no run. Yeah, it should be a competitive Division 2 this year, shouldn't it? Are, I don't think... I mean, everybody says Yorkshire are the standout, and if they had everybody available for the entire season, you would probably agree, but is there a standout second team in this? I'm not sure there is. That one is clipped into the leg side by Mason Crane. To the left of an Aaron Donald i sure it was a bump ball or not from this angle. And as you alluded to yesterday, Dave, you know, given the amount of draws these two sides have, this game is significant, isn't, even though it's the only second game of the season. A win either way could be huge for their seasons. It's been a while since Derbyshire have won. This one played off the back foot this time. Perhaps not the best way to play a spinner. And uh, it's fielded at backward point by... Wayne Madsen, yeah, last year was, uh, I think, the fourth time in Derbyshire's history that they haven't won a game in the county championship. Second time since I, that I've seen it. As this next delivery is full and defended by Crane, picked up by Donald, end of the over, 108 for four, Glamorgan, 31 to Ingram, 15 to Crane, they lead by 147. Yeah, just on that, and more results positive or negative either way this season. It was quite refreshing to hear Kieran Carlson at the end of the first day saying that Glamorgan's players were enthused by what they were seeing, even though they were behind the eight ball, as he described it, in, on the first day, because I think they were as fed up as the supporters to see so many draws last season, to be involved in so many draws. So good that the players uh, are on board with it, because it's, uh, as we've said a few times over the course of this match, unusual that we've seen so much turn this early in April, but Better to have a, a raging turner than a, a flat 600 play 600 draw over and over again. No question. Wayne Madsen said pretty much the same last night. I tried to draw him on how many Derbyshire would like to chase. Obviously, it was as few as possible, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't give me a figure. At the moment, it's 147 or 148 and rising. 
as Connors continues from the Cathedral Road end to Ingram, who defends the first ball for no run. But all results possible. We've seen a tie, of course. Derbyshire only had one in their history some years ago down at Bristol, I think, against Gloucestershire. Now Zach like Chapel is warming up, or stretching at least. Yeah, these low scoring matches do have the potential to thrill, don't they? Absolutely. Here comes Connors around the wicket to Ingram, who defends stoutly once more. Yes, unfortunately, in the uh, little bit of copy I wrote for the uh, breakfast bulletins this morning, I did say Derbyshire need early wickets. I haven't managed to get one in the first 52 minutes of play. Although on the positive side, they're over eight plus three. The, the thing that absolutely nobody cares about, they're, uh, they're in credit. As Connors runs in, once again to Ingram, who works this off his legs and will get a single down to square leg. Yeah, wickets have fallen at fairly regular intervals throughout this match, but I was just looking at the fall of wickets for this innings, and this is the longest Glamorgan have gone without losing a wicket, which for Derbyshire, considering that Crane is at the crease as the night watchman, that will be a source of frustration. It should also give, you're right, I'm trying to find the positive, uh, it should also give the Derbyshire batters some hope that, OK, well, we thought we might struggle to chase 180, but the pitch well, it just, just flattened a little bit. So if we are chasing 250 and we've got four sessions to do it, we can do that. I, I am being uh, unbelievably positive there. Connors over the wicket to the right-handed crane wedges. Oh. Streakily just wide of first slip, and that will run away for four runs. So that will take Crane to 19. Glamorgan 113 for four, and perhaps most significantly, their lead is now beyond 150. They lead Derbyshire by 152. Yeah, dropped short of Wayne Madsen. It was a solitary slip. He dived away to his right, but it actually bounced in front of him almost. We might just have got a fingertip to it almost. Taking a bit of pace off it, but it's light enough to get down to the uh, the boundary in front of the scoreboard at the far end, the uh, River Taff end. I think you're right, though. I think Derbyshire's batters will see some positives in this because it only takes a, a couple of set bat batters to make a pitch look completely different, doesn't it? Absolutely. As Connor's come over the wicket, down the leg side to Crane, who wafts at it but makes no contact, and Brooke Guess collects. Those charity runners, there's, there's thousands of them. They're still going past. Remarkable. Well done to everybody. You are better than I. Yeah, kind of perfect running conditions, aren't they? Dry oh, and I'm sunny, not, but I'm no expert. not too warm. No, you might be surprised to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't claim to be an expert either. At Trundle now and again, as Connors is in, oh, Crane plays and misses outside the off stump. Yes, uh, in my running days, uh, well, they never really started, if I'm honest. I was thinking that my knees shouldn't be carrying this much weight, much weight round full stop, so if I was actually running as well and putting more pressure on my knees, I don't think that would be a good thing. Got to look after your knees. Well, I'm think not. like a fast bowler. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the NHS as much as I think. <laughs> 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 Me running w would cost the NHS far more than, uh, than my life is worth, I would have thought. That was the end of the Connors over, by the way. Morgan, 113 for four. Now that lead, 152. And yeah, as Dave says, they'll be getting slightly twitchy now as they look to break this partnership. Ingram will be on strike facing Alex Thompson as he continues from the River Taff end. Come around the wicket to Colin Ingram, who's on 32. 113 for four, lead 152. He bowls to Ingram, who defends this one solidly back. To Thompson, two slips. Backward point, short, backward square leg. Man on the square leg boundary as well. 
as Thompson is in and bowls up until it's a bit short and Ingram can just step back and guide it out towards Cave on the cover boundary. There's a, an extra cover as well. And a, a mid on and a mid off. The mid. So they've changed round now, so that's a lot of old nonsense because the field changes. But Blair Tickner is far deeper than uh, Lewis Reese. Slip, leg slip and short leg for Mason Crane. Thompson over the wicket, bowls to him, he goes back into his crease and he's been uh, trapped a leg before wicket, he knew it, we knew it, Alex Thompson knew it and Derbyshire finally have the breakthrough, it has taken them 57 minutes but the fifth Glamorgan wicket goes down, 114 for five, Crane goes for 19, the lead is 153. Yeah he did not hang around there, Mason Crane shifted onto the back foot, pitched Outside off, it turned nicely, hit him just in front of off, maybe middle, but was going on to crash into the middle of middle stump. So no question of that one, but that was a, a very useful innings from Mason Crane coming in towards the end of play yesterday. Hung around for 65 balls, uh, made 19. And the partnership with Colin Ingram was worth 45 runs. So very productive few hours for Glamorgan over the course of yesterday's evening session and this morning. But a very important breakthrough for Derbyshire. Alex Thompson, fourth wicket of this innings, 11th wicket of this match. <laughs> what a performance from the off spinner. And as Chris Cook makes his way to the crease for Glamorgan, Derbyshire will have another spring in their step as they look to make further inroads in this batting lineup. He want to uh, roll this pitch up and take it home with him, won't he, uh, Alex Stumps? And he probably enjoyed a few uh, nights in Cardiff as a student here. He's uh, certainly enjoying a few days here. A few years later, 114 for five. The lead is 153. Yeah, if these 11 wickets and counting contribute to uh, a winning result for Derbyshire, you'd imagine... Thompson might be tempted to revisit some of those student haunts. <laughs> I'll have to ask him at the end of the game where, where his favoured locations were. So Chris Cook coming in one lower than usual because uh, Mason Crane operated as a night watchman in the gloom last night and Crane's done his job really. A stand of 45 is uh, not to be sniffed at in this match. If we get a a couple more stands of 45 in the Glamorgan innings, then uh, Derbyshire would be struggling in the fourth innings, you feel. Yeah, just having a look at the uh, the first innings from Glamorgan, I think there was only one partnership worth more than that in the match so far from Glamorgan. So, yeah, Crane very much doing his job. A uh, useful foil for Ingram, who's... Had a very comfortable start to the day. As we've mentioned, the pitch doesn't seem to be reacting as much as it did to Thompson's spin earlier in the match, but that could change as the as the day was on. The effect of that roller perhaps diminishing with time. Yes, just to repeat, if you weren't with us earlier, that uh, Derbyshire have used their heavy roller twice in the game and therefore... It will be a light roller between innings. Here comes uh, the first ball to Chris Cook. There's still three clutched around the bat, and Cook plays no shot at that and therefore won't get a run. It must have flicked his hip on the way through. He knew he hadn't played a shot and therefore is not allowed to run. Yeah, he looked just for a second like he was about to set off yes. and his conscience kicked in. <laughs> Absolutely. You can only run without a shot if you're taking evasive action, and that didn't really count. As Cook drives up to mid-off, ball bouncing off the old square, but uh, Reese gets behind it. Lewis Reese, the scourge of the land of his father last season with 590 runs. Didn't contribute this time round, but has another go, of course, as Cook drops the bat on that slightly. And <laughs> certainly it rolls out on the offside. He, he, I don't know if there's any justification 
Chris Cook always looks slightly fidgety and n nervy to, for his first sort of six or eight runs or so. Yeah, that fidgetiness looks more like busyness when he's settled, yes. doesn't it? Yeah, there'll be a change of bowling now for Derbyshire. Sam Connors' shift is over for now, and he'll be replaced by Zach Chappell. Yes, Anuj Dahl is the only one out of the Derbyshire frontline bowlers who we've yet to see in the second innings. Yeah, it feels like a rotation of quick bowlers from the Cathedral Road end, but Alex Thompson is going nowhere fast from the river end. The off-spinner has been hugely productive, of course, with 11 wickets in the match. Career best figures for him. As Chapel goes through his warm-up with Lewis Rees at the Cathedral Road end. As the sun beats down on Sophia Gardens, a clearer, brighter day than we had yesterday as Chapel comes in around the wicket, the left-handed Ingram, who just Shot. guides that down past first slip for four. Very nicely played. Played it late. Ingram just opened the face and ran it down to the third man boundary for four. He moves on to 37. Glamorgan 118 for five, a lead of 157. That was just a deflection from uh, Ingram, really. He knew exactly where he wanted to put it. It wasn't a cross-bat cut shot. It just... Uh, Angled the bat and ran it down wide of slip. So yeah, very deftly played. The kind of shot you'd imagine Ingram would bring out occasionally when he's playing limited overs cricket. He'll mix that kind of sleight of hand with destructive six hitting, but so far a more watchful effort here. But that's another good looking shot he plays off the back foot, past backward point, and that's consecutive boundaries for the South African. Colin Ingram moving on to 41. Morgan 122 for five. Well, Derbyshire can't afford too many of those in terms of uh, giveaways. Zach Chappell now 0 for 23 at the start of his fourth over. And uh, there's a little bit of consultation around the Derbyshire field. But there's still that, uh, that gap remaining. Backward of point on the offside and message to Zach Chapel, don't bowl there. <laughs> yeah, Lewis Rees pointing to the vast expanse of green between first slip and backward point, and that's exactly where Ingram has cashed in That's over the past two years. Lloyd's going to fill it. Mm, sort of. No, Anish Dahl's going to fill it. Dahl is going to backward point. So a bit more protection on the offside for Chapel as he runs in to Ingram, who's on the back foot defending, considers a quick single but thinks better of it. Lovely conditions here at Safari Gardens. A bit, a bit chilly still outside, but uh, certainly a lot better for watching than, than yesterday when it was cold all day. And then we had interruptions for bad light, and it was not surprising the closing overs were played out in front of virtually no one. As Chapel comes around the wicket again to Ingram, who squirts this one down the leg side. Something of an inside edge there, perhaps, but safely played. And that's uh, one run added to Glamorgan's total. They're 123 for five as Chris Cook comes on to face the next delivery from Chapel, he'll move back over the wicket from the Cathedral Road end. Yeah, temperatures today in Cardiff meant to be only around 12, 13 Celsius, so it is uh, still very much April-like. So how long we're going to see these runners for on the uh, on the river bank? Because uh, if they're doing ultra marathons, we might see we might get to know some of them by the end <laughs> of the day. Yeah, I was saying today, good conditions for running today. Good conditions for batting as well. It's a very still day. Not too much cloud cover, not compared to yesterday at least. There's Chapel bowls to Cook, who shoulders arms outside the off stump. Still a smattering of grey cloud, but not the brooding slate grey skies that we had yesterday. 
And besides, as we've discussed over the course of this match, in the two and a bit days, this Kookaburra ball does not seem to offer much in the way of movement in the air for the bowlers who are having to work hard for their wickets as Chapel is in and Cook drives onto the leg side. <laughs> Some gasps from the Derbyshire fielders. Yes, those are very uh, Cook positions, those uh, mid-wickets, aren't they? And David Lloyd, of course, will have uh, seen a lot of uh, Chris Cook's stroke play at uh, at close quarters from the, the other end of the wicket. So uh, he'll have something of an advantage for this match, uh, David Lloyd being able to uh, anticipate most of the Glamorgan players' favourite shots. Yeah, the end of another productive over for Glamorgan. Nine runs from it. They're 123 for five. That lead is now worth 162. And with Ingram looking well set on 42, they'll be looking to post a, a competitive total to make it challenging for Derbyshire. Yes, if Ingram can uh, bat to l lunch... He might be getting the uh, the total into competitive, the target into competitive areas as he plays one into a gap on the offside there. Just watching that one onto the bat and steering it towards point between a couple of fielders to go through for the single, 124 for five. But can Cook get going first innings? He glanced Alex Thompson to David Lloyd at leg slip and Lloyd is there again now. Madsen is at slip, doing a little bit of field direction as if he was still captain. And Donald is still at short leg. Point goes a little backward of the umpire. And that is down leg side and Cook plays at it. I think that'll be a leg by. They've gone through for a single. No signal from umpire Bainton. And that was almost then... Another chance for David Lloyd to dismiss him in the, as the same way as uh, in the first innings. Yeah, he took a very sharp catch to his right in the first innings. As we see the replay here, that looked like it hit the pad yeah. of Chris Cook, but no leg by signalled. Next delivery to Ingram is pushed forward. It looked as though it uh, flicked Cook's pad and uh, then the gloves, I think the tail bottom of the gloves of uh, Brooke Guest. It's one run if it's officially off the bat of Chris Cook. As Thompson bowls and Ingram punches into the offside, but without result. One, two, five for five. May not sound like much of a score. One, six, four is a reasonable lead. Glamorgan need to get it north of 200, at least you would have thought as Ingram plays that one down into the crease, ball stopping at his feet. No run. Yeah, looks to be timing the ball a lot better today, Ingram. He's found the gaps. As that's played away on uh, the offside, and Ingram gets a single. 126 for five. As, uh, for some reason, we're getting uh, a little bit of BBC Radio Wales output, which, while David Pritchard uh, commentates on the next over, I will try to uh, remove from our headphones. Here's the camera pans to the Glamorgan players on the pavilion. Short sunglasses. You'd think it's the height of summer, but yeah, step outside this commentary box and... Uh, you're swiftly reminded that it is, in fact, still April. A chill in the air, but a fresh, bright day. Blue skies overhead as Zach Chapel continues from the Cathedral Road end. He'll bowl around the wicket to the left-handed Ingram, who works this one off his hip for a single down to square leg, taking his score on to 45. Glamorgan now 127 for five, a lead of 146. Brings Chris Cook back on to strike. As he takes his guard with Chapel making his way back to the top of his run-up. Moving back over the wicket to the right-handed Cook, who stands with his open stance, 
bat in the air as C C Chapel is in and Cook defends for no run. Lewis Reese gets to work on the ball, trying to give it some shine as it shows signs of wear in its 45th over. The much talked about Kookaburra ball, as opposed to the Dukes ball we're used to seeing in the county championship. Here comes Chapel, the tall, bald figure running in from the Cathedral Road end over the wicket to the right handed Cook, who's forward defending for no run. Reese gets to work on the ball once more, passes it to his colleague Chapel, who makes his way back to the top of his run up and bounds in once more to the right handed Cook, who's forward defending. A tidy over this from Chapel after a relatively expensive one last time out, conceding consecutive boundaries to Colin Ingram. Cook just nine deliveries into his innings, looks to establish himself. Scored 20 in the first innings as he faces up to the latest ball from Chapel, which is on his legs, and he prods that through for a single. Cook moves on to two. Glamorgan, 128 for five. One ball left in this chapel over. It'll be to the left-handed Colin Ingram. So the fielders switch positions and make their way over, as does umpire Bainton. And the sun shines, the clouds disperse further. A fine day here in Cardiff, albeit still slightly on the chilly side as Chapel comes in around the wicket to the left-handed Ingram, who works this off his hips towards fine leg. And there'll be a single there for Ingram. He moves on to 46 at the end of the 45th over. Glamorgan are 129 for five, and that's now a lead of 168. So after an hour and a quarter of this morning session, Glamorgan putting themselves into a position of strength as they look to set Derbyshire a competitive target. Here on the third day at Sapphire Gardens, as uh, Nick Webb rejoined me after... Prepared news bulletin reader. Um, yes, I was trying to explain that while we're delighted to hear programme of Radio Wales just before the one o'clock bulletin, it would be rather distracting to listen to the programme output for full 45 minutes before. <laughs> yeah, hearing pink while Zach Chappell was running in was slightly off-putting. Here comes Alex Thompson then uh, to the, the sound of silence, as uh, Simon and Garfunkel would say, in our headphones at least, as uh, Ingram defends that one. And uh, we just hear the, the welcome plock of... Uh, Willow on leather. Two slips. No short leg or silly point at the moment. As Ingram back on his stumps and got down on that one just in time. Well, Glamorgan will be encouraged by that too, uh, in a way, because they have to bowl last. But uh, that one kept low and turned and Ingram did really well to jab his bat in the correct place there he's on 46 it's 129 for five as Ingram steers that one into the offside but not quite hard enough to uh, to get the single well, we've talked about the diminishing effect of the heavy roller and that's perhaps the first sign of it that the pitch will turn again and as it has done on the first two days and Thompson will look to make the most of that as uh, next delivery knocked into the gap by Ingram this time. Not even Anuj Dahl can stop that one, and uh, it is a single out towards the cover boundary. 130 for five. Glamorgan lead by 169. Two frontline batters at the wicket, and a really, really key 
partnership or wicket to take, depending on which way you look at it. Scott comes down the wicket but then defends when he gets there. We've uh, seen one stumping off the bowling of Alex Thompson in this match when uh, Zainal Hassan gave him the charge in the first innings. And Kieran Carlson would have been stumped had he not uh, nudged it onto his stumps anyway. As Cook off the, uh, well, didn't quite get forward or back on that, but managed to play it away successfully on the onside. It's a dot ball. Ingram has 47. Cook has two. And Glamorgan are 130 for five, leading by 169. And really, in the, what, 80 minutes play that we've had so far, the sole moment of the pressure being off was when Ingram knocked uh, those consecutive fours down to third man. Absolutely, yeah. Derbyshire's bowling, like Glamorgan's, has been accurate in the main, and this pitch has been a difficult one to bat on on occasion. So the runs have not flowed that freely. That's been reflected in the run rates of uh, of all three innings so far. Never really getting much higher than three and over. This one ticking along at 2.8 as... Chapel comes around the wicket to Ingram, who's on 47. He defends on the back foot, no run. Yes, this game is uh, pretty well advanced compared to almost everything else uh, around the country. In fact, I think this is the only game where any wickets have fallen in the third innings of the Bridge at Bristol. The Yorkshire 137 for naught in their second innings. 200 lead over Gloucestershire. So looks as though Yorkshire will be able to dictate the course of that game. As Chapel continues around the wicket to Ingram, who drives but is well stopped in the covers by Captain David Lloyd. So it'll be interesting to see whether teams around the country take into account any potential bad weather tomorrow but there really are a lot of matches that are, are still in the uh, these, the first innings everything apart from here in Bristol as Chapel is in to Ingram who defends once more at Leicester Leicestershire who are Derbyshire's next opponents uh, well, Sussex have moved past them on first innings. Sussex 360 for 6, 22 ahead. With new signing Simpson and Lamb going well. And at Northampton, where Glamorgan are heading, Northampton's 552 for 6, Middlesex 186 for 1. Nathan Fernandez, the young batter, 91 not out. Chapel into Ingram, a fuller ball which Ingram defends once more. Division 1, well, Durham look as though they might uh, scrape a draw. Long way to go, despite conceding 698 for 3 against Warwickshire. Durham 267 for 4, so a uh, reasonable response for them at Edgbaston. A very short boundary, saw pictures of it uh, last night. Here comes Chapel charging in to Ingram, who defends... For no run onto the offside. Minimum square boundary is meant to be 50 yards, and it certainly didn't look that. Playing really on one side of the square at Edgbaston to start the season, as all counties do to some extent, but uh, Edgbaston, I suppose, gets more use than most, but uh, you have to uh, give uh, some semblance of order to a county game. No such issue here in Cardiff, where the square boundaries are very long. As Chapel bowls to Ingram, a full delivery which he drives nicely. Shot. A straight drive which looks like it might be heading for the boundary. Lewis Reese gives chase but will not make it. Colin Ingram moves to his half century in fine style. The South African is on 51 and he takes Glamorgan's total to 134 for five, a lead of 173 at the end of the 47th over. 76 balls and eight fours. There's an echo in here. <laughs> yeah, very nice shot to bring up his 50 there from Ingram. Maybe the pick of his shot so far. Very straight drive. 
show them the maker's name as he said and uh, really a 50 in these circumstances is probably worth as as many as his 100 in the the opening game of the season at lords in terms of uh, the match situation and uh, the difficulty of getting there so well batted to uh, colin ingram the fourth half century of the match overall Kieran Carlson 74 is the top score. Madsen 63, David Lloyd 60 in the Derbyshire innings. As Thompson starts a new over and Cook manages to find a gap in the offside. Off the back foot, he forced it towards the boundary, but not with enough pace to reach there. Did have enough on it, though, to uh, jog back for a couple of runs. Cook moves to 4, 136 for 5. The lead is 175. As Derbyshire probe away. And Cook is down the wicket, driving back to the bowler, who threatens to throw down the stump, so Cook retreats rapidly. At Chelmsford, Essex rocked up, uh, knocked up 5.30 for 7, declared Kent 2.91 for 4 in reply. Sentries for Compton, who's still there, and Bell Drummond, who's out for 1.35. Thompson bowls. Cook drives on the onside and there's no run. No Sam Cook in that match. For Essex, after his uh, endeavours in bowling them to victory in the first round. As Cook is forward to Thompson, no run. Hampshire against Lancashire, Hampshire 367. The Lankies are 295 for four. Opener Keaton Jennings still there, 124 not out. As uh, that is uh, nudged on the leg side to Donald, to uh, dramatic claims from the infielders. At uh, Trent Bridge, Worcestershire 293 for 8, still 106 behind Nottinghamshire. Top score there was Rob Jones with 90. Thompson bowls and Cook flicks it away on the leg side. Oh, this could be a mess here as Ingram is run out. He came too far down the wicket and really there wasn't a run there and Colin Ingram, I would say, has run himself out for 51 and that is a big blow struck by Derbyshire and a self-inflicted one for Glamorgan. Chris Cook noodled his way, started, said no. Ingram tried to turn but knew he was struggling as the throw came in from square leg. And uh, Glamorgan are six down with the lead on 175 and uh, celebrations from Connors at square leg. Yeah, as you said, Nick, Colin Ingram will feel that he rather ran himself out there. He was in a hurry. He was halfway down the track by the time Cook decided there wasn't a run there and the ball had gone more or less straight to Sam Connors, who was uh, on the 45 from Alex Thompson and it was a pretty straightforward throw from Connors, Thompson did the rest, flicking off the bales. So a blow for Glamorgan and Colin Ingram, a self-inflicted one at that. He seemed to be going on very nicely, scoring at a decent rate. Uh, his strike rate was approaching 70. And more importantly for Glamorgan is they lose their set batter. So it'll be James Harris, sorry, Dan Douthwaite, of course, because we're... Uh, one down further, the batting lineup because of Mason Crane's promotion as night watchman. So Dan Douthwaite will come to the crease in a trickier position than he may have envisaged just a few moments ago. That was a freebie for Derbyshire, really. And, well, theoretically, it was uh, Ingram's call because it was behind square. But you have to feel sympathy for Chris Cook in, in saying no in that uh, that circumstance. Quick change round in the commentary box and Dave Fletcher will be back alongside me in a shake of a lamb's tail. Dave. Mm, interesting. Derbyshire needed that one. Yes, they did. And they handed it on a plate. Yes, they did. Yeah. As Duff said there, he was going along fairly comfortably, wasn't he, Colin Ingram? We've had both of them, Ingram and Cook. 
I know Cook's only on four, but he, he hadn't really been troubled too much. From the odd ball that I managed to see between a conversation with Edward Bevan. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always very good. Yes, we were discussing the prospects for St Helens earlier on. Chapel pins a new over. He's uh, bowling to Dan Douthwaite, the new batter, who defends it up to Sam Connors at mid-on. Well, I suspect we may well see professional rugby again, but sadly, probably not professional cricket. Really? Well, uh, it seems to be the the most likely option for the, the Ospreys to uh, develop as a future rugby home. Chapel in again, balls to Dalthwaite, who clips this down the long leg, and they get through for a comfortable single, 137 for six. But uh, no longer first-class cricket uh, played there, unfortunately. There is senior club cricket. But Derbyshire the last, or did you have more after that? We played two years in a row there. Um, you might have played there after hasn't, that, There hasn't been anything since COVID, so 2019 would okay. have been the... The last look, season look that uh, Morgan the played there. Thoroughly enjoyable time down there. There's this next delivery from uh, Chavez is <laughs> punched by Cook into the leg side. And uh, I'm fairly sure it was David Lloyd who yeah. got to it, but it might have been the foot of an Aaron Donald. Well, it seemed to ricochet back towards the stumps, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're, they're quite close together on the leg side there at Midwicket, the... Uh, the two former Glamorgan men. They're crouching down now. There's a slip in place as well. As Zach Chapel is in past umpire Bailey. And uh, that one is guided by Cook into the leg side. Chat the stumps from Anaj Dahl. Always worth a shot at the stumps nudge. And uh, they get through for a single. 138 for six. The lead 177. So what is it? Douthwaite. Harris. Hamza and McElroy. Mm. You could see what it meant to the Derbyshire players. Oh, well. They were uh, they were joyous. I think if Ingram had still been there at lunch, it would have been uh, not a very sweet lunch for Derbyshire. No. Chapel bowls to uh, Douthwaite, who just guides that one down to backward point where Dahl does the fielding. I can't see Douthwaite hanging around against Thompson. That might be good then. I think he's liable to try and uh, win the battle quickly, or which should see the battle ending fairly quickly either way. Either he'll hit bounce the attack or he'll be out. Right. No, that's, that's always good. There is Chapel again. Balls. That one is defended by Douthwaite. Back to the bowler under the over. 177 the lead now, Glamorgan 138 for six. Douthwaite has one, Cook has five. It was a Sam Connors throw, was it? I've got it down as a Dallas Dahl throw. Right, very good. I believe it was Connors. Yeah, no, was that's what it says on the board. He who was uh, highlighted on the screen afterwards, anyway. I saw it, but I was sort of. You can't assume that everything is Anuj Dahl in the field. No. There are no. ten other guys yeah, out there. There is, there is that. Although Dahl does more than his fair share, and Thompson has done more of his fair share <laughs> because uh, he's bowled unchanged. This is his 25th over, and this will be the 50th over of the innings. Yes. <laughs> so he's bowled all of them from uh, that end, the River Taff end. Right, Chris Cook on strike, and... Uh, Cook's pulling and will get runs past a covering up Donald, past umpire Bailey and over the ropes for four. 142 for six. The lead is 181. And I think we've now reached the sort of bottom end of the territory where Glamorgan might think, ah, oh, we might be in with a chance. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. It, it just seems... It seems a little flatter, the pitch today. I don't know if, if that just is wishful thinking on my part or not, but it just feels slightly flatter. Uh, next delivery 
to Cook is knocked into the offside into a gap. There might be a couple of runs here. Yes, they turn as uh, it's picked up by Rees inside the deep cover boundary. And they're safely back for two. Okay. Cook goes into double figures. Morgan to 144 for six. But this game's still very much in the balance as Cook comes down the wicket and slams that one through mid off for four. Using his feet well, but getting to the pitch, hitting it along the ground and pretty fiercely mid off didn't have a chance of cutting it off. And first signs of an assault on mm. uh, on Thompson really with 10 taken off this over will it last Cook moves to 15 148 for 6 but interesting that they've got to that 180 and now it seems Cook has decided right well if I can get another 40 here in quick time mm. we can take the game away from Derbyshire I wonder if this, it looks like a deliberate uh, a deliberate policy from Chris Cook and fairly uh, a very acceptable one as well, of course. Thompson may just be uh, tiring. He's having a, a yeah. lengthy chat with Wayne Manson. Isn't it interesting that Manson's still putting in leadership ideas, isn't he? Even though Lloyd's actually uh, taken over, and it was a couple of years ago when Manson was captain. Yeah, 2015, the last year he was captain. Oh, that, uh, that long ago. Yeah, Billy Godelman pointed oh, in yes. 2016. The Godelman era. Well, yes. The very brief Lear's deploy era last season. 148 for six. Long on his back. Mid off is fairly deep. And uh, Cook turns that one to mid wicket. There's no run. If he's willing to play against the spin, there is a big gap for a single in the covers. Jack Chapler's lurking back on the, on the boundary. But it's still uh, a 6 3 leg side. Field six fielders on the leg side. Cook comes down the wicket and plays it. Well, there might have been a single there, but after the Ingram run out, they may be uh, rather loath to risk anything as he dotted it gently towards Lewis Reese at a fairly deep mid off. Thompson over the wicket to Cook, who drives into the offside and takes the single out towards Zach Chapel. That was the last ball of the over, I believe. Yes, the uh, on si strike sign on the scoreboard flicks back over, having briefly been on Douthwait, but it remains with Cook because uh, he took a single off the last ball. 11 off the over, 149 for six. The lead is 188 as Cook and Douthwait meet for a little uh, mid-wicket chat. There's certainly uh, hoodies, the, the order of the day. In the uh, in the crowd, someone's got an Alex Thompson shirt draped over uh, the seats next to them yes. uh, at the far end. The Alex Thompson fan club. The message has come on. Matt Lamb's coming back on again, and who's going off? Nobody. I was darling, just <laughs> handing him something. You can't have twelve fielders. No. And they're supposed to be wearing bibs, but the twelfth man, the Derbyshire twelfth man, are just wearing the uh, what I believe are known as gilets. Mm. Hmm. I not possess one myself. I have a colleague who wears a heated gilet for football, but anyway, <laughs> the less said about that, the better. Here's Zach Chapel bowling to Chris Cook, who pushes the first ball of the over out into the offside. Dahl does the feeling. 25 minutes until lunch, by which time, well, Glamorgan not quite out of sight, but not far off. RM Kane on Twitter said it was a bit harsh to say Ingram ran himself out. <coughs> Cook has looked skittish all innings. I don't think there was a run there, though. I think Cook was probably right to send him back, but he had taken a couple of steps forward, Cook. I don't think Cook would have made it had he run either. So it's just a matter of which one hmm. fell. Chapel bowls, that's on leg stump, turned into the leg side by Cook, beyond the diving Donald, but picked up by uh, Connors, who is beyond him, mid-wicket or square leg really. Uh, 
Mr Kane also asks about uh, maybe a lack of confidence in second 11 players with uh, a route opening alongside Ul Hassan. Ul Hassan is a permanent member of the staff. He's not the one of the, the lone mob. They're a mob. <laughs> no, there's only one of them. <laughs> well, there was one of them. In Cubs Chapel, balls to Cook, who defends a full-length delivery up to mid-off. Actually, it's correct that there were two last week. Technically, uh, Crane is a season-long loan, and mm. Miles was meant to be a three-match loan, but uh, due to Warwickshire injuries, he was uh, recalled after one. We may see him again if Van der Huchten remains out and uh, if Warwickshire's other guys get back fit again. But uh, something we'll have to check up on at the end of the match. The injury situation. As the next delivery to Cook is guided just wide away, Manson and slip by Chris Cook. And it's gone all the way to the boundary for four. <laughs> and if Anish Dahl can't catch it, nobody can. Well, but Dahl had to put the brakes on at the last minute, the otherwise he'd have gone uh, <laughs> flying over the hover cover, wouldn't he? He really did chase that furiously. Fair play to him. And Cook, I think, did mean to play it there. Who, who is that? It's Blair Ticknett. Is it down at the far? Is it a 13? I'm trying to see where the 12th man is, but I can't see him at the moment. He must be there. Unless the fielding with 10. Seems slightly absurd. As in comes Chapel and Bowles. And again, it's guided down to that vacant third man area. Edward Bevan's doing his nut next door. <laughs> <laughs> And Cook, well, moves on to 24 off just 31 deliveries. It's 157 for six. The lead's 196. Um, this is rather strange. There's someone in white sitting just beyond the boundary at uh, third man. But there are 11 fields. Yeah, but it, it's, yeah, it's definitely Tickner as this one is uh, defended should by be, Cook. Should be wearing a bib. Absolutely. And now he's coming on. Oh, that's because number 18 is um, it's Jack Morley. Morley was on. Yeah, Jack and Morley. And Tickner is now back on, swinging his arms. If he's going to replace Alex Thompson at the uh, River Town. No, of course he isn't. No, no. Carry on, Alex. <laughs> Carry on. Perhaps there'll be a token over of non-spin before lunch rather than the usual token that, that over of spin. That would be very good, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. A token <laughs> over of medium pace. <laughs> I don't think so. Thompson moves into his 26th over in his first competitive game of the season, which is uh, going, to, uh, going to ache, I think, a bit. Yes, well, he was... Uh, yeah, that's 52 overs in total then. Yeah. 26 in the first. Now... Uh, the 26th in the second, 52 overs. Having said that, he has taken 11 wickets. Right, Dan Douthwaite's on strike, and uh, David what, Lloyd what we wanted, isn't it? Uh, has uh, correctly got someone up at long on. Might have his long off, uh, mid off pushed back as well, if there's to be a mid off. Yes, there, there is. Need to be about another 10, mate. Uh, <laughs> yep, back he goes, Lewis Reese. Uh, there are the leg slip and short leg remaining, as well as a short mid wicket or silly mid on, really, on the drive and a short mid wicket as uh, Dowthwaite pushes forward, defends, and uh, nudges it past short leg. So the care with which the field was uh, placed is uh, all in vain temporarily as uh, Dowthwaite gets his second run. Glamorgan on to 158 for six. They started on 74 for four so they've added 84 for the loss of two wickets this morning which they would probably have well, their uh, session accepted in spades but uh, ingram running himself out has muddied the waters somewhat as cook pushes forward there's an appeal for lbw he was quite a way forward and there's no response from umpire neil bainton no, it was a half-hearted appeal, wasn't it, really? It did turn and probably hit him outside the line. Yeah. Hit outside the line, was playing a shot, can't be out. Thompson to Cook, that's faster, and Cook defends it. Donald picks it up as it rolls back down the pitch. And uh, there is no run. One, five, eight for six. Yeah. 
That 197 is worrying. There's, uh, that's nudged away on the leg side by Cook, and hastily he sends Douthwaite back, having seen uh, Connors run out Ingram just a few minutes ago. What was Ingram thinking, asks Leighton, emailing us. Cook, pivotal to Glamorgan's chances. The tail might not wag. Key period coming up. Yes, indeed. Cook drives down the ground and will pick up a single. That was so straight, I think it went between uh, Douthwaite's legs as he hurriedly got out of the way. One five nine for six. The lead is one nine eight. We're straying into pressure on Derbyshire territory now. In terms of uh, a fourth innings target, which might sound unusual if you're tuning in for the first time, but it has been a slow scoring and bowler friendly wicket. Douthwaite back on his stumps defends. Dan Douthwaite's defence, and that was the last ball of the over, Dan Douthwaite's defence is never a thing of great beauty because he's a tall man and uh, he quite often looks as the... I mean, I'm probably doing him a disservice because obviously being a pro from for several years he knows what he's, he's doing far more than I do, but uh, he, he never looks entirely convincing with his defensive shots. No, that was a little bit French crickety, wasn't it? Mm. But uh, kept it out. Well, that's what ultimately keeps. that's the main Sorry. thing. What's going on now? Stripping off next to me. The um, uh, the osteoarthritis is playing up a oh little. Dear. We're going to see uh, Blair Tickner, who had been warming up for uh, a couple of overs, have a little blast before lunch. Uh, this is four weeks yesterday since I went for an X-ray at the hospital, which is. Uh, I could have res transmitted the results of the x-ray to my doctor on the way home, uh, but they said no. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, f f four weeks for uh, the results of an x-ray to travel two miles. Well, and yeah, I know somebody who had a consultation on his way down to Cardiff, and he's seeing the specialist on Tuesday. Mm. So that's... Uh, Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm pretending this is in any way urgent. Here is Tickner then in to bowl to Cook, who guides this into the offside off the back foot, fielded by Dahl. And there's no run. Tickner will get, what, three overs possibly. Might get four in with Thompson bowling at the other end if he's lucky. Partnership already worth 23, which is a bit of a concern. At a little under a runner ball. Cook, who has 25 weights and is uh, defending that one into the onside where David Lloyd fields and then sort of throws it in the vague direction of the stumps, misses them. Picked it up with his left hand and then feels his left hamstring. Excellent. I think he's okay. I think he was merely just stretching, as those gentlemen of a certain age have to do. <laughs> Work out whether everything's working. Yeah, can I still straighten my legs? 159 for six. Ticknet runs away from us, bowls to Chris Cook, who drives this one. It's a full length delivery, almost sneaked under the bat, but he got it down in time, pushed it up to Lewis Reese at mid off. It's flattened out at Headingley. Yeah. Yorkshire 171 in their second innings, leading by 234. Sussex are starting to build a lead at Grace Road. 388 for six against Leicestershire, leading by 50. And the game at Wantage Road's just carrying on. <laughs> Here is Tick That Bowls, a short of a length delivery. It's pulled into the lakeside in front of Square by Cook. Around goes Connors to do the fielding and keeps them down to a single. Cook moves to 26. 160 for six, the lead 199. Yeah, that game at Northampton. Northamptonshire, 552 for six declared, Middlesex 203 for two. Right. Okay. <sighs> and uh, I'm heading for Northampton no. <laughs> to uh, cover Glamorgan um, starting Friday morning. All the very best of British. That's all right. Radders is good company as oh, well. Absolutely, yes. He's down at, down at Derby in this first block of matches. Or up at Derby.
Tickner bowls to uh, Dalthwaite and beats him completely for pace there as he tried to launch it over the grandstand. Uh, nowhere near <laughs> making contact with the ball. I mean, if he had, it probably would have gone a long way. But uh, it's actually got a bottom edge into his body. And then he practices a defensive shot, the like of which he had no intention of playing. <laughs> Another helicopter was one yesterday, wasn't it? The afternoon was a helicopter. Can't see it. More light aircraft. Here goes Tickner again in to bowl to Dalthwaite, who does defend this one and pushes it up to Lewis Reese. And that was the final ball of Tickner's ninth over, not for 14, his figures at the moment. He bowled one maiden. Dalthwaite has two, Cook has 26, Glamorgan a 160. For six now. There's lots of those Northampton style games elsewhere. Essex 530 for seven. Kent 300 for five. Hampshire 367. Lancashire 317 for four. Nottinghamshire 399. Worcestershire 310 for eight. And Surrey have just been bowled out for 428. That's a lead of 143 over Somerset at the Oval. And then there's that game at, <laughs> at Birmingham as well with. Durham 292 for four, trailing Warwickshire by 406. Yeah, it's quite the uh, task, isn't it? Uh, out you go then, lads. Only best part of 550 to avoid the follow-on. <laughs> <laughs> back, back for two and a bit days. Go on, you know you can. So, Thompson over number 27. Cook on strike. Leg slip and short leg in place. Welshman crouching around the bat as uh, Cook is forward and plays it gently into the offside. Thought there might have been a single there, but uh, the bowler did enough jogging across to uh, deter them. And there is no run. Derbyshire will be chasing 200 at least. That is the uh, situation. The lead 199 as Cook pulls but straight to Connors the man who ran out Ingram and that's at a backwards square leg so will there be thoughts of luncheon Chris Cook had, has had brief flurries of attack on his way to 26 not out and again he's down the pitch playing it into the offside again there might have been a single there but uh, Having seen Ingram run out, Cook is obviously loath to uh, risk any second calamity in this uh, first session. So this fascinating struggle continues. The weather forecast for tomorrow is not great, so if you're in the area and uh, interested in county cricket, get down here this afternoon as Cook pushes one off the back foot into the leg side. There is no run. I think it's still reasonably likely that we'll see a conclusion either way, although not uh, beyond the bounds, bounds of possibility now that it'll go into day four. Mm. And therefore probably into the afternoon of day four if the morning weather forecast is correct. Cook, again, very watchful, playing off the back foot. Back to Thompson, the fifth ball of the over. Cook has 26, Dalthwaite 2, this morning Glamorgan have lost Crane for 19, Ingram for 51 and Cook takes a single off the last ball the over. There will be a throw at the wickets but Dalthwaite was uh, home and Cook takes the single to retain the strike and the applause for the fact that the lead is 200. That's an interesting thing to applaud. Well, it's been just, one of those it's matches. It's just a round number, isn't it? It's been one of those matches, there's isn't the, it? That, there's um, the chap on the screen. Look, he's pushing the uh, sight screen to the very limits. <laughs> he's leaning on he's the white just, just move sheet. over one. Come on. We're not going to get any better view by leaning on the sight screen. That is a very good view, actually, from uh, that angle straight mm. at that end of the ground because you're, uh, you're, fa you're fairly low down, but you're, you're straight... And uh, it's a short straight boundary 
at Cardiff. Uh, so <coughs> he's enjoying that cob, though, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that little block of seats have got an excellent view. That's the most densely part, populated part of Cardiff, I think. Here's Blair Tickner bowling to Chris Cook. 161 for six, and Cook semi-aggressive shot, but fielded by uh, Anuj Dahl at backward point. And there is no run. So nine minutes until lunch. Well, eight. I did get a... just had a text off uh, Kevin. Lunch at ten past one? I said, well, no, one o'clock. No. We, do, we don't get yesterday's lost five overs. The lost five overs will remain lost forever because oh. they were post six o'clock. And this next ball from Tickner is pushed to uh, towards David Lloyd. He allows it to go through his legs and then tries to flick it towards the stump. Oh. This is his uh, football days obviously haven't left him. <laughs> that was with his hand. Oh, all oh right, sorry. I was uh, <laughs> looking at the screen at the time. Yeah. No, no. Well, perhaps he ought to have flicked it with his foot. Yeah, he then. might have had more success, certainly. <laughs> Here comes Tickner. And bowls. That was driven oh. back to him. Into the ground, was it? Or was it on yes. the full? No. Yeah, into, into the ground. Yeah. But Cook played a fairly firm drive there, and it just... The noise off the bat is just horrible, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. When the Kookaburra ball is is this old, 55 overs. It's like playing with some old battered thing out of the bottom of the kit bag. Yeah, we used to use them all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> Take their bowls to Cook, who plays this up to mid on this time. Zach Chapel is the fielder. It took about tomorrow afternoon being here which we we, we could be it could uh, be if the weather if, given if the, this game given the weather it's been raining in Los Angeles in the last 24 hours oh my my and heart there was, there breaks was a, for those uh, in Los Angeles the Dodgers were playing the Padres they had a two and a half hour rain delay all right and the game was still going on when I woke up at seven o'clock this <laughs> morning they're only five hours behind no they're not they're seven hours behind are they? it was going on at midnight in comes uh, Tickner, and that one is off the bottom end of the bat. And pushed out into the offside where Harry Kane does the fielding. He's playing quite firm shots at the moment, mm, Chris Cook, like and they're going nowhere. I like that. I think he should continue to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. Big fan. 200 lead. If only it could have been lunch and we could have had a 200 lead at lunch, that would have been very nice. Mm. Might still be. Might not score in the next six minutes. That's a boundary off this ball coming up then. Cook waits to tick the balls to him. There we go. <laughs> Clips it down. It's not a boundary. Clips it down to uh, a long leg where Alex Thompson does the fielding, throws the ball in. Cook's counted to six beautifully for the second successive over and pinches the strike. He's on 28. Douthwaite has two. The will go on 62 for six, leading by 201 runs. Well, Dan Dowthwaite will be quite happy leaning on his bat and watching Chris Cook, uh, the senior partner, knock it around, I'm sure. Get his uh, his eye in, watching from the other end. Thompson, four for 64. Who's going to bowl the next over? Ah, oh, Alex Thompson. Which has been the answer throughout this uh, Glamorgan second innings. And for, for most of long the chunks of the first innings yeah, as absolutely. well. Absolutely, most of the match, it's been spin from the... Uh, Yes, he bowled a third of the uh, overs delivered by Derbyshire in the first innings, now half in the second innings. There's uh, same two close fielders in attendance on the leg side, and uh, Cook plays that one to Madsen at backward point, and there is no run. The umpire, Rob Bailey, is at point because... Otherwise, an Iron Donald at short leg would be restricting his view from square leg. One, six, two for six. One more over before lunch as Cook defends with the deadest of dead bats. And Guest comes out from behind the stumps and picks it up. Leighton's given the uh, Ewan Chatfield shout for uh, Blair Tickner. For Right. Similarities. I'd have to look at video footage. I remember you in Chatfield. 
as Brooke Guest is now moving the field. Brings point in front of square. Madsen's wandering around. The cook says, I'm not facing it while you're still moving the field. Connors trots in. They can't possibly make this the last over, square. can they? Thompson bowls. Cook pushes forward. There are only three balls left, and it's 12.56 on the clock. Points oh, ticked to 57. The excitement builds. <laughs> well, with Cook largely defending, they're not likely to take more than uh, three minutes to... Uh, a minute a ball. ball that would be much, a bit much, wouldn't it? Thompson in, balls. Cook pushes forward cautiously. Four dot balls in this over. It's been uh, four, uh, s five dot balls in a single the last couple of overs as the... Uh, we're invited to celebrate good times in a 70s disco manner by the music pumping into our headphones. Is that Casey and the Sunshine Band? I believe so. As uh, Cook stretches forward, holds the pose. There comes the single. As the ball uh, rolls out on the off side. We've had the five dot balls. Will we have the single or will Dan Douthwaite have to do some work before lunch? 12.58, we will see us. Cook comes down the pitch, drives up to uh, mid on and does take the single. This looks like a plan, actually. Mm. So he's protecting Dan Douthwaite in case he scores too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Cook uh, milking the strike very gently over the last three overs. Cook has 29, Douthwaite has two. I'll have to uh, do my best to summarise this and uh, not crash the uh, Radio L's network. As we're on timed uh, bulletins at the moment. For yeah, well, we are. Yeah, you're well used to on uh, BBC Radio Derby. Well, only since yesterday. <laughs> you're well used to on BBC Radio <laughs> Derby for various technical reasons. Is it... Um, no, it's not going to be Alex Thompson to bowl from both ends. It's going to be a similarly tall figure of uh, Blair Techner to continue his labours. Ten overs, not for 15. Well, we had the Ewan Chatfield shout. The way he was wearing his cap a moment ago, it looked more like Super Mario. <laughs> and his cap firmly perched on top of his head. He's got that burgeoning moustache growing back, which is excellent news. I'll just do the one delivery, I think. Have well, we got time? Yeah, okay. crack on. Somebody moving. Oh, cool in the, the gang, not Casey and the Sunshine Band. Cool in the gang, yeah. Oh dear. Got our 70s disco outfits mixed up. Somebody moving behind the bowler's arm. Incredible. He's taken that in and bowls. That one is turned into the leg side. And they could have got a single there. They decided against it. It might be uh, just uh, that bit of tarpaulin flapping, no, actually. No, well, I didn't want to say that it was the, the, the young lads there who were oh, coming to watch the cricket. They were oh just right. taking their seats. Oh, okay. Fair enough. A little pause in the action. One, six, three, four, six. Tickner in. Bowls and uh, Cook plays that one away through the offside. There might be two runs. There should be two runs, and Cook should retain the strike. Oh, there's a misfield. There might be three runs. There is three runs. There's uh, a rare mistake by Anuj Dahl, who rather ran over the ball at the first attempt, and it continued dribbling towards the boundary rope, but he recovered just in time to prevent a boundary. But that does bring Dan Douthwaite onto strike for the... Uh, First time in more than three overs. Cook moves to 32. 1-6-6 six, six for 6. 74 for 4 overnight. As Tickner is in to bold down leg sides. And uh, Guest does well to get a hand to it. There's a grin on his face. The keeper there did well to prevent buys. It was wide of leg stump. Douthwaite flicked at it and uh, it was parried by Brooke Guest.
one six six for six. I'll count down to lunch. Tickner in, balls, and Dowthwaite gets a ball with a bit of sting in it. Might have jarred the handle that. As he played it out on the offside, and there's no run. Tickner bending his back, the Kiwi import. And oh, Dowthwaite got that pretty close to the middle of the bat. It uh, obviously did sting slightly. Penultimate ball of the morning session. Bowled by Techner to Douthwaite, who does well to keep that one out. Kept a little bit low. Douthwaite playing back, jabbing the bat down in time, and the ball ran down into the gully. That one hardly bounced. Douthwaite did well to keep it out, really. Lloyd with arm upraised, as if wondering how it didn't knock back off stump. Cook, therefore, will be unbeaten on 32 at lunch, unless he's run out, as he's watching the last ball of the session. Bold to Dathway, who blocks it. Players just walking off for lunch with Glamorgan, 166 for six. They've had a good morning session, losing two wickets, Mason Crane for 19, and Colin Ingram run out after a fine 51. But they lead by 205 runs, and they still have Chris Cook there on 32, not out. Play resumes at 20 to two, Glamorgan 166 for six. A reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that you are very welcome to go out to look at the pitch during this lunch interval. If you are going to be venturing onto the outfield, though, we kindly ask you not to walk across the square and also not to take any food or drink out to the middle with you. I've got some lunchtime scores in the other games in the Vitality County Championship taking place elsewhere. We'll start at the Utilita Bowl where in reply to Hampshire's first innings total of 367, Lancashire of 329 for four. At Edgbaston, Durham of 305 for five, still trailing Warwickshire by 393 runs. At Northampton, Middlesex of 206 for two, still trailing Northamptonshire by 346 runs. At Chelmsford, Kent of 303 for six, still trailing Essex by 227 runs. At Bristol, Yorkshire in their second innings are 194 for one, so they're leaving Gloucestershire by 257 runs. At Grace Road, Sussex of 415 for six, so they're leaving Leicestershire by 77. At Trent Bridge, Worcestershire of 331 for 8, still trailing Nottinghamshire by 68 runs. And at the Oval, in their second inning, Somerset of 2 for 1. That's after Surrey made 428, 
to Somerset train by 141 rounds. A reminder that the official Glamorgan website, www.glamorgancricket.com, contains details of how to purchase tickets for all forthcoming games here at Sapphire Gardens this summer. That includes the international matches here on the 28th of May, when England meet Pakistan, as well as on the 13th of September, when England will play Australia. Also on the official Glamorgan website are details of the various match day hospitality packages available for all home games here at Sapphire Gardens. That includes those in the T20 Blast as well as the 100 later this summer. If you're seeking a copy of a score sheet for this match, they're available completely free of charge from reception. Reception is situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. If you're seeking a copy of the 2024 Glamorgan Yearbook, they're available for purchase also from reception on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. And that's where you can also obtain a copy of Chris Cook's testimonial brochure. It's available for a minimum donation of five. The Glamorgan Club shop run by Missouri Sports is also open today. It's situated opposite Gate 2 and will be open until the close of play this evening. It's also selling a wide range of cricket equipment and other items including replica Glamorgan kit plus a range of recently published cricket books. As far as refreshments are concerned, a full range of food and drink can be purchased in the Pyramid Lounge which is situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. This is a brand new initiative for 2024, and that means that the Lewis Lounge on the top floor of the National Cricket Centre is a viewing area 
for members only. Finally, don't forget that the CC4 Museum of Welsh Cricket is also open today. It's situated on the first floor of the National Cricket Centre and contains a number of displays celebrating the long and very proud heritage of cricket here in Wales. The museum also has a number of second-hand cricket books, as well as old Glamorgan yearbooks, which are also available for purchase. The museum will be open until the end of the tea -tea.
Welcome back to Sir Fire Gardens for the afternoon session on day three where Glamorgan resume on 166 for six in their second innings, a lead of 205 runs over Derbyshire. My name is David Pritchard, I'm joined by Dave Fletcher of BBC Radio Derby, live on the BBC Sport website and Glamorgan and Derbyshire's streams. Dave, Derbyshire got themselves back into the, the game with that Colin Ingram run out and a bit of a disappointing end to the session perhaps that he couldn't capitalise on that, that yeah, breakthrough I mean, and that figure of 205 concerns me it has I have no doubt flattened out a touch but has it flattened out enough for them to chase I don't know 230, 240 can they get the remaining four wickets well if the pitch has flattened out it's going to be harder to get the wickets it's, it's lent considerably towards Glamorgan I think in that morning session so it will be interesting to see how they react. Uh, and who bowls from the... Uh, well, we know who's going to bowl from the River Taff end, but we, who bowls from the Cathedral Road end? Because we just saw... Oh, I, well, we all saw it. Anish Dahl was the first man, first man out of the uh, pavilion to do some bowling before the uh, afternoon session. We haven't seen Anish Dahl in this innings, I don't think, so far. So it'll be interesting to see if we do see him. I think we probably should. Just something a bit different. Just that uh, we haven't seen him. Chapel, Thompson, Tickner, came and Connors have bowled, so no Dahl. And it'll be Alex Thompson looked to bowl from the uh, <laughs> River Tavern in the first ball of the afternoon session. Is driven away for four by Chris Cook to the extra cover boundary. Not the start that uh, Alex Thompson was hoping for, or Derbyshire were hoping for, but Glamorgan extend their lead to 209 as they move on to 170 for six. Cook up to 36 now. He's batted uh, pretty well. And he's only faced 62 deliveries, 61 deliveries. So he's batting at a reasonable lick as well. Thompson's got the ball back. And wanted to go to the boundary this morning and made it very soggy. He pushes this next ball, Cook, out into the offside where it's filled eventually by Zach Chappell, who just waits for the ball to arrive at his feet. Anish Dahl's going to bowl from the uh, Cathedral Road end. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He's now wheeling his arms, windmilling his arms around at uh, mid wicket as Thompson comes in and bowls. That one is whipped to Anish Dahl, who does the fielding. Go on, no, just go and do it. No. I was going to say, and immediately windmills his arms, but he hasn't this time, which is a little bit disappointing. Just something a bit different, quicker than he looks, can move the ball in the air. Thompson in and balls down the leg side. Cook tries to catch up with it, but can't. The bail's whipped off by Brooke Guest, but back foot firmly planted behind the line. couple of balls left of the first over after lunch. It's going to be fascinating. Yeah. Morgan will be... Oof, that one's very wide of a leg stump. It's almost negative almost that negative bowling, isn't it? That, I don't like that. Bowling outside the leg stump and turning it further away. Would, would Morgan pull out? I mean, we've all seen the weather forecast for tomorrow. It's too early to pull out now, clearly. As Thompson gives that one a bit more flight and Cook dabs the, bo the bat on the ball and pushes it back with a square on the offside for a single. End of Thompson's 29th over of the second innings. Cook moves on to 37. Douthwaite has two. And Glamorgan, 171 for six, leading by 210. Yeah, you mentioned tomorrow's forecast, the chances of rain. You'd imagine that would be somewhere in the backs of Glamorgan's minds today. Once that lead passes... 250, you'd think they'd be looking to do so in relatively good time to give them some a, a chance of bowling against Derbyshire tomorrow. The forecast has got better though, oh? and you're sort of relying, well, you can, well you're not relying on it raining, you're relying on it not raining, but I'm, I'm not sure where the forecast has got the first idea what they're doing really. Is it a science? It's just witchcraft. <laughs> you can't tell. You look, you look at the forecast for an entire four-day game on day one, and Dahl is going to bowl. Um, and you think, whoa, days three and four, they look awful. You get to days three and four, and there's no sign of the bad weather, because I think they predict the worst. 
and then everybody goes, well, isn't it great? This is a lot better than the forecast. Yeah, first look at Anand Dahl in this Glamorgan second innings. He bowled nine overs in the first innings. Oh, for 24 from those nine. Brooke Guest stands up to him, the wicketkeeper, as Dahl is in to Cook, who defends for no run. And this is something clearly they've been talking about at lunch, isn't it, that the coaching staff has said, well, why not give Nudge a go? Oh, yeah, I forgot him. I'm not sure they did forget him. But uh, it, just just keep changing the bowlers. Even we're talking to David Griffin at lunch. And no Alex Thompson's bowling from the River Taff end because of the breeze and the drift. And that might give him a couple of overs from the uh, Cathedral Road end. As Dahl is in again, on a length and... Cook prods that for no run to Lewis Reese at mid-off. Yes, we talked about Derbyshire skipper David Lloyd being one of those captains who likes to be proactive, likes to change things before they get too stale. But yes, changing Thompson's end is one thing that he hasn't done so far. Thompson bowling every single over from the River Tav end so far in this innings as Dahl is in again to Cook who works that off his legs. But the ball is stopped at square leg by an Aaron Donald. No, Blair Tickner, sorry. I was going to double check something about that win at uh, Worcestershire back in 2022, the last time Derbyshire won a game of Championship cricket, July 2022, which is um, it's quite a while ago. <laughs> As Dahl trundles in over the wicket. Full ball, which Cook again plays off his legs, but Tickner does some more smart fielding. At square leg to stop the run. Yeah, now Cook is fairly well set. Obviously, we'll need to resettle a little more at the start of a new session, but he's on 37. He's very capable of moving swiftly through the gears and scoring at a good rate as he prepares to face the latest ball from Anuj Dal. Again on the leg side, and this time Cook does manage a run as he tipples it down the leg side for one. Yes, the, the last victory in the championship was at New Road, back in the days when you could play cricket at New Road, before the climate took its heavy toll. Uh, and Anuj Dal in that one, I'm sure he took a yeah, five for 40 in the second innings. Atlantis at New Road as Dahl comes in and Douthwaite prods that for no run to end Anuj Dahl's first over just one run from it Glamorgan 172 for 6 a lead of 211 over Derbyshire Dahl's got a very good record against Worcestershire at New Road he got a century along with Lears deploy there last time likes a Pfeiffer as well on the ground That five for 40 in the second innings helped Derbyshire to a 98 run win and we all thought here we go Derbyshire have turned the corner and here we are who knows they might still have turned the corner but we just don't know it yet uh, it's Alex Thompson to bowl from the River Taff <laughs> turn up <laughs> I don't think he's, they're going to get him off He's got 11 wickets in the match. Four for 70 in this innings. Bowls, that's down the leg side and pulled around the corner. Sam Connors won't get there. That's a good shot from Cook. The ball was there to be hit, of course, but he's placed it nicely, far enough away from Sam Connors to pick up a boundary. Moves on to 42, 176 for six. The lead, 215. He hasn't bowled too many bad balls, Alex Thompson, in fairness to him. To say this is his... 30th over of the innings and he bowled 27 in the first as well I mean, uh, 26 in the first it is a terrific effort in what is his first game of the season due to last week's washout nothing quite prepares you to bowl 60 overs in a game does it in 4 days or 3 days Thompson in again, that was defended by Cork out into the offside Zach Chappell comes in and does the fielding, lots of hands in pockets I'm sure that's to keep them warm. But oh, not a get your hands out of your pockets, boys. Come on. Thompson in flatter, defended by Cook. Out into the offside. 
round from behind the stumps comes Guest to do the fielding. Yeah, it's a quieter field at the moment, isn't it, from Derbyshire? Mm. They were quite chipper earlier on, but you get the sense that they just need something to give them a lift here. Oh, Thompson loses his run-up. <laughs> You'd have thought he'd be pretty much in a groove by now, but he lost it there. Here he comes around the wicket, bowling to the right-handed Cook, who guides this down to the vacant backward point region. It's uh, been chased down by Brooke Guest, but the batsman have got through for two. And Cook moves on to 42 now, 178 for six. The scoreboard has speeded up over the course of the game as well, I think. It just feels like the runs are going on even before they've been completed. A skill in itself, apparently. Here comes Thompson again. I almost forgot his name. Uh, and Cook clips it up to a deep mid on, which fielded by Tickner. Watched by wife and young child down to our left hand side. Can't imagine that they were here yesterday. That really cut on a really cold day, Sarah and. Uh, an eight-month-old eight month daughter next to delivery is a full one and defended by Douthwaite. Out into the offside, fielded by Zach Chappell, who two, three, oh, he only got to four keepy-uppies before the ball skimmed off his right foot and he was unable to continue. End of the other one, 79 for six, 45 to Cook, two to Douthwaite. And at 218, the lead has reached the point which we're now waiting to see. Well, it's in Glamorgan's hands now, the game. The game is in Glamorgan's hands. What do they do? Well, I, I, I think they'll just bat on till T. Uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't, assuming that they don't lose all the wickets, of course. Particularly if they score at the rate that they've started this session. Nothing groundbreaking, but a, a boundary and over and a, a single here and there, keeping that run rate ticking over. As Dahl continues from the Cathedral Road end, right arm over to Cook, who whips that down towards the fine leg region for a single. Yeah, you'd imagine Glamorgan would be keen either way to get things going, because wickets have fallen at regular intervals during this match on all three days. So when you are in... May as well try and get on with the scoring on what is a, a tricky pitch at times. As Dahl now bowls to Douthwaite, who hits it onto the leg side but is fielded, no run. Yeah, Douthwaite impressed with the ball in Derbyshire's first innings. Disciplined bowling display from the all rounder. Now he has a chance to show what he can do with bat in hand as he faces up to Dahl, who's in, bowling on a length, and Douthwaite works that down to fine legs. Some half cries of interest from the Derbyshire fielders, but the ball went safe for one run, taking Morgan on to 181 for six. There's no signs that uh, it's the minefield it was on days one or two, or one and two. No signs this morning, no signs since lunch. Yeah, all we've seen is maybe one ball from Thompson stay low, and that's about mm -hmm. it, isn't it, in terms of any devil in this pitch. What can Dahl extract from it? He's in to Cook, who's forward defensively. No run. So uh, we'll be down to uh, Clubbock, and I can go next door and badger uh, Edward, who I think it was last year, asked me about every 30 seconds when Derbyshire were going to declare. I kept telling him they weren't. But he wouldn't have it. And they didn't. <laughs> Here comes Dahl to Cook. Who plays that onto the offside. Again, no run. One ball left in this over. From Anuj Dahl. Yorkshire lost a couple of quick wickets. 
It's in Bristol, of course. I, I, I should have known that. I said it was at Headingley. Joe Root batting with Shan Masood. That hardly seems fair in the second division of the county championship to me. As Dahl is in, a full delivery, which Douthwaite drives, and Dahl gets a hand on it, hits the stumps, but uh, Douthwaite, sorry, is in his ground. It was Cook with a drive. Dahl got a hand on it. Could have been a run-out chance, but Douthwaite was safely in. So that's the end of the 61st over. Glamorgan, 181 for six, a lead of 220. Isn't it remarkable where cricket's played these days? Oman have beaten Cambodia by 63 runs. Who knew they played cricket in Cambodia? Certainly not me. It's going to be uh, Alex Thompson to continue from the River Taff end, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Sussex 428 for 6 they lead Leicestershire by 90 now at Grace Road Middlesex 231 for 2 trailing North Ants by 321 in comes Thompson and balls to Douthwaite who turns it aerially into the leg side to the left of an Iron Donald and they go through for a single Wayne Madsen can't believe a catch hasn't been taken he is very very optimistic Wayne swaps from uh, one side of the pitch to the other. He's gone in at backward point, quite deep. There's a leg slip and a short leg for Chris Cook, who's on 46 and just goes, uh, and just pushes forward. Ball goes out into the offside. It's filled by Thompson himself. He hasn't bowled much over the wicket to the right-handers in this match, Thompson, but even if he's not going to change end, a change of angle just of bowling yeah, might just do mixing. something different. Yeah, absolutely. He's on his way in again now. Cook waits and is struck on the pad. It looks like he was considering it for a moment there. Umpire Bainton just tilted his head a little bit. Cook and seemed to get a fairly long stride in, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, you can't you can't give that out with the naked eye. Really, might have hit him outside the line. And goes the next delivery from Thompson on the back foot this time. Cook pushes it back to the bowler. It was playing back that did for uh, Mason Crane earlier. And it was uh, running halfway down the pitch and then back again that did for Colin Ingram. The two wickets that fell this morning. 182 for six as Thompson bowls. as quicker delivery. There's an appeal for leg before wicket not out, says Neil Bainton. Again, I think the suggestion is it's outside the line. That's why he wants it, but it's, uh, it was worth a shout. It probably would have hit the stumps. Yeah, Cook going for that additional little move across his stumps after the ball had hit his pads, just to, just to plant that extra seed of doubt yeah. in the umpire's mind. Everything, everything you can use. Thompson in again, and uh, Cook lunges forward and pushes the ball back. Two Thompson, one off the over. Four for 78 from 31 overs now, Alex Thompson. Cook has 46, Douthwaite has four. Glamorgan are 182 for six. They lead by 221 with those four second innings wickets still in hand. And Derbyshire, they, they don't look beaten. I would, uh, I would say that that's certainly not the case, but they must surely feel now that Glamorgan are heavy, heavy favourites to win this game. If they, if Glamorgan didn't win from here, as I said at lunchtime, I'd be surprised. <laughs> I didn't say that. Here's Anand Dahl to Dan Douthwaite. Slightly back of a length and the Glamorgan all-rounder just punches it down the ground to mid-off. No run. It's 156 overs left. Potentially in the day, in the match rather. I'm 100% confident I don't have a two o'clock. <laughs> Dal bows down the leg side. Dalswick doesn't seem to make contact with it, but we'll uh, get through for a single. Is that leg buys? Yes, the 
Leg by is signalled by Empire Bailey. So Glamorgan's total increases by one. They're 183 for six. Cook is back on strike. He's on 46, so he's within a boundary of a half century. Colin Ingram, the top scorer for Glamorgan so far in this second innings with 51 before he was run out before lunch. Anaj Dahl is in over the wicket to Cook, who defends onto the offside. As Derbyshire's fielders look to shine this Cookaburra ball. Looks like quite a thankless task for Lewis Rees as he gets his sleeve to work on that ball at mid-off. And Dahl is in once more. A full ball which Cook drives and Dahl fields off his own bowling for no run. Sorry, I was just listening to the start of the news bulletin on BBC Sounds to make sure it was a newsreader I'd never heard before, which it is, and it's, that means it's a regional news bulletin. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure... I, I, I don't really... Changes are too much for my brain. Dahl comes in over the wicket, and Cook looks to work it onto the offside, and he'll get a single for that to extra cover. Brings Douthwaite on strike for the final ball of Dahl's third over. Balconeers just uh, confirming they'll be at Derby in August. That's good. Here is Dahl. And Douthwaite drives for no run. The end of the 63rd over. Glamorgan. 184 for six, a lead of 223. Next time they're away is Leicestershire. Oh, it's good to see those fed as well at uh, Swansea. The Balkan is. It's going to be Alex Thompson from the uh, <laughs> River Taff end. Ah oh dear. When's it not going to be Alex Thompson from the River Taffer? Well, probably when Morgan are all out. Oof. That's going to come over the wicket to uh, Chris Cook, who's on 47. 184 for six, lead 223. Just slowing down a bit. 13 runs in the last. 10 overs, as oh, that one turns down the leg side, it's missed by Brooke Guess, it's dribbling towards the boundary, it's being chased down by Sam Connors who gets there now, they're going to come back for a third bye, that's good running, no leg byes have been given, my apologies to Brooke Guest, I didn't think it had hit anything, I thought it was just a, the turn of the ball, 187 for six. This is the contest we've come to see though, Douthwaite against the off spinner. It hasn't really ignited just yet. Four off 20. Dan Douthwaite. But it could just as easily be 20 off 24. And uh, not playing that shot, he can't. He goes back into his stumps and pushes it back to Alex Thompson. But if I was. Uh, Blair Tickner at uh, deep mid on. Harry came out on the mid on the mid wicket boundary. I'd be ready. As he, <laughs> as he goes back into his crease and pushes it out into the offside where it's fielded by Wayne Madsen. It's very restrained, isn't it? Because I'm sure he must be itching to just swing the bat. And it, it's an important innings for him because as we discussed earlier in the match, he wants to play a greater role in red ball cricket, so you have to be disciplined and as he whips that down off on the bounce to uh, Alex Thompson who fields at the end of his follow through it's, uh, it will be noted he is being disciplined I'm sure up in the changing room the analysts will put a little tick next to the discipline box that's probably more likely check it on a laptop 187 for 6 Thompson bowls there we go he's, he's Slightly more aggressive 
up towards the deep mid on where it's filled by Tickner. Douthwaite picks up another single, moves to five, 188 for six. Yeah, controlled aggression. Head-to-head yeah. -head battle with two former Cardiff Met students. Wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have been contemporaries, would they? Well, they might have been, I don't know. Next one is, uh, when he comes down the track, does uh, Cook and pushes it out into the offside. Douthwaite's 27 and what's Thompson, 30 or so? so. <laughs> Well, well, there we go. The, ma the man who can work these things out has uh, picked up a book, which is good to see. Thompson is uh, 30, yep. So they're unlikely to have been contemporaries. Is that the right word? Yeah. That's the right word, yeah. There's some good cricketers have passed through there. Yeah, Jack absolutely. Leach, one of the more recent. Mm. Well, the university system has also provided Lewis Reese, who came through Leeds Bradford. He's doing some kind of masters, I believe. I'd be surprised if Anish Dahl didn't go to university. One or two of the others, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> <laughs> if they hadn't been to university. Uh, some changes to Anish Dahl's field now for Dan Douthwaite. A couple of catchers on the leg side as Dahl is in. And Douthwaite shows more restraint as he blocks the first ball for no run. Yeah, cricket, one of those sports that allows you to have a university education and still enjoy a long professional career. As Dahl comes in to Douthwaite over the wicket. Douthwaite drives this through the covers. They'll take at least a single here, think about a second and think better of it. So Douthwaite moves on to six, Glamorgan now 189 for six, a lead of 228. I should ask Anos this, but there's some confusion as to where he was born. Some websites say Newcastle under Lyme, under Lyme which is uh, Stoke of course, and some say Newcastle upon Tyne, which is not Stoke. Here comes Dahl with a full delivery to Cook, who plays defensively for no run. But he did go to school in South Africa, Durban High School, and back in this country at Nottingham High School. But there's that difference of opinion. And I've never asked him, and I've no idea why, because it comes up regularly. Especially when we play Durham. Here is Dal. Full delivery which Cook drives but missed times, no run. Playfair and the Who's Who disagree. Yes, it's, a, it's remarkable. The Who's Who ordinarily would have been filled in by himself, you would have thought. So what does Who's Who say? Staffs. Staffs, yeah. I think it's more likely to be staffs, but. Yeah, it would make sense given the school you mentioned and the fact that he's you know, in Derbyshire now. Yeah. Here is Dahl again. And Cook just prods defensively to this one as well. And I'm, to my eternal shame, I, I think members of his family have actually been in touch with me in the past to tell me, and I've completely <laughs> forgotten. <laughs> Maybe it's Newcastle Emlyn. We can claim him as another Welshman. <laughs> yeah, could it be Newcastle, New South Wales? Here is Dahl at the top of his mark, and he's in to Cook, who drives expansively this time. Hasn't quite timed it. He won't reach the boundary, but there's a chase on for Lewis Reese, who does his fielding tidily, and Cook will get through for a third run, and that will bring up the Glamorgan wicketkeeper's half century. It comes up in 94 balls. Chris Cook on 50 exactly, and Glamorgan are now 192 for six, a lead of 231. Yeah, he's played well, hasn't he? Six falls in that uh, half well, century as well, as we're about to hear. 94 balls and included six falls. Oh, there we go. There we go. And extra applause for that. Including one from the gentleman who's still sitting halfway on the sight screen at the far end. Yeah, now Thompson's coming over the wicket to the right-hand. He might be more in the line of sight, mightn't he? 
Yeah. He seems to be having a nice time. <laughs> I think he's quite comfortable. And nobody's complained, so. Alex Thompson then, 192 for six, lead 231. Balls to Cook, who defends it straight back to the bowler. And there is no run. Lewis Reese is the other one who, who always fascinates me as far as uh, place of birth. Because he was born in Taunton, as this next one is uh, carved away off the back foot. Very much in front of square for four runs out to the extra cover boundary. Nice shot. Alex Thompson dropping a bit short there. And Cook took full advantage. He moves to 54, 196 for six, a lead of 235. His entire schooling was in the north. He went to uh, St. Michael's School in Chorley, which is the same school that Matt Critchley went to. Then Maisco College, which is just outside Chorley. Leeds met. So he is very much a northerner, despite being born in Taunton. Thompson is in, using his feet. Cook meets the pitch of the ball and clips it up to mid on where it's fielded by Blair Tickner single take and Cook 55 197 for 6 yeah Leeds met another strong sporting university Thompson in and balls to Douthwaite who drives him for 4 there we go that was over pitched from Thompson that time and it was uh, dismissed out towards the wide long off boundary Douthwaite moves to 10 and 200 is up for Glamorgan in their second innings. 201 for six. The lead up to 240. He really threw his hands and arms through that Douthwaite. You get the impression he's been itching to free his arms throughout this innings and that's been his first chance to really do so. What will Thompson's response be? He's in balls to Douthwaite who defends it back to the Derbyshire off spinner. <coughs> Another of the Staffordshire contingent, born in Leek. Which is not too far outside the Derbyshire boundary. And he's in again. Douthwaite this time plunges forward defensively, remarks his guard because that's the end of the over. Thompson picks up, Cook has 55, Douthwaite has 10. Partnership worth 65 off 108 deliveries. And Morgan, 200 more for six, leading by 240. There we go. All the information you require on your screen right now. <laughs> Best partnership of the innings so far for Glamorgan. It's come at a decent rate, as you mentioned, Dave. Wonder now if we'll see Douthwaite accelerate it all now that he's settled in a bit we just saw a glimpse of his attacking instincts with that excellent off drive from Alex Thompson who maybe just started to show the first signs of weariness 33 overs into his spell needed, needed more gym work in the winter here's Anna Dahl at the Cathedral Road end to Cook who works that down the leg side for a single very quiet out there isn't it there's I don't know if there's a natural cheerleader. Harry Kame usually is the designated clapper. He's got his hands in his pockets at the moment at uh, extra cover. Yeah, still a fairly attacking field in some respects. For Dahl, two catches on the leg side, but no slip. And he's in and pulls full. And Douthwaite drives slightly uppishly, but for no run. The other person who's loud, <laughs> but whether he's a cheerleader or not, is Zach Chapel. He's got a booming voice. And you can often hear him from one end of a cricket ground to the other. Every team needs a character like that. As Dahl continues to Douthwaite, the full ball, and Douthwaite drives firmly. And to the loud Zach Chapel, who does the fielding at mid on. Sam Connor's stretching. Do you think 
David Lloyd has decided that we're not going to see him or Lewis Rees today. But it looks like it, doesn't it? It'll be Dahl to continue for now. Dalthwaite defending solidly. Yeah, both medium paces, aren't they? They're just thinking this isn't the surface for them. If I was going to bowl one of them, it would be probably be Reese because of his because his left arm. But it's just something a bit different, isn't it? Here's the right sided Dahl. That's the way it drives to Reese for no run. I think Dahl is quicker than both of them. Uh, Reese, two or three seasons ago, was a proper all rounder. Really, scored a lot of runs opening the batting and. Did up the bowling on occasion. We picked up a couple of injuries, had a knee injury, he's had a, a shoulder, elbow injury, so perhaps he's trying to take it easy on the bowling front. Here's Dahl. Bowling to Douthwaite, who defends no run. That brings to a close the 67th over with Glamorgan 202 for six, a lead of 241. And there'll be a change in the commentary box as Nick Webb makes a return in my place. And bowling from the River Taff end is Sam Connors. What? So loud. What's going on here? For the first time in this it's innings, which is now 67 Sam overs Connors. old, it will not be uh, Alex Good Thompson heavens. bowling from the... River Taff end. There we are. There's uh, a fact for the close of play report. 33 overs. The spell for uh, Alex Thompson. Virtually right itself at this rate. <sighs> I've uh, <laughs> passed the writing duties on to my uh, yeah. learned colleague. No, no. His no. skills in that department. Not just football supporters who benefit from Mr. Pritchard's purple prose. 202 for six. It's a completely different rhythm. This will be, won't it? With, uh, well, it will. Connor's taking over. I imagine now Dahl's quite pleased because uh, it means he doesn't. He gets a bit more rest if he's going to continue from the uh, Cathedral Road end. What are we on? 67 over, so 13 till the second new ball. There's a slip. There's two catching mid-wickets. All Connors bowls to uh, Cork, and there's an appeal for leg before wicket height, and the fact that it might have been going down leg side would have detracted from the appeal, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, well, it was never going to hit the stumps. It did hit the pad, which is <laughs> the start. Which is the first thing you look for. <laughs> It remains 202 for six. The lead, 241. As Connors is in and bowls to Cook and strikes the pad. Again, probably might even have been outside the line of leg stump, but it was certainly going down leg side. And therefore, the appeal was stifled. Batters just aren't used to seeing anybody coming off more than four paces from the uh, <laughs> River Taff end. So Alex Thompson may well have gone off, actually. That's uh, Jack Morley at square leg, I think. As next delivery from Connors, he put an effort into that one. You can hear the grunt. And Cook pushes it out into the offside, where it's fairly by Harry Kame. Yeah, I think that is uh, Jack Morley. Well, you can forgive uh, Thompson for uh, wanting a, a quick uh, towel down or a cup of tea. Yes. First on the cakes. <laughs> bit early, a bit early for the cakes, isn't it? It is a bit early for the oh, cakes. Yeah. yeah. I'll be uh, hightailing it down the corridor as Connor's bowls turn into the leg side by Cook and fielded by an Aaron Donald. Which I'm sure in the players' cakes are not a case, uh, are not cakes, but uh, nutrition bars yeah. and isotonic drinks, etc. Yes, yeah, nobody needs that, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Let's see if I can locate. I like to locate David Grew. Oh, I found him. <laughs> it didn't take much locating. It comes uh, Connors and Balls. That was turned into the leg side by Cook. Around comes. Confirming with his left arm throw, Jack Morley. Haven't seen him yet in uh, actual action. On loan from Lancashire. Cousin of a fellow Great Britain handball international of my uh, my son's. Good knowledge. Afternoon. Well, that was the. It was, it was my son who told me. Uh, afternoon to Harry. If he's watching, he's he's out in the Middle East, I think. Uh, Charlie's in Chorl in uh, Horwich. Connor's balls and <laughs> is defended by Dowd. A little hurriedly. Out into the offside. Again, that ungainly defence of Dan Dathwaite we were talking about before lunch. End of the over. 203 for six, lead 242. Is Fletcher Jr. still uh, pursuing the, the noble art of handball? Uh, not so much now, no, not so much. No, he's sort of concentrating on goalkeeping and uh, the upcoming cricket season. Talented boy, then. Well, no, just a very willing... He's a goalkeeper. I mean, that, that says it all, doesn't it, really? Um, <laughs> what, slightly mad? Afternoon. <laughs> afternoon, <laughs> Charlie. Um, it's, it's that time of the year when they've had a whole host of postponements because in the northwest football has really struggled. So it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Wednesday, Monday. Oh, it's, wow. it's absolute madness at the moment. That's um, quite, the, uh, quite the ask at the amateur level, isn't it? Well, the league goes up as far as Cumbria as well, so... Mm. Here's Darlin running away from us and bowling to Cook, who drives gently to cover. And uh, there's no run. Wait to see whether the uh, South East Wales Cricket League will uh, get underway on time. I'm sure it will in some clubs, but... Uh, when, does, when does that start? About the third Saturday in April? Um, for us in the lower divisions, it's the first Saturday in May. Right. There's dull balls on the legs, turned to square leg by Cook, and uh, there is no run. The first match that I'll be missing because of professional duties um, will be uh, Macken seconds against Aberkin and seconds. Oof, big one. Seconds? Sorry, I don't I shouldn't have been so surprised. <laughs> there are only two teams in oh, the well, okay. <laughs> the first team is in Division 3 and the second team is in Division 11. There's quite a difference. There's dull balls and that's punched through the leg side by Chris Cook. Latched onto that one nicely, slightly off radar from uh, Anuj Dahl. And Cook duly dispatched it to the ropes in front at the grandstand. Oh, Dal won't be happy with that one. No. Probably landed outside leg there. Yeah, it was a misdirected, wasn't it? There are two on the drive on the leg side, as per usual, plus a square leg and a fine leg, but uh, none of those was in business there. 207 for six as Cook pushes forward. Now the Third top scorer of the match, Chris Cook. He's just overtaken David Lloyd's 60. Wayne Madsen's 63 and Kieran Carlson's 74, was it? 74. Yeah. A lie ahead of him, potentially. Dal bowls and Cook is squared up by that one and it squirts down to the fly slip and Madsen crawls after it. There's no danger of a run. Dathwaite is standing at the non-striker's end as if he were receiving the ball. He's practising a range of shots, most of which he hasn't played so far. <laughs> He's on probably the slowest 10 that Dan Dathwaite scored. He hasn't had that much strike, actually, but 10 off 35. There's dull balls. That's down leg side and great take by uh, Brooke Guest. As Cook fails to make contact, 207 for six. One boundary scoring shot in that over. The lead is 2 4 6. 
listening to BBC Sport Online. If you want to communicate with us at Fletch Cricket, uh, not at Fletch Cricket, it used to be Fletch Cricket at gmail.com or nickweb2017 at gmail.com. And here's at Fletch Sport, and I'm at nickweb2017. And Dav Pritchard is at Dav Pritchard. He is, yeah, rather brilliantly. I don't know how he thought that one up. <laughs> uh, uh, Alex Thompson's back on the field. He's at square leg. And uh, Sam Connors is going to continue from the River Taff end. We've had listeners from Turkey, Tenerife and Bogota today, if you're anywhere exotic. Yeah, well, we totally lost really yesterday and the day before. Room. Yeah. Somebody from Rotherham. <laughs> 207 for six. Sam Connors with those two catching mid-wickets. Two Welshmen. Connors is in and Dalthwaite defends it up to uh, mid-on when it's fielded by the Kiwi. What's, what's that chapel having? He's shaking hands with somebody. He's shaking hands with the Derbyshire S&C. Yeah, there we are. He's obviously done a fine job, your s and C man. Oh, I thought he was going. Press release imminent, question mark. 207 for six. He might just be going for a coffee. You know how <laughs> they love to shake hands, cricketers, don't they? Here's Connors. In balls to Dallas. Wait, down the leg side. Uh, he might have got some bat on that. I think he did. No, he didn't. It's a leg by. That's good for uh, Brooke Guest because he didn't take it cleanly. 208 for six. Yeah, Guest has been uh, given one or two to deal with down the leg side today from the Derbyshire bowlers. The seamers might care to uh, adjust their radar now and again. Like all wicket keepers, he relishes the challenge of the, the odd ball down the leg side. I, I think he actually enjoys it, Brooke. He's, uh, he's something of a freak. <laughs> I'll explain, as Connors bowls, and that one is turned into the leg side by Cook for a single off his pad, 62 to Cook, 209 for six now, 248 the lead. Because he bats so high in the order, I mean, he was batting at three last season, so he gets to the ground before everybody else because he has to have his net and he has to do all his wicket-keeping drills. And he is, he's the, There isn't an ounce on him that isn't used <laughs> or useful. He's, a, he's an astonishing athlete. I'm freakish in that way. One of the nicest young men you could wish to meet as Connors bowls to Dalthwaite who gets in a terrible tangle. <laughs> Not, I think he was trying to defend it. it I'd like to see that again from front on. We've got his, he's got his back to us. And we're going to thank you very much, boys. Uh, we are going to see that again because uh, he went forward and, uh, oh, it nipped back nastily. Oh, yes. <laughs> nastily nipped back. Uh, hit him, not centrally, but certainly painfully on the, the upper thigh. But uh, Left in a thigh. That's not good. Th thankfully not in the uh, the bullseye target zone. No. But still painful. It's still painful. Ball on flesh. He was leaning back there. Now he's ready as Connors comes in and um, bowls to him. And that one is clipped away and nicely into the leg side. Beyond the despairing dive of an Iron Donald, it's being chased by uh, Blair Tick. Oh. <laughs> gets there an inch before it gets to the boundary and they run three. So he saved another one there. He did that yesterday as well, I remember, out on the sort of mid-wicket area. So uh, good commitment from the Kiwi, as you would expect. Mm. How, how long is he here for, roughly? Uh, he's here till midway through the T20, I believe. And uh, we've got Mr. Du Pavillon. Mr. Du Pavillon is uh, Darren Du Pavillon is coming. Yes. I don't expect any accents. <laughs> I'll have to ask him how he pronounces it. This one is guided out into the offside by Cook. He sort of admonishes himself there as well. Perhaps he thought he could have. Squeezed it between the two fielders on the offside. There was no run at the end of the over. 212 for six. Dowtweight 13. Cook 62. The lead 251. He'll be here at the beginning of May for the Sussex home game. Sounds as though we have uh, some French blood in, doesn't mm. it? Uh, welcome uh, notre ami nouveau, uh, Darin du Pavillon. <laughs> 
<laughs> if I start calling him that, <laughs> you'll know I've gone completely mad. I think, he's, is he not from Durban? Uh, I think he's unlikely to have a French accent if he's from uh, Durban. 212 for six. The lead is 251. It's uh, gone over another little landmark of 250 runs with that shot. And it will be uh, Dowsweight to face up to the economical Anuj Dahl at the start of a new over. Going at just two runs and over with guests standing up. Dahl bowls and uh, that's played gently all along the ground up to Zach Chapel. He is indeed from uh, Durban. Darren Miles du Pavillon. <laughs> My favourite tweet um, uh, apologies for the person who came up with it, who asked, uh, are we also going to uh, be signing, because it's due, Pavillon. Dal Bowles to Dalsway, who drives to mid-on again, no run. Do scoreboard and do side screen, <laughs> which, which was very good. Yeah, absolutely. Has, has the pitch died a bit, or have Glamorgan batted well, says Leighton, uh, or asks Leighton, bit of both. Yes, probably. I think they have batted well. Derbyshire perhaps haven't bowled as well, and the pitch has flattened out a little bit as well, and that particular combination is, is bad news for Derbyshire and good for Glamorgan. As uh, that's nudged away on the onside by Dowsway. Oh, there was a very long single there, and he hasn't taken it. Um, that was odd. I think uh, I thought it was going to be fielded by Tickner at mid-wicket, but he seemed to be... Um, sorry, that's not Techno, is it? Or is it? It's Thompson. It's Thompson. You won't have seen him much today. No, no, I don't recognise him. <laughs> don't recognise him now, he's not bowling. Um, so he ran beside it for a while, uh, but there was a uh, a single available, but they turned it down. Dalthwaite on 13. Dahl bowls to him, and he's squared up and plays back to the bowler. I may have done you a disservice there because I was looking at Thompson, but. He is. He's, is it the one who was warming yes. up there? That, that is. Um, that is yeah. Tickner. Hmm. My apologies. Uh, Ian Evans asks us if we've changed our minds on what a winning score should be. Should Glamorgan try to put their feet down and try and score quickly before the new ball? As uh, Downsight defends firmly on the leg side, bearing in mind the weather tomorrow. I hadn't even thought about the new ball, to be honest, because we didn't think the uh, innings was likely to last this long. But we are in the 71st over, so maybe we, we and they ought to start uh, thinking about it. The lead 2-5-1. I, I think that's m that might be enough, but you never know. Might be. Hmm. As that's... Uh, Flick nicely through the leg side. There will be runs this time. In fact, there will be four of them. As Tickner cannot chase it in time. And uh, Dowthwaite moves to 17 in the total on to 216 for six. And the lead on to 255. But uh, the pitch, well, there are signs of the third day blanding out that we're used to at uh, Sophia mm. Gardens, even though it was... Uh, not quite a side or a bad Bunsen burner, but uh, going that way at times on the first couple of days. From where it started, it, mm. it's certainly flattened out to touch. Mm. Certainly flattened out to touch. A heavy roller this morning would have been a factor. Also, the presence of a bit of sunlight today. Yeah, yeah. Yes, which makes it a difficult call, of course, for mm. Morgan themselves, because uh, at the moment, without taking weather into con into consideration, as the the thick end of 150 overs left in the match. Mm. I mean, you don't want to be declaring with a lead of 255 with a, that many overs left, I don't think. Just in case it stays dry tomorrow. Yes. Sam Connors from the River Tap End bowling to Chris Cook plays it into the on side where it's filled by David Lloyd. Play at Pompey, I am not. No. Uh, what you not? I'm Full not of pasta? Well, I'm full of pasta. He says, may I inquire if Fletch Sport is a Derby County fan? We are reporters. We're supporters sometimes in our spare time, but we're reporters when we're on air. Yes, when he's, he's obviously saying he hopes that Derby go up, but not as League One champions, because that will be Portsmouth. 
In comes Connors again and bowls. Cook pushes the ball past the bowler. It's picked up by Lewis Reese. And there is no run. I'm a Trammy Rovers fan. <coughs> Do you ever get to work on their games, or is that uh, purely as a leisure pursuit? Um, as, as a leisure, yeah. So, well, if Burton had gone down, I would. Uh, I'm not sure they are going to go down anymore. Only yesterday, this, this time yesterday, I was absolutely 100% convinced that they were. Um, I have worked at Trammer a couple of times. I found it a very strange experience. <laughs> Here comes Connors and Bowles, and that one is defended by... Cook straight back to Connors. This once they came in a cup tie to Burton, mm. uh, and it was really weird, <laughs> really weird. Uh. Yes, I find it um, quite easy commentating on one Welsh rugby side against someone from England, France, Ireland, Scotland, whatever. But uh, the Welsh derbies, you have to try and uh, hide your uh, allegiances. Yes. Here comes. Corners again and Bowles Cook pushes this one out into the offside came fields. Neil Thornycroft on Twitter says hopeful of a Glamorgan win, but the strip appears to be getting better for batting now, but the target is getting large. Yeah, at two fifty five the lead at the moment is large by the context of uh, of this game. It would be the, the highest score of the game were Derbyshire to attain it. Hmm. Hello to Derek, Derek Allen, writing out some podcasts with Ellie, as in comes Connors and Bowles, that one is turning to the leg side by Cook, they'll get one, I think they'll stick with one, they do as it's fielded by Alex Thompson, Cook moves to 63, 217, 4 six. And podcast at random scorecards, and uh, of course doing their charity walks up in the northeast. Derek is a, a regular at Chesterle Street. With, uh, with Ali. Oh, it's good to hear from them. In fact, he converses during the winter, which is very nice of him. It's uh, mm. you know, just, just checking in. People think cricket commentators uh, sort of uh, hibernate. Sometimes it's quite like to have a hibernate. It would be nice at times. If it didn't count as part of your lifespan, I'd be quite happy to uh, <laughs> hibernate for six months. Yeah. Connors is in bowls to Dow's weight. He pushes the ball back past Connors. There's a an interesting half stop by. It's a full stop in the end, is it? Yeah, it is. I thought it must have been a bit of turf that kicked up as the ball was uh, stopped by Blair Ticknett. They do go through for a single, though. Douthwaite moves on to 18 and pinches the strike. Cook has 63. The Morgan, 218 for six, lead by 257. I've often wondered if the reason why the older you get, the less you sleep, which I think is an undoubted truth, is because there is less time <laughs> you can't waste it all sleeping can you mm, that's yeah I think physically you, you don't sleep as well maybe there's some urgent imperative at the back of the brain somewhere although uh, sometimes in the uh, the winter after after years of uh, wrangling small children and or appearing on breakfast uh, radio I, I do tend to uh, sleep in a bit in the winter given mm. half a chance I'm very much at six o'clock in the morning, mm. wide awake. And if I do fall back asleep, though, I really struggle. Mm. Uh, Wayne Madsen's left the field temporarily to be replaced by Jack Morley again. Uh, sorry to hear that the Balconeers won't be uh, selecting a squad, as they put it, for the Northampton and Yorkshire fixtures, but uh, they do hope to go to the remaining games. We had uh, about three dozen of them, I think, uh, on a party at... Uh, at Lords, uh, next scheduled visit therefore is Leicester, Grace Road, 24th to the 27th of May. They've got a three-day stay, so they're going up on the the first morning. Details at thebalconeers.co.uk on the interweb. Also, uh, they're hoping to uh, go to Cheltenham and, of course, to Derby. Yes, that seems to be a good. Uh a good showing from the Balconeers at Derby. As Tickner is taking over and he's added pace, he's Douthwaite on the back foot and playing to Chapel at uh, mid on. The only unfortunate thing about the timing of the Derbyshire versus Glamorgan match is that it uh, precludes me from uh, 
watching New Order in Cardiff Bay, which I would have quite enjoyed, I think. So uh, you're going to miss New Order to watch a county championship match, then it's admirable. Indeed, it's the, it's the night before and I uh, shall be uh, tucked up on a Derby hotel by then. As that's driven firmly half stopped or quarter stopped, I think, by uh, one of the mid wickets, but still two runs for Douthwaite uh, towards the mid wicket boundary. Glamorgan move on to 220 for six. The lead is 259. Yes, if. Um, Never actually seen New Order, who are by all accounts a variable experience live, but they also know what they're doing by now. <laughs> yes. I did see them in their Joy Division uh, really? days supporting Buzzcocks Excellent. in Bristol. Uh, circa 79. Yeah, late Pete, the late Pete Shelley born just up the road from where I live. All right. In Lee. Mm hmm. Yes, I've just uh, picked up a, a book which I haven't started yet of uh, Pete Shelley's thoughts. As that's driven back past Techner by Douthwaite and uh, they had to wait a moment to see if he would field it, but he didn't. And Douthwaite calls Cook through for a smart single as it's fielded directly behind the bowler as uh, the... Bareheaded Reese and the sun hatted chapel converged. Nice to uh, have a couple of players who are instantly identifiable by their headgear or lack of, uh, as opposed to the usual choice of caps or helmets for everyone else. Tickner bouncing gently on the balls of his feet before he runs in and bowls, and uh, that's hit cross bat by Cook into the offside, not quite timed. And there's no run. 2.21 for six. So these two came together with the score on 1.36. Is it the biggest partnership of the match? It might be. Might well be. Yeah, it was 85. Yes, yes I think Derbyshire's bit. highest was 76. And I don't think Glamorgan got anything of that nature. In the first innings, as Cook drives to mid on. And there is no run. I know it's madness we're coming to the castle. Yes. That'd, that'd be a good party. I, yes, it probably would, but I saw them in the Cardiff Arena last November, okay. so it's probably very much the same set. Yes, so. you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? Good fun, though. Mm. Yeah, mm. I saw them many years ago. There's... Uh, Tickner's in, balls, and uh, Cook drives again. Not much uh, force in the shot. 73 overs gone, seven till a potential new ball. Uh, Suggs maybe doesn't uh, do quite as many wacky dances as he used to. No. It's imagine. more a statesman-like uh, <laughs> senior midfielder spraying the ball around than the uh, hard-working box-to-box man that he once was. <laughs> And football analogies. Absolutely. He, he's moving within the centre circle these days, but beautiful, beautiful timing, of course. Yeah, it never misses and a pass. Cue the sax man, <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't fly anymore. Uh, uh, there's a, another substitute fielder on for Derbyshire I have to tell you about. Uh, Matt Lamb is out there on the field. He's replaced Anish Dahl temporarily. Chris Cook is having some attention to his boot. Oh, there we are. He's having uh, having one of his studs screwed in a little bit more tightly by uh, young Asa Tribe, who has made uh, his presence known in this match, the 20-year-old sub, by uh, taking a very important catch to get rid of Wayne Madsen, uh, juggling high above his head at, uh, at cover. So... Tribe has played his small part, and now his rather less uh, lesser role is to <laughs> screw in Chris uh, Cook's studs on his boot. Not equally important, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Sam Connors from the River Taff end. Running to what? Well, he's not yet, because he's sorting his field out still. They've got one catching mid-wicket now 
And another one almost immediately behind David Lloyd. That's Alex Thompson. Here comes Connor's one slip. As, uh, and that slip is an Aaron Donald as Douthwaite pushes the ball quite straight on the onside back towards the bowler. Lloyd does the fielding for him. And there's no run. The lead of 260 now. The start of the day. It was considerably less. Ian on the email says uh, his brother-in-law saw Buzzcocks in Manchester on the same tour but didn't bother watching Joy Division as he was drinking in the bar and has regretted it ever since. Uh, here comes Connors again. Bowls to Dalswaite who gets a little bit hurried by that one. Gets his back down on it really, really late. And Connors puts his head in his hands at the end of his follow-through. I must admit I'm not as assiduous in watching support acts as I should be really. Um, just a sign of encroaching age I think that if you haven't heard of them you you think twice sometimes about uh, rocking up early but it's, it's not really a, a good way to go Connors balls to Douthwaite who drives very pleasantly and it's a nice stop by Harry Kame at extra cover diving full length on uh, one of those practice pitches to prevent a run from being scored to 2-1 two, two, for six it remains I went to watch the House Martins in their early days in, right. in Hull mm -hmm. and we did watch the support act, it was these two blokes with glasses one played a guitar, <laughs> Scottish <laughs> so we saw the Proclaimers as well, supporting uh, we didn't know who the Proclaimers were, no, I'd no. never heard of them they were uh, very entertaining but you're right, I've seen a lot of support acts over the years and thought, nah, I'll go back to the bar. Connors is in a balls to Douthwaite, who turns this one into the onside where Lloyd feels, and there is no run. The Lightning Seeds were supporting Madness on their most recent tour, and I believe are doing so on um, a number of other occasions in, in the summer as well. I do like Ian Brody. Mm music was made famous and he made a couple of quid out of match of the day basically didn't he? because <laughs> every single goal montage appeared, it seemed to be a lightning seeds track part of that Liverpool scene when I was at university in comes collars and balls that one's whipped into the leg side for wow. four by Douthwaite he's, uh, he's hit that very hard indeed just whip of the hands almost and uh, away it went Four more to Douthwaite, who moves to 25. Glamorgan, 225 for six. The lead up to 264. On, uh, hit, on his third boundary, though. And that music was the, the life of Riley, wasn't it? And, uh, yes. Yeah, Riley, the said Riley, is now playing guitar for the is Lightning he? Seeds. Well, that's his son, wasn't yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. In comes Connors and bowls to Dalthwaite, who defends this one back towards Connors. Gets his foot to the ball, which then hits the stumps, but uh, Chris Cook hadn't left his ground, or if he had, he got back. And it's the end of the over. 2 2 5 for 6, the lead 264. Must be quite uh, quite odd playing, uh, playing on a track named after you. Yeah, yes. yes. Well, has Julian Lennon ever played on Hey Jude somewhere? <laughs> which was supposed to have been written about him, wasn't it? Mm. we're going to see some pace again some raw New Zealand pace yes he's he's hustled and bustled in this game hasn't he and Tickner certainly looked impressive on the on the first morning wasn't particularly flattered by 2 for 57 in the first innings really and uh, what is he now 0 for 21 off 12 but uh, he has asked serious questions of the Glamorgan batters and uh, is now dispatching a man back to the square leg boundary as he bowls to Chris Cook on 63 oh. and Cook has edged it and it's run for four and Dave Fletcher together with a fair proportion of Derbyshire's supporters and probably players have head in the hands between the slip and the wicketkeeper it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have, have carried. carried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the slip is more of a second slip. Uh, 
yeah. and Owen Donald and uh, bisected them neatly did Chris Cook to pick up another four perfectly placed really it's the total to 22946 with a further 48 overs after uh, this remaining tonight and I think the odds of the match concluding tonight as I confidently uh, informed my better half on leaving this morning I'll be over today probably not as Tickner is in and uh, Cook chops it away down towards point single taken 68 to Cook 230 for six the lead 269 and put off all those little jobs that were lined up for you tomorrow <laughs> have to put them off till next week I'm afraid after uh, many years of marriage, my wife knows better than to uh, <laughs> bother lining up jobs. <laughs> uh, she has no I, no desire for shelves that don't stay up. As uh, that's played defensively by Douthwaite on the offside, and there's no run. There's nothing more therapeutic than painting a room. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Reasonable rates. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, no, Fletch Cricket at gmail.com. Uh, available any day apart from Saturdays in the winter and yeah. occasional midweek Tuesdays. You supply the paint. <laughs> I'll bring the brushes. Here's Tickner in to bowl. Driven to cover this time by Douthwaite. Half fielded by Kame. But uh, recovers quickly enough to prevent a single. Two six nine is the Glamorgan lead. So it's a target of four se two seventy. If Derbyshire claimed four wickets for naught now would still be demanding. Mm -hmm. Very. And if Glamorgan can push that over to three hundred, then uh, they will be very firm favourites, I would suggest. But we don't know what this pitch will do as Douthwaite turns the wrists on this one and plays what looked like a reasonably straight delivery down to fine leg but uh, his timing was good and he moves to 26 231 for six yeah somebody's looking forward to uh, getting a duke's ball in his hand the big kiwi still got a smile on his face though which is good to see as lewis reese hands in the ball one of those wry smiles, actually. <laughs> Tickner charging away from us to bowl to Cook, who drives to Lloyd, who fields at mid wicket, and there's no run. Saudi Arabia have beaten Hong Kong. It scores in the se second division, which are probably more relevant to our listeners. Mm, why not? Uh, Yorkshire, 273 for three in their second innings against Gloucestershire at Bristol, leading by 336. So in an even, even stronger position than uh, Glamorgan. A Sussex of 520 for six. Uh, that's in reply to Leicestershire's 300 and 38. Uh, John, Johnny Simpson uh, signed, of course, from... Uh, Middlesex in the winter is 125 not out, uh, 141 not out, I beg your pardon, and uh, Daniel Lamb signed from Lancashire in the winter is 125 not out, so their new signings bearing fruit, and Middlesex are 290 for two, uh, trailing Northamptonshire by 262 at Wantage Road in a game that you would have thought, unless there's a dramatic collapse, uh, may well be heading for a draw. Tickner in conversation with Connors. RMK asks on Twitter, do you think Lloyd enjoys Captain Derbyshire because he doesn't have to bring himself on to bowl? Well, he's fairly selfless as Morgan captain, as a bowler. He often bowled just when the situation was was difficult, so his figures probably wouldn't weren't as good as they would have been had he not been captain at the time, if you see what I mean. Mm. Saved himself for uh, trying to... Uh, be a golden arm and stop a flow of runs now and again. It'll be Sam Connors from the River Taff end and Wayne Madsen's back on the field and at slip but with a helmet on 
as uh, Connors bowls and Dalthwaite pushes it out into the offside, fielded by Harry Kane. There is cricket, of course, going on in, a, in another division. Remarkably, mm. uh, Kent are 380 for seven, trailing Essex by 150 at Chelmsford. Lancashire are 403 for six, leading Hampshire by 36 at Southampton. Nottingham should have just begun their second innings, 12 without loss, leading Worcestershire by 56. And Somerset in a little bit of trouble as this next delivery from Connors is driven by Douthwaite up to uh, Lewis Rees at mid-off, a wide-ish mid-off, and they scamper through for a quick single. Douthwaite moves to 27, 232 for six. Somerset is 67 for two, trailing Surrey by 76. Oh, and there's the game at Birmingham that is just drifting. Runs, runs, runs. Isn't six, nine, eight for three. Declared plays 356 for six, so Durham still 342 behind. Might be asked to bat again. Hmm. Here comes Connors running towards us now. Bowls to Chris Cook, who just pushes it gently out into the offside where Harry came. Does the feeling? Someone pointed out, and apologies for the lack of attribution because I can't remember where it was that Craig Miles uh, has played in sides that knocked up 600 in two successive weeks oh, Glamorgan yes. last week and uh, yeah. Warwickshire this week without having to contribute to the process. <laughs> Uh, he's got one wicket today. In comes Connors again and bowls. That one is guided to a um, backward point region where it's fielded by an Aaron Donald who finds himself out there with the fielding pads on. Cook moves to 69, 233, 4-6. Uh, not sure I can do it while I'm in South Wales, random female, I'm afraid. To make a special journey. She's wondering if I can uh, pop over to Ponticlon to do some decorating. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that far, Ponticlon. Clean. See, I, I never try Welsh <laughs> place names on the radio. That one is defended by Douthwaite up towards mid off. <laughs> yeah, don't, I'm, I apologise. <laughs> 233 for six, it remains. Sorry about that, random, if I can use your first name. Yes, if it's not too forward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, perhaps if it rains for a few hours, Mr Fletcher might uh, fit in a, a, a small box room or something. Might fit in a random female. Tomorrow morning as... Uh, Carter's bells to <laughs> Dalthwaite, pushed out into the offside, fielded by Harry Kame, I think. Uh, 2.33 for six at the end of the over. 27 to Douthwaite, 69 to Cook. The partnership just three shy of three figures. The lead is 272. The weather forecast tomorrow is not too it's, bad. It's getting better, isn't There's it? There's likely to be some rain around breakfast time, which might mean a, a delayed start, but we might, get, uh, we might get a clear day after that. Light rain changing to sunny intervals by lunchtime, according to the uh, med office, which doesn't sound... Too horrible. I still think it's witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you look to your left, and if you can see Caffili Mountain, it's about to rain, and if you can't see Caffili Mountain, then it, it is raining. Is, yeah. Yeah. There are That's probably similar jokes around the country. Everywhere, I think. Yes. Yeah, everywhere. And it's not much of a mountain, anyway. As... Uh, which is, go on and point to it for me. It's, it's just oh, just, in that direction. It's, well, I just, can see it's some, just a large hill, really. I can see some hills there. Yeah. But it is yeah. referred to for some reason as Caffili Mountain. Two thirty-three for six. Lead two seven two. Tickner continues to bowl to Cook, scratching away, making sure he knows what his where his guard is, which is uh, probably scuffed over a bit by now. Cook on 69 not out and uh, Tickner bowls. Cook drives and gets it off a thick edge and may get four as a result of uh, not middling it. He does indeed as the ball flies down to third man. And uh, there is the first century partnership of the match. Well applauded by the alert cla cra cloud? crowd. As, uh, 
Cook flung his bat at that. Looking to uh, play through the covers, but uh, all along the ground uh, to Tickner's frustration to the ropes. Cook 73, 237 for six. Mm. Sorry. Almost coughed. Just the one slip. No one, well, just the one ca crouching in front as well as uh, Cook nudges that off his legs. Down to fine leg for a single. So Darbish is uh, catching Ray is slightly lessened and uh, they look on the defensive at the moment as if they're just uh, hoping that the new ball might do something. But they've got Blair Techno bowling, bowling already, mm. so... Uh, well, he didn't uh, didn't open up in either innings, but uh, it's been Derbyshire's fastest bowler, you would have thought, as uh, that is driven by Douthwaite, fielded by Lloyd at short mid-wicket. No run. I, I assume now that they'll, they will take the new ball because nothing much is happening. Well, I would, but, yeah... Lewis Reese is still polishing the old ball. I can't imagine it's getting much shine on it, though. Slightly surprised that Reese hasn't bowled yet, just to mm. uh, vary things up a little bit more. As Douthwaite drives to point, no run. Likewise, David Lloyd himself, maybe... There might have been time for a couple of overs each from those two, just to give a, a bit of variety and something novel in the attack. But uh, if it's the new ball, I presume they'll go back to uh, uh, Chapel and Connors as uh, Downthwaite drives again. And it's uh, well stopped by Dal at point. And there's no run. Unless, of course, uh, Thompson comes back Thompson with a new, new ball, ball, as he, I was just gonna say, yeah, as he that, did. That's a possibility, isn't it? At the start of the innings last night. But this is this is uh, a long way away from last night's atmosphere of the game, isn't it, at mm, the moment? Absolutely. When the weather was gloomy. Glamorgan's batting was uh, largely gloomy as well. And Derbyshire were very much on top. At that stage, uh, so that's played nicely through the covers by Douthwaite. There will be runs out towards the boundary. There'll be four of them. As uh, the scampering fielder, Morley, um, almost got there, but then fell over the on the tarpaulins. I think, well, I think he, he didn't want to run on the, on the plastic sheeting, <laughs> so he stopped and uh, actually fell over Whoops. as he stopped. 2.42 for six, Douthwaite into the 30s and 31, Cook 74, the lead. Is a relatively formidable 281. Very formidable, I would suggest. We will get the... Uh, it will take a record run chase tweet from David Griffin at the... Uh, between innings, I'm sure. Certainly be close to one, I would have thought. A successful run chase, I think so. Uh, I think I can find that kind of information. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't swear to it, though. It's going to be Sam Connors to continue from the River Taff end. He's on his way in now, bowling to Chris Cook on 74, and he defends it up to Lewis Reese. At mid off, and there is no run. <coughs> sure, I'm sure it's a goodness I can find that kind of information. It's hardly. Uh... Joe Root's got his uh, half century for uh, Yorkshire over the bridge in Bristol. As we look forward to the Roots derby in a few weeks' time. Of course. In comes Connors and balls to Cook, who uh, plays it out to Lloyd on the leg side, and there's no run. Yorkshire's lead has passed 350 with still seven wickets in hand, so you think Derbyshire are in trouble? 
Gloucestershire even more so. Mm. We will see what the weather holds tomorrow. So it just keeps, it keeps changing. Mm. Here comes Connors again and bowls, and that one is uh, defended by Cook towards mid on this time. But there is no run. Getting towards the time of the afternoon when we start thinking what time's tea. Oh, I think that almost as soon as I've had my dinner. 13 overs to go. Depends how many of them Thompson bowls when he isn't bowling at the moment. Could be 50 minutes. He is warming up there. Mm. Tea about 5 to 4 I guess. Yeah. Here's Connors in and bowls to Cook, who pushes it out into the offside, where it's fielded by Anuj Dahl. Unless, of course, Glamorgan are either bowled out oh. or are nine wickets down yeah. at that stage. Yeah. But um, we could uh, possibly work the uh, the rotor to uh, make sure that uh, we have a, a dash for the cakes before the tea interval, since the, uh, the media box is fairly populated. Still not as many people as there were on Friday. Connors bowls that will turn into the leg side by Cook, fielded by Lloyd. It's admirable patience from these uh, Morgan batters that we probably ought to be giving more credit among uh, chat of musical support acts, well, I think painting that, jobs, etc. Dowthwaite has been really good. Hmm. Bowled nicely. Now he's batting very sensibly. He's put on a sentry stand at an important time when the lead, when they came together, was 180 or so. Uh, 175, in fact. So, yeah, no, he's done exceptionally well. Connors bowls to Cook, who plays it to Lloyd on the onside. And there's no run. It was the final ball of the over. 242 for six. Lead 281. And uh, Sophia Gardens looks a picture. Yes, it's uh, lovely with the sun out, isn't it? And uh, hopefully a full day's play if the light uh, continues to be okay into the evening. And the clouds have been high for, for most of the day. It was no surprise at all when we had light problems last night that uh, soared five overs off the tail end of the day. Two, four, two for six. Death weight. 31 not out. Cook is 74 not out. Lewis Rees keeps standing around next to the bowlers, but he's not going to uh, not going to be asked to dance yet. As Blair Tickner will continue his spell with a short mid-wicket and a slip. And uh, that is down leg side, and there were hands in the air at the moment. They've gone through for a single. What was it? A leg by. There we are. Lloyd need not fret about a missed chance by a diving guest. He did well to get to it, really. As Dowthwaite tried to work it away. Square of the wicket. Two, four, three for six. Lead 282, over 8, a healthy plus 2. Don't need to worry about that. Cook yet again takes guard. Faces up to Tickner. Into bowl, and uh, that's played straight, and Cook quickly calls him through for the single down throw. It's going to have to hurry at the other end. Uh, he does as the throw comes in from Reese. Wasn't quite on target anyway. Throwing. Uh, off the wrong hand, well, through with the correct hand for him, which is the, the left hand, but uh, it wasn't, uh, he had to sort of check and make the throw. 244 for six. Dave Fletcher, Dave Pritchard, myself, Nick Webb, here on BBC Sport Online. Through to the conclusion of this match, whensoever it may be. Tickner balls to Douthwaite, who defends back to him. No run. 365 three, Derbyshire's. Highest successful run chase against anybody. That was not in the Bob Willis Trophy in 2020. Uh, the false dawn uh, in 
Derbyshire's recent history when they won at Trent Bridge and everybody thought, oh, hello. <laughs> There's uh, Tickner in balls and that's smashed into the leg side by Dalthwait for no runs. Huge swing of the bat to mid wicket it went. Not as hard as the uh, action suggested. No, no near. The, the two players who did most in that run chase are, are now no longer with the club, Billy Godelman and uh, Finn Hudson Prentice. I think Mikey Cohen was in the middle as well. He signed for Kent in the winter, but has now suffered a broken back, sadly. Tickner in to Dalthwaite and uh, defends that back to the bowler. Yes, that truncated 2020 season, Bob Willis Trophy was pretty awful for Glamorgan. I think we had five first-class cricket uh, fixtures and Glamorgan, I think, lost a couple and were on the back foot for most of the remaining ones. I think Cook might have actually saved them a couple of times in that season off the top of my head. Dive. But we were so grateful to be playing cricket Would, yeah. or indeed out of the house anywhere. Yeah, then. absolutely. Tickner bowls and well, Deathway was looking to play on the offside and has got a thick inside edge down to fine leg. So Derbyshire frustrated. Deathwaite still there on 32 I don't think he had much idea where that was. It was way outside off stump, and he got a big inside edge that went back past leg stump. 2.45 for six, Douthwaite 32, Cook 75, the lead 2.84. It's, it's pleasant in the sun, but I don't think it's quite it's taking your cagoule weather off yet. No, no. Are you, are you due for a little break, Dave? I can have one if you want. No, it's not. Not as I want to get rid of you, but... Uh, <laughs> More than happy. I'll uh, go. Um, it's Alex Thompson from the uh, River oh, Taff end. Oh, I can stay on if you want. <laughs> so, Thompson will continue his endeavours, having bowled 33 overs, four for 88, and... Uh, now Pritchard will take his place just in time to describe the continuing labours of the former Cardiff Met student. Yeah, speaking of Cardiff Met, our friend from uh, BBC Radio Wales, Phil Steele, the Great Scum 5 reporter, mentioned that in his time at Cardiff Met in the early 80s, we had future test cricketers Greg Thomas and Hugh Morris. Also in the 70s, they were Alan Lewis-Jones, and Rob Dudley Jones, who both played for Glamorgan. So some calibre from Cardiff Met. The way back. Thanks for getting in touch, Steely. Good to hear from you. Alex Thompson continues around the wicket to Dan Douthwaite, who slashes at that one towards point for no run. I actually played a great Greg Thomas in those days. That must be one of the biggest gaps in ability to uh, be on the same cricket field. Here is Thompson to Douthwaite. Douthwaite sweeps and he's caught. Caught by Anuj Dahl at short mid-wicket. Falls into the trap. And that very useful century stand for Glamorgan between Dan Douthwaite and Chris Cook is finally broken. Glamorgan now 245 for seven as they lead by 284. Well, that's uh, Thompson... Successful, that is uh, his second Michel of the match. Five for 88 now. And uh, that was a badly needed wicket from the Derbyshire Dan point of view. But a good knock from Douthwaite. Facing 73 deliveries. And the stand of 109 with Chris Cook, the uh, the biggest of the match so far. Yeah, didn't see Douthwaite in full flow during that innings, but an extremely valuable century stand for Glamorgan when Colin Ingram was run out before lunch. You wondered if they were in danger of undoing their earlier good work, but Dan Douthwaite and Chris Cook have more than 
steadied the ship. They've put Glamorgan into a very strong position. And although this pitch does seem to be playing more true than it did on the first two days, a lead of 284 does mean Glamorgan are very much in the driving seat as things stand. So James Harris will join Chris Cook at the crease now. Cook on 75 in the 80th over. Will Cook look to get on with things? Probably happy enough to have Harris supporting at the other end, but should Harris go and Cook still be there, I think he'd uh, probably look to farm the bowling and swing the bat uh, with uh, McElroy and Hamza, particularly if McElroy is struggling with injury. Yeah, Harris, uh, an accomplished batter as lower order batters go, but as you say, Nick, Cook may well look to up the ante now. He is someone who we have seen play his strokes in the past. Could be quite a destructive white ball cricketer as well. But it will be Harris to face the third ball of Thompson's over. Thompson now with a quite remarkable 12 wickets in the match. The off spinner's got through a lot of work from the river end and he's had huge success as well. He'll come around the wicket to the right-handed Harris, who leaves the first ball outside the off stump. Some gasps from the <laughs> fielders around the bat. But Harris himself seems unperturbed by that one, not turning as sharply as we saw in the first innings. As Thompson comes around the wicket again, and Harris defends onto the offside for no run. Madsen applauded, applauds at first slip. Yeah, Harris out for just four in the uh, first innings in that uh, period in which Glamorgan fell away rather badly. Here comes Thompson clasping the ball at the top of his run-up. Harris drives this time, but to Lewis Reese at mid-off for no run. Funny how Dave Fletcher's exit from the commentary brought uh, Derbyshire a wicket. <laughs> yeah. Just two balls later, and uh, Thompson's into Harris again, who squeezes that past the vacant point region for a single to end the 80th over. Glamorgan now 246 for seven. They lead Derbyshire by 285. 11 overs till T. 43 overs remaining potentially in the day's play. And a uh, little consultation between Harris and Cook. So Chapel back for Tickner at the Cathedral Road end. Tickner economical, but yet to take a wicket in this innings. Alex Thompson has taken five of the six to fall to bowlers. Sam Connors with the other plus a, a run out, uh, partly executed by Connors as well. So just McElroy and uh, Hamza to come. McElroy, I think, came in at 10 in the first innings, didn't he? But he may be 11 if he's struggling with a, a shoulder injury. We shall see. 2.46 for seven. Chapel then. Uh, have we had the new ball waved? What's going on? Yes, we have. The new ball is now being waved to the scorers by Rob Bailey. It is the 81st over and uh, Derbyshire take it straight away. As Chapel is in to bowl to Harris, plays no shot through outside off stump. Two slips now, second slip restored, plus uh, man on the drive on the leg side. Strangely in, in Lords, Glamorgan gave us an extra couple of overs on, on both occasions before taking the new ball against uh, Middlesex. It does to seem to be on trend with some captains in this 
format we've seen at test level as well persevering with the old ball especially when there's a bit of short bowling going it's Chapel bowls and uh, Harris defends to Tickner at mid on and uh, there's no run I think they thought there was a little bit of reverse swing going on at the time with the, the very old Kookaburra but it uh, wasn't enough on either occasion to at least Morgan bowled Middlesex out but they almost needed a third new ball to do so yeah Harris's priority obviously will be his batting here but you think as someone will be taking the new ball for Glamorgan he'll be interested to see how it behaves now Chapel bowls Harris Ford defending on the leg side no run Blair Tickner has been the only seam bowler on display in this match to extract extravagant movement off the sea more in the air using this ball Hamza and Harris bowled tidily for Glamorgan sharing the new ball there's more their angles of bowling and disciplined lining length which yielded their success so uh, Chapel in to bowl outside off stump Harris playing no shot so uh, Delthwaite and Cook together were, were together for 31.2 overs for their stand of 109. So reasonable run rate. And uh, they looked as though they were relatively untroubled when Delthwaite slapped that one to mid-wicket. Chapel into Ball turned off his legs by Harris for a single down to fine leg. Harris has two, two forty seven for seven. Lead is two eight six. And well, credit to these two teams because it really has been a, uh, a fascinating contest uh, throughout, hasn't it? It has, and uh, refreshing antidote to some of the bat dominated draws in the making around the grounds elsewhere in the county championship there's Chapel Bowles and uh, that's defended by Cook and there's uh, no run so I'm trying to mend a hole in the floor that's uh, sending a rather nasty draft at my left shin not the we can do much about it because it's got various wires that uh, probably essential for something or other in terms of uh, the the video stream where you can uh, find our commentary throughout uh, all Glamorgan home games throughout the season on the county website uh, apart from anything that is on uh, satellite television but I haven't uh, heard about any of such fixtures as yet in the T20 Thompson 5 for 89 then off 34 overs and we'll be continuing with the new ball absolutely yeah not the only spinner opening the bowling I noticed Dan Lawrence was uh, sharing the new ball for Surrey earlier and picked up two wickets against Somerset Ooh. so it might be that Kookaburra is favoured by a few spinners up and down the country on this second weekend of the county championship season yeah. Derbyshire just tweaking their field for James Harris as he prepares to face Alex Thompson Captain David Lloyd at leg slip bringing in a, a couple of fielders from the deep the field largely as Thompson has had it for the majority of his spell a slip, a leg slip and a short leg as he comes around the wicket to the right handed Harris who's back and working that down towards fine leg he sets off for at least one and he'll return for a comfortable second run as well, taking his tally on to four. Glamorgan 249 for seven, lead of 288. And just looking at the forecast, Nick, as we've touched on, there is some rain forecast tomorrow afternoon. Oh, it's crept into the afternoon now, is it? Mm, it was breakfast time last time I looked. As Thompson comes around the wicket to Harris, is on the back foot driving, no run. Yeah, some at breakfast time, some mid-afternoon. And I wonder if Morgan will pay much attention to that. 
you'd imagine they'll bat a fair way past T, but once they're past the lead of 300, as Thompson falls again to Harris, who plays a shot onto the leg side for no run. Yeah, I suspect they'll be bowled out at some point. As Cook will probably go for it if uh, Harris is out. Here is Harris, placing Thompson around the wicket, and prodding it back towards the bowler, who leaves it for Anaj Dahl to do the fielding. No run. Yeah, so by no means a, a race against time. Do you think anything over 300 would take some chasing on this surface on a final day as Thompson bowls to Harris, who looks to work it down the leg side, misses, and Brooke Guest collects. Thompson at the top of his mark. 12 wickets to his name in this match already, the Derbyshire spinner. He's in around the wicket. Again, down the leg side, this time Harris shoulders arms, and that's the end of the 82nd over. Glamorgan, 249 for seven, lead of 288. Close fielders David Lloyd and Aaron Donald probably rather relieved to see their old mate James Harris shoulder arms on that occasion because it wasn't a, a great ball down leg side and going further down leg and uh, might have done a bit of damage as he chosen to play a, a pull or a sweep shot there, James Harris, but uh, discretion better part of valour so at the end of the over he remains on four lead 288 and uh, Chris Cook on 75 to face up to Zach Chapel with the new ball in the latter part of the second session Day three, but more likely to see a positive result than most, I think, as uh, that's hit Cook on the pads on the side as he looks to turn on the leg side. No run. Chapel, just uh, his figures today, just suffering because of uh, a couple of lapses of concentration. He was uh, twice put away the third man for successive boundaries, first by Ingram and uh, then by Cook. The rest of his work has been respectable, even if he hasn't been in the wickets. As Chapel is in to Cook, who is forward, defending out to Dahl at cover. It was he who took the catch at mid-wicket to get rid of Dan Douthwaite for 32. The other man out today, Mason Crane, the night watchman, Pinned leg before, almost walked by Alex Thompson for 19, 114 for 5. Colin Ingram run out, setting off for a single from the non-strikers, being sent back. Connor's throw was good enough to see him stranded. Chapel balls and uh, worked well on the offside by Cook for a single, 76 to Cook, 250 is the reason for the applause and really there haven't been huge extravagant shots too often today so the crowd has been uh, applauding landmarks rather than most other things absolutely they, re they remind me of the uh, the crowd you get at the crucible for the snooker applauding it when the player requires snookers <laughs> and the commentator are all quick to point out this is a educated crowd know their snooker this crowd knows it's cricket Chapel bowls Harris hurried into a defensive prod on the offside. Achieves it well enough. So uh, Glamorgan, having last season won one and drawn six of their home championship games, and we saw one game where they were pressing for victory, at least one where they were uh, holding out to avoid defeat, and some rather puddingy tedious ones in the middle 250 for 7 as Harris plays defensively on the onside and there is no run beat Worcestershire at home lost to Worcestershire away everyone else drawn last season so Morgan will be uh, pleased to see a pitch that offers a little bit more certainly did on the first two days in the past it's been 
seam that's got uh, some assistance in the first half of the match. This time it was spin. But uh, Chapel bowls and Harris was beaten by that one, pushing rather uncertainly at it through it went to uh, Brooke Guest. But just the, uh, the two wickets for Alex Thompson today. Uh, plus the run out and Glamorgan moved on from 74 for four overnight to 250 for seven, which feels like a reasonably significant uh, swing in terms of uh, the balance of power, which was pretty much 50-50 overnight, I think. Is uh, now, well, at least 75-25 in Glamorgan's favour, if not more. Yes, it has been finally balanced throughout and now this feels like the first yeah, real significant shift in either direction Alex Thompson will continue from the River Tav end around the wicket to Cook who's on to the back Oof. foot pulling and pulling well that goes for four takes his tally on to 80 Glamorgan 254 for seven yeah if everyone if anyone is going to wrestle momentum back in Derbyshire's favour you'd think it would be Alex Thompson but he's been worked into the ground at that end and some signs of tiredness in uh, some of his more recent overs dragging the odd delivery down short Welcome to the new season can you bowl 60 overs please Alex <laughs> Here is Thompson once more to Cook who's forward this time there's an appeal from Thompson looking for a 13th wicket of the match and nothing doing in fact the players will scamper through for two runs waiting to see if they're yeah, given as it's a little tap of the knee I think very subtle sign for leg buys Oof. now if he's not got his bat on that that looked like a very good shout yeah, for LBW surprised that wasn't given given the umpire signalled leg buys hmm interesting Thompson can feel aggrieved that he doesn't have a 13th victim of the match. Cook lives to fight another day as Thompson comes around the wicket and Cook prods defensively forward. Curious decision. Nevertheless, Thompson continues his mammoth spell and bowls down the leg side. Cook leaves it alone and Brooke Guest fumbles and kicks the ground in frustration. I wonder when we'll uh, see DRS in county cricket. Those long days will be even longer then, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> Thompson, after one aborted run, starts again around the wicket to Cook who comes down the pitch driving and will get through for a single so this over worth seven runs for Glamorgan as they build the lead it's now 296 Harris faces Thompson coming around the wicket Shovels it down the leg side, no run, and at the end of the 84th over, the fourth since the new ball was taken, Glamorgan a 257 for seven, a lead of 296. I was reading today that uh, Hampshire apparently trialling a new uh, system of AI cameras, which uh, supposedly will be able to follow the ball, even though they're not staffed cameras, manned, womaned, whatever. So uh, good luck with developing that, that'll be interesting. But uh, of course we do have uh, video streams for all county games these days, which wasn't the case pre-Covid. And it has been a welcome development out of necessity really. Chapel to Cook away from us in the sunshine and Cook drives to Reese at mid-off no run yeah the proliferation of streams is an interesting development with county championship cricket in recent years isn't it 
a lot of people will have consumed the sport either by listening to commentary or reading scorecards because a lot of people, especially on weekdays, might not have had the luxury of being able to watch the, the games live in person. Now you can put faces to names and see the best of the action as well as listen to it. Chaplin to bowl and Cook drives the ball cannons away off the stumps but there is no run as it cannons to Reese at mid off I'm old enough to remember the days when if you went on a a foreign holiday and uh, you uh, wanted to uh, know the score it was either a question of a, a two day old newspaper somewhere in the Mediterranean or or ringing up my mum who was bless her not a, a huge <laughs> cricket devotee and, and <laughs> trying to get some sense out of her as that is off a thick edge to second slip. It's shied then at the stumps and backed up by an Iron Donald. And uh, there's no run. And now we're getting correspondence from Bogota. Yes, indeed. On mm. the morning of a county championship match. And you can follow this uh, feed around the globe and uh, be up to date within uh, within a few seconds. Fabulous development, really, as uh, Chapel is in to bowl to Cook, who slashes that one firmly through the offside and will pick up four runs. Well, that wasn't that wide of Harry came on the point boundary, but uh, Cook really tucked into that one, smashed it away. And uh, Cook has 85 now, just a bit of width from Chapel that uh, he really can't afford to offer in a game that's potentially this tight, but that boundary takes the lead up to 300 for Glamorgan. Yeah, Chapel has bowled tightly since taking this new ball, and Cook has been patient, waited for just that little bit of width, as you say, Nick, and took full advantage. In comes Chapel again balls and that's whipped away on the leg side this time there'll be at least a single for Cook just the single as it's picked up on the uh, the boundary by Connors looks rather forlorn as he wanders back towards uh, his position at square leg still two slips and a short mid wicket Three saving the single, square leg, fine leg and point are on or towards the boundary. Chapel to Harris who drives to mid on, fielded by Tickner. No run, end of the over, 2-6-2 for seven and the lead is 3-0-1. We often say spinners when they're batting don't mind seeing a bit of turn from the opposition when they're in a, a decent position in the match as it might bode well for their future endeavours with the ball. I wonder if James Harris is thinking the same as he sizes up Zach Chappell's first spell with his new ball. Not much on offer yet again neither from the Kookaburra nor this pitch which appears to be behaving more consistently today. From the river end it'll be Thompson to continue. Chris Cook defending the first ball. Well, having got this far, I'm sure Cook, as well as his team's objectives, would have uh, this entry in his sights. Two of them last season. Thompson comes around the wicket to Cook, who's down the pitch to defend. Maybe... Uh, a bit more batting responsibility as well. Promoted from seven to six. I mean, he's good enough to be top five, but uh, with keeping as well, you don't want to overburden him. Brooke Guest as well to bat as high as he does. Thompson twirls in around the wicket once more and Cook again uses his feet to get to the pitch of the ball and prod defensively for no run. Yeah, plenty of time after tea for... Cook to reach his sentry and for Glamorgan to press home their advantage as they wish as Thompson continues around the wicket and Cook whips it firmly and looks to hit an Aaron Donald at short leg took all that chance would have been 
harsh, <laughs> came at him at the speed of a rocket, and he did well simply to stop that ball from going somewhere for runs. As we see the replay, and his hit with some force, and hit Donald on the thigh before he had a chance to move. Sometimes they stick. Maybe they go in the pocket or a loose <laughs> jumper, but not on that occasion. Thompson continues, and Cook again uses his feet, but gets no run for that shot. Yeah, Cook's looking a little bit twitchy on occasion now. Can't imagine it'll be the pressure of approaching 100, but uh, Thompson certainly asking questions still. And he's in once more to Cook. Who defends? So the end of the 86th over, Glamorgan are 262 for seven, a lead of 301 runs over Derbyshire as we approach T on day three. Made no then from Alex Thompson, the just the third he's bowled in this second innings, five for 96 to add to his first innings of seven for 65. But uh, the pitch not offering as much assistance. Maybe on day three, it is flattening out with the heavy roller and the sunshine. And, well, it's going to be a very demanding target for Derbyshire in the fourth innings, but uh, the thoughts that the pitch may deteriorate and spin even further might be, uh, might be inaccurate. Zach Chappell with the relatively new cherry is in to Harris who just knocks that one gently on the onside no run to short mid wicket well, Derbyshire have had um, just the one wicket in this session so far and Glamorgan have added 92 runs for the loss of Dan Douthwaite who put on 109 with Chris Cook Southwaite just getting 32 of them. He had less of the strike. Faced 73 balls. Chapel, rangy in balls. Harris chops down to backward point. And uh, there is no run. Just get the feeling the game is, is drifting a, a little bit at, uh, at the moment. There's no particular impetus from the batters and bowlers, even though They've got a new ball, they're labouring away. Yeah, you're right, Nick. There's not much edge to proceedings at the moment, not much intensity this moment in time. Chapel is toiling away, but not getting much return from the ball or this pitch. Chapel bowls to Harris, a shorter delivery that Harris ducks underneath through to Gast. Maybe when this wicket next wicket falls then Derbyshire will sense uh, something and, and be able to knock over the last couple relatively quickly and, and get on with their task of trying to win this game in the fourth innings Glamorgan quite happy to uh, potter along and put uh, a little bit more tiredness in Derbyshire legs before they get to uh, batter a second time Chapel in to bowl to Harris who defends that decent ball up in the block hole plays to the be shaded Donald at short mid wicket yeah Harris looks fairly content to play through until T without taking any undue risks especially with Cook so well set at the other end As uh, Chapel is away from us, bowls and uh, driven on the onside. Again, Donald does the fielding. Again, there is no run. Had a quick burst of Mr. Fletcher up until the uh, the T interval. I'll have to be back to deliver a radio bulletin at at four o'clock and uh, I'll knock out a few written thoughts for the T interval. In the meantime, as Chapel turns to finish his over, in to Harris, who flicks it off his legs down towards fine leg, will pick up a comfortable single. Harris moves to five. Glamorgan to 263 for seven, leading 
Derbyshire by 302 runs with Chris Cook is on 86 not out here on BBC Sport Online. Dave Fletcher will rejoin Dave Pritchard. Derbyshire's fielders ambling their way to their positions for this latest over from Alex Thompson. Feels like both sets of players rather going through the motions before T. And Aaron Donald twills his cap as he waits for his helmet at short leg. David Lloyd trudges over to his regular fielding spot of this innings and the last at leg slip. And Wayne Madsen at conventional slip. Thompson to There's continue. a lot of trudging, isn't there? There is a lot of trudging today as Thompson comes in. And Harris works that through the leg side for a single. Um, I am hoping that the uh, the pitch is flattened out completely. It's certainly not doing as much, but the fact that they're facing 300 plus is is going to be an, an issue for Derbyshire. Very unusual for the third innings to be uh, bigger than the previous two. Thompson bowls on the leg side to Cook, who plays it down just backward of square for a single. Yeah, it does seem becalmed out there, doesn't it? Even with the new ball, it hasn't done anything especially different, has it? No. And that'll be uh, less than encouraging for James Harris as a, as a bowler. He obviously doesn't mind too much. Now he's got the bat in his hand as he faces Thompson coming round the wicket and Harris drives nicely to mid-on but for no run. Yeah, given Glamorgan's position here, you get the impression Harris would probably rather if it was moving towards all directions to give him some encouragement when he gets that ball in his hand later. For now, he's facing Thompson and onto the back foot and defending. Gasps from the fielders. Not a bad way for uh, Alex Thompson to begin the, uh, begin the season. A couple of fifers. One in each innings. Yeah, excellent display from him. And he goes hunting for a sixth of this innings. What would be a 13th wicket of the match? When I was at Hove when Hardisville's young took 15 in a match. That was, uh, that was a special. Quick bowler on that occasion, though. Thompson rolls in again and Harris is forward defending for no run. It's the end of the 88th over. Glamorgan 265 for 7. A lead of 304. There is a, a player on the uh, Glamorgan books who played in that game at Hove. It was Harry Podmore played for Derbyshire. Returning to bowl at the Cathedral Road end. We're going to see Anna's Anna's Dahl. Dahl from the Cathedral Road end. Good quiz question there, Dave. The Glamorgan yeah. player who was involved. Yeah. Did you get it? Well, I told you so. Um. <laughs> I'm going to see Anna's Dahl bowl. From the uh, Cathedral Road end. They're calling for you, Nick. They're calling for you. Nick will phone whoever was calling us. As Alice Dahl just uh, gets himself ready. What, well, we've got three overs until, uh, until the tea interval. Commentated with a number of different songs in my ears over the years. I'm not sure I will survive by glory again. There has ever been one of them. As Anuj Dahl continues. He's in a bowls to Chris Cook, and that's a driven out into the offside, just beyond the despairing dive of Sam Connors and the go through for a single. 266 for seven. You were talking about witchcraft with weather forecasts earlier. Our BBC Sport 
colleague Gareth Griffiths popped in for a chat earlier mm -hmm. and he said, you watch, the next bit of cue you'll get will be glory again and I will survive. He did. Amazingly, that was a good couple of hours ago. Yes, he did, didn't he? So he, he, he must have wow. access to those running orders. I, think, I, think, I was going to say, I think what's happened there is he's, he's had a look. Wow. Anno Stahl on his way into bowl to uh, James Harris, who guides this down to point. It's fielded by David Lloyd, and there's no run. The lead, 305, which feels enough. Maybe an innovation for the streams. Gloria gain a bed track for the commentary. Some people would undoubtedly enjoy it. <laughs> Dahl is on his way in. Over the wicket bowls to Harris, who pushes it up to Lewis Reese at mid-off. And there is no run. Beautiful day here at Spire Gardens. Sun is shining. I spoke to Edward about 10 minutes ago, Edward Bevan. They said he'd been across the far side of the ground, where in the shelter it's really nice. Really warm. So very pleasant as a... A few spectators and enjoying a cold drink as Dahl bowls to Harris, who drives out towards the cover boundary for four. Really nice shot from Harris. Just sort of lent into it as much as anything. Timing perfect. And that must tell you something. The number nine... Number nine batter timing the ball as well as that. Not, not with any fear of the ball's going to do something off this pitch do something through the air it is <laughs> this is no compensation but he's, uh, he's a top man is is Nick Webb I've always said it and uh, he has uh, he has what he's done here is uh, he's brought the cakes well done thank you very much that looks horrible by the way <laughs> here comes on his tile again Bowls Ooh, inside half of the uh, Harris bat on that occasion. Ball goes towards uh, mid on, but from mid off across comes Lewis Reese to do the fielding. I hadn't even looked at the football today, but that is an astonishing scoreline at the top there. As they enter injury time at Anfield, they're losing Liverpool to Crystal Palace, for goodness sake. Why don't you just give Manchester City the title? Nobody wants that. Bit of Barry White now. As Anish Dahl comes in and bowls to Harris. I love Barry White. I might even pull out the Barry White impersonation before the end of this song. <laughs> so that's the end of the Anish Dahl over. Uh, if, you want, if you don't want the Anish Dahl uh, impersonation, send money. 270 for 7. 10 to Harris. 88 to Cook. And Glamorgan lead by 309. Oh, baby. Well, it's all going off in the commentary box. <laughs> Unlike out on the pitch there, as the players yeah, look to, to be waiting for tea. But, yeah, altogether livelier in here. Sure, Arsenal fans will have something to say about that, Dave. Well, I, hope, I, hope, they, I hope they win it. I hope they win it, but I fear the worst. Yeah, Manchester City just... Click into gear at this time of year, mm, don't they? They seem to. Here's Thompson. A short ball, which Cook gets hold of, but hits across the ground to the fielder at the backward square. Single to Cook. Takes him on to 89. And Glamorgan, 271 for seven. I know the listeners can't hear and the viewers can't hear what we can hear, but I'm having all on not to join in. Thompson is in. And Harris drives off the back foot for what will be at least one and just one. He moves on to 11. Glamorgan's lead now 311 runs over Derbyshire. Daff is doing a brilliant job here, by the way, listeners. I have no idea how he's doing it. I haven't heard a word he said for the last two minutes. You can't not listen to Barry White. I would just like to pump this out onto the pitch so yeah. the players could hear it. Yeah. Here's Thompson. Cook forward, using his feet to dab it over to the offside for one. I think he's my guilty pleasure. Nothing guilty about that. Oh, no. I have a certain image to uphold of 
heavy rock and real ale, but I'm not sure where Barry White fits into all that. But he's just magnificent. Here's Thompson uh, around the wicket to Harris, who works it onto the onside for another single. Glamorgan just ticking things over. I was going to say over to the tune of a sax solo, but they can't hear that. They can't hear that. We're the privileged two. <laughs> oh, marvellous. Thompson to Cook on the back foot, driving nicely through the covers. There'll only be one run, though, as Zach Chappell does the fielding in the deep. So we get one more tune in before tea. As we head to the top of the hour, Pop Pickers. <laughs> I've done a couple of music programmes on, on Radio Derby and thoroughly enjoyed them. I could develop not a taste for that now after, after this experience. I'm not sure anybody else enjoyed them. But. Here's Thompson over the wicket this time to Harris, who comes down the pitch and drives to mid on for a single. That takes Glamorgan on to 276 for seven at the end of the 90th over, a lead of 315. Here is Anders Dahl to bowl the final over before T. I'll be, I'll be able to commentate during this because I've no, oh, I have heard this before. I'm Emily Sunday. So do you favour a heavier sound usually, Dave? Oh yeah, much heavier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How heavy are we talking? Well, I'm, I'm very much stuck in the seventies, really. It's the, the the Deep Purples and Led Zeppelin and. I heard a bit of Deep Purple this morning. No? Six music. Uh, celebrating the uh, uh, the Hammond organ and uh, uh, played a bit of burn yeah. that was good here's Dahl in and bowls and that one is turned into the leg side by uh, Harris it's fielded by an Aaron Donald who falls onto his back while he fields it yes uh, see, this is uh, getting to the minutiae of Deep Purple but burn was done after Ian Gillen left the first time, so they were mark three. Ian Gillen was my thing. As Dal bowls, and that one is driven very nicely indeed, out for four by Harris to the cover boundary. Once it had gone past Harry Kane, you knew he was not going to get anywhere near it. Another thing that's happened over the course of these days is the outfield has speeded up a lot, hasn't it? As well, because the, the day one, it was it was pretty sluggish given the amount of... Uh, rain and then dew and that kind of thing. We had that half hour delay at the start of the match, but the outfield now looks to be getting back to its normal pace because that never looked like being anything other than a four to eighty percent. Full value now, aren't you? Yeah. Harris on seventeen, Cook on ninety-one. We'll have to wait until after tea for his century. Should he get there? As Dahl is in again, and balls to Harris, who defends this one into the offside. And uh, there is no run. So a uh, disaster for Liverpool's uh, title hopes with that defeat at home to Crystal Palace. What on earth is going on there? So it's all we're all Arsenal now, aren't we? <laughs> Here is Dahl. Anybody but City. Dahl bowls. And that's pushed out into the offside. One ball to go until T. It was David Lloyd who did the fielding on that occasion. The downside of music in your ears is having Nick Webb dancing next to you. Well, it's an approximation of dancing. <laughs> A certain gyration going yes. on. So the Oscillation, final... maybe. <laughs> final ball before T, then. It won't come before we end of Emily Sunday. Oh, it does. And uh, that one is pushed out into the offside by Harris. And... Oh, there's another ball left. Miscounted. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm sure Harris looked like he was about to walk off there, didn't he? I don't know what's going on. Anyway, 319 the lead. And after the uh, end of... I'm not taking it away now. So this next one is driven by 
Harris, they, well, there is a run available there, there but they decide against <laughs> it because that means that Cook will be on strike when they come back after tea, at which Glamorgan are 280 for seven. Harris has 17, Cook has 91. And the lead is a more, more than adequate 319. 32 overs to go when we come back in 20 minutes time. In the meantime, look out for the big radio news bulletin update from Nick Webb. Thank you, Dave. Summary shortly, commentary in 20. I'm... S Glamorgan going very nicely at the tee interval there. 280 for seven in their second innings. That's a lead of 319, and that should be enough to put them in a position to challenge to win this game. Main man this afternoon has been Chris Cook, 91 not out. Support from Dan Douthwaite with 32. James Harris is 17 not out. Earlier, Colin Ingram made 51. Alex Thompson has a second five-wicket haul, but Glamorgan on top at 280 for seven.
Here are tea time scores from the other games taking place in the Vitality County Championship elsewhere. Starting again at Utility Bowl, the game between Hampshire and Lancashire. Lancashire have moved into a league now. They're 455 for six, leaving Hampshire by 88 runs. Tea time at Edgbaston sees Durham 413 for six. Still trailing Warwickshire by 285 runs. They're on the cusp of tea at Northampton with Middlesex 367 for two. Still trailing Northampton by 185 runs. At Chelmsford, they're in the final over before tea as well. With Essex in their second innings, 15 without loss leading Kent by 132 runs. It's the final over before tea as well at Bristol with Yorkshire 365 for four. They're leading Gloucestershire by 428 runs. Tea time at Leicester sees Sussex on 652 for eight. So Sussex are leading Leicestershire by 314 runs. At Trent Bridge in their second innings, Nottinghamshire a 60 without loss. They're leading Worcestershire by 355 runs. And at T at the Oval, Somerset in their second innings a 110 for three. Still trailing Surrey by 33 runs. A reminder that the official Glamorgan website, www.glamorgancricket.com, contains details of how to purchase tickets for all forthcoming games here this summer at Sapphire Gardens, including the international contests on the 28th of May when Pakistan will be meeting England, as well as on the 13th of September when Australia will be playing England. Also on the official Glamorgan website are details of the various match day hospitality packages available for all home games here at Sapphire Gardens. That includes those in the T20 glass as well as in the 100. If you're seeking a score sheet for this match, they're available completely free of charge from reception. Reception is situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. And that's where you can also purchase a copy of the 2024 Glamorgan Yearbook. Also, you can purchase a copy of Chris Cook's testimonial brochure. It's available for a minimum donation of £5. The Glamorgan Club shop, run by Missouri Sports, is open until the close of play this evening. It's situated opposite Gate 2. Um, as always, it's selling a wide range of cricket equipment and other items including replica Glamorgan kit, as well as a range of recently published cricket books. And finally, a reminder, as far as refreshments are concerned, a full range of food and drink can be purchased in the Pyramid Lounge, which is situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. This is a new initiative for 2024, and the Lewis Lounge on the top floor of the National Cricket Centre is now only a viewing, men, a, a viewing area for members. Snacks can also be purchased from the vending machines at the rear of the indoor school.
Good evening and uh, welcome to uh, BBC Sport Online from Sophia Gardens in Cardiff for session three on day three. And Glamorgan are 280 for seven against Derbyshire, 319 runs in the lead. And this looks, Mr Fletcher, like a, a powerful position for the home side. Oh, no question. No question. Good evening, everybody. Yes, uh, well, I'm tempted, tempted to say Glamorgan can't lose from this position. Hmm. Uh, they certainly shouldn't lose Some from this. Unlikely. Yeah, they certainly shouldn't lose from this position. Put it that way. But the uh, the pitch, which was brilliant on days one and two, <laughs> has suddenly reverted to type. It, it's absolutely bizarre. We did wonder, even in the first half hour this morning, whether it was the the, the effects of the heavy roller or not. And it's almost like they're, they're heavy rollering it every five minutes because it has done very little. The balls have done very little. Uh, Alex Thompson has bowled pretty well. 39 overs, three maidens, five for 104 to go with his seven for in the first innings. And he begins the evening session with a delivery to Chris Cook that's pushed into the offside and he does the fielding himself. The designated clapper there is Sam <laughs> Connors. <laughs> and he's doing a bit of shouting as well, which is good to see. Multi-skills, clapper yeah. and shouting. Clapping and shouting at the same time. He can't walk, though. Oh, and that one's gone through uh, Cook. He, he had a big, wild swing at that one. It, whether he got a bottom edge and it hit the deck, I'm not sure, but it seemed to just roll along the floor. I think it might be the bottom edge there. Yeah, it must have been. must have been. He'd taken a step or two, and it was impossible for Brooke Guest to take it. Here comes Thompson, bowls to Cook, who just goes back. There's some slow turn there for Alex Thompson. He chops it out into the offside, and they go through for a single. Zach Chapel does the fielding in the distance on the cover boundary in front of the grandstand. And the scoreboard that says 281 for seven, a lead of 300 and 20. Thompson, halfway through his 40th over of the innings, bowls, and that's guided by Harris in a similar position, perhaps just slightly squarer. And again, it's Chapel who does the fielding. Harris moves on to 18. Cook has 92. So not in the territory yet where I can uh, stop talking for half an hour as he approaches three figures. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my favourite part of the day. Uh, there is one of the uh, non-playing members of the Glamorgan squad, as Thompson Bowles. That's a, a loopy delivery outside the off stump, and it's uh, crashed away by Cook into the offside. They've run one, they'll only get one as Zach Chapel reaches the ball. And they go through for that single. Harris on strike. Cook has 93, 283 for seven. It's a non playing member of the Glamorgan squad is doing an awful lot of fitness work in front of the uh, pavilion. And you'd fit a football pitch on there. I don't want to give the Glamorgan players any ideas, of course, as that one is down the leg side, not taken cleanly by Brooke Guest. And that's the end of the first over after tea. 283 for seven, Glamorgan. They lead by 322. Harris has 18 and Cook is seven away from a century. As I get an exciting message uh, on my phone uh, claiming to be from one of my children that uh, they've changed their number, so I save my new number, etc., etc., and uh, they'll be able to extract money from my bank account via some means now. <laughs> the things you get these days. Uh, uh, ben Bonnie inquires as to Glamorgan's tactics. He suggests get Cook to a turn, have a slog for 10 minutes, then declare. Or bat all day to secure the draw. They won't want to bat all day uh, if they have wickets in hand. I think they'd be... Were, were they in a position to decide, I, I think they would look to have maybe half a dozen overs tonight at Derbyshire. Yes, I think so. I think that's sensible. So I think uh, Glamorgan need to get Derbyshire in, although Derbyshire might get in by their own merits, of course, with just three wickets to, uh, to take in this final session. And... Uh, 
two of them being on the tail end aside. So here is uh, Blair Ticknap looking for his first success of the innings. Bowling a short ball to Cook that he ducks underneath, sails lollipops over his back and then reaches Brooke Guest on the second bounce, which is a dispiriting experience for a fast bowler. There's just nothing there, is there? No. Nothing in the pitch at all for Blair He's got a smile on his face. It is that wry smile I mentioned earlier. Well, you have to laugh or else you cry. As, uh, that is a decent full-length delivery from uh, Tickner, and Cook plays it back up to mid on. You have to live or else you'll die. The lyrics of uh, Brighton's Piranhas with the song Tom Hark, I believe. Yes. I, think you had, I didn't know they were from, I didn't realize they were from Brighton. But. Circa 1980. Mm. Des desperate times for music. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I was I was a late teenager, so I very much enjoyed that period. As uh, that one is pulled away by Cook down towards fine leg for a single, he moves to 94 and within one potential blow of a century. So uh, Dave Fletcher will can put his feet up and smoke his metaphorical cigar in the commentary front when Cook is on strike. I point out, I was 17 in 1980. So also, well, you ought to be enjoying music, music then. I was enjoying music, yes, yeah. Not but the, not necessarily not the presenters, no, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> no. It's a bit of a novelty hit, but I enjoyed it. Uh, right, 284 for seven. Lead 323. Three. Helmet for Mr. Donald. Short leg will be his station for James Harris batting. There is now no slip. Edward Bevan's had a word. There is a third man. Yeah, my matter doesn't find himself down there too often. He looks chilly as Tickner bowls, and that's cut hard and well stopped at point. And there is no run. And it's not Dahl at point because he's at cover. It came? Came, yeah. Yeah. Harris remains on 18. Morgan on to 284 for seven. G. Evans says he never left my stay yesterday because it nearly rained nearly all day. Really? Yeah, my stay's not that far away. Up the Clinvy Valley. I was just about to say that. Tickner in. Bowls down leg side. Harris doesn't make contact. Uh, see, G. Evans has the... Uh, to handle G Evans seven 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 seven, which is traditional for my stake, known as the old parish. And uh, the reason for this, which may be apocryphal, I'll uh, better describe this delivery from Tickner in to bowl to Harris. Short ball, Harris does well to get underneath it. It barely bounced. Guess does well to take it. It barely bounced. It must have gone past his head. That would probably have hit him in the replay. midriff if he'd uh, stood still there. Ooh. He has absolutely hammered that into the middle of the pitch. Oh, it's gone nowhere. No. Soggy. Uh, my stake, the old parish, apparently, allegedly, someone in centuries past, died aged 28. And uh, one particular stonemason was not particularly skilled at doing round numbers. So instead, 28, put four sevens, seven, 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 seven. Yeah, like, anyway, like that. that is the reason my steak is known as the old parish. It's probably not true, but... Uh, you just insulted everybody in the town. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Thompson to continue from the uh, River Taff end. 284 for seven. He's in and bowls to Cook, who well, I suppose he could hit a six, couldn't he? Um, pushes it back to the bowler, and there is no run. If he does hit a six, don't worry, I'll do him justice. Yeah, I'm sure he will, Dave. He's faced 166 deliveries. He's batted really nicely. And in comes Thompson again, bowls to him, and that one is turned into the leg side beyond... And Iron Donald at short leg out to Sam Connors and Chris Cook moves to 95, 285, 4 7. 
Exeter are under the pump in the rugby. Toulouse leading 38-19. Thompson bowls. It's left alone by Harris outside the off stump. Goes through to the keeper. That's the uh, Champions Cup, Cup quarterfinals. The Challenge Cup quarterfinals today as well. As this next delivery, it's in rugby league, of course. Uh, next delivery from Thompson is jabbed down to backward point by Harris. And football. Crystal Palace 1 0 winners at Liverpool. Fulham 2 0 winners at West Ham. Arsenal Aston Villa just kicking off. Thompson bowls, and that one has struck the pad. There's a big appeal for leg before wicket, not out, says umpire Bainton. Women's FA Cup, Spurs beat Leicester 2-1. Manchester United 2-1 up on Chelsea going into uh, stoppage time there. But Rangers losing at Ross County. Did they? Mm. Woof. Title race thrown wide open. Wide open. Such as it is wide open. As this next delivery from Thompson is driven shot. for four by Harris. Nice shot, yeah. Beautiful. All the way along the floor. Out to uh, long off. Uh, no mistake. And Harris moves to 22. Cook has 95. It was the last ball of the over. The lead's 328 now because Glamorgan had 289 for seven with 29 overs left today and 96 tomorrow, weather permitting. In rugby league, then more to uh, Dave's taste than Union. Well, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't mind. I don't union. have to apologise. Uh, Wigan Warriors are forty-six six up away to Castleford Tigers. No major surprise there. St Helens against Warrington Wolves is kicking off. Yeah, if St Helens don't win that. It would be something of a surprise, although Warrington have picked up in recent weeks. So, Tickner from the Cathedral Road End on this uh, cool Sunday evening is bowling to Cook on 95 not out and adding to that tally as he punches one through the offside and it'll be a bit of a chase around the uh, cover boundary for Harry Kane. He gets there just in time and they are back for three runs, moving Cook on to 98 not out and Glamorgan on to 292 for seven. The way these two are batting at the moment, I don't think there's any need for uh, Cook to throw the bat no. if he reaches three figures because uh, Derbyshire are Trying to do a containing job. Now they're all trying to save the single with Harris on strike. Apart from Donald and the lid at uh, short leg. Tick with them. Little bounce to start. And off he goes and bowls. A short ball that Harris hooks away towards the grandstand and has middled that. And that shows the utter futility of trying to bowl short. Even if you are an accomplished New Zealand pace bowler, there is no point in trying to bang it in because a number nine can smash you for four. Yes, it tells you a lot about the pitch, I think. And obviously, the Derbyshire bowlers are weary. But if, uh, if that's what it's going to be like for the remainder of the match... Shouldn't hold too many fears for the Derbyshire batters. The one thing they will have is scoreboard pressure. And the fact that uh, Glamorgan have enough runs to basically put men around the bat for the remainder of the game. But I'm happy to grab a, a word with the Derbyshire skipper at the close of play. As uh, Techna tries his luck from around the wicket and... Uh, Falls over as Harris clips it past Donald and down to one of the square legs for a single. Harris moves to 27. Cook has 98. And uh, Glamorgan have built their position through the day. Night, night watchman Mason Crane did a job before he was leg before to Alex Thompson for 19. 
Colin Ingram looked to be getting on top before he ran himself out on 51. 136 for six. But since then, it's been going Glamorgan's way. Cook on 98. Pulls that one down towards fine leg. Will take the first run. And that will be all. He's on 99 as Tickner's fallen over for the second time in the over. Mm, that's a slight concern, isn't it? He's got back up by times, but he really want to be chucking himself on the floor like that. He's just scratching away at the... Uh, at the crease. Well, Glamorgan's Michael Nisa used to uh, go down with huge regularity. Yeah. Put a lot into his delivery, and uh, visiting commentators got somewhat alarmed. <laughs> He's always doing it, don't worry. Wood does it, doesn't he? Play for England as well. He'll be doing Yes, yes. Uh, Nisa will be doing it for Hampshire this year, briefly, in the middle of the summer. As Tickner bowls down leg sides, Harris thinks about a pull shot and decides not. Harris on 27, not out. His highest last year, I believe, was 47. Average just 14.5. Uh, but he is looking OK here today. As uh, Tickner bowls and uh, Harris chops it down to the gully. He had to wait for that to arrive, really. It's a slower ball bouncer that, that took about a minute and a half to get there. <laughs> Bizarre. He could have uh, played two shots of that one. Uh, would have been bamboozled by the lack of pace, if anything. In the end, it's a dot ball. Harris, 27. Cook on 99. And Glamorgan, 298 for seven, leading by 337 runs. And nine runs came... Off the, the Tickner over. And he will be somewhat disgruntled. Yeah, you expect so, wouldn't you? State of play. Two declarations uh, just happened right. in the uh, second division. Do tell. Yorkshire have declared on 434 for six, uh, leaving Gloucestershire 498 to win at Bristol. And Sussex have declared on 694 for nine. That's a lead of 356 over Leicestershire. Ooh. That did the game as now approaching the 1,000-run mark at Wantage Road, where Middlesex are 417 for two, trailing by 135. <laughs> wow. That's two games in a row where they've scored well in excess of 1,000 runs come to the close. Cook on strike then. Thompson to bowl. And Cook pushes forward. No, David Lloyd is not giving his old teammate an easy single anywhere to get to three figures. He's uh, got three in saving the single on each side of the wicket, plus the two close catchers on the leg side as Thompson bowls to Cook again. And Cook steps back and punches it towards mid-off, but there's a diving stop and there's no run. So... Chris Cook doing a fine job for Glamorgan. Coming in when night watchman Mason Crane was dismissed and really dominating the day. Cook on 99. Stays there as he defends Thompson out into the covers. Marvellous. <laughs> He's got plenty of time. Oh, we'll get there. He's got he'll plenty of time. But he'll... Maybe have to pierce the field to do so. Thompson from the River Taff end into Chris Cook on 99. Jabs it away on the onside, and that is Chris Cook's century. to his first century of the season. He's on 101, not out, and Glamorgan on 300 for seven. And Cook's century came off 173 balls and included 12 boundaries. Yeah, he's batted nicely, hasn't he? Chris Cook, congratulations to him. It's going to take uh, somebody in the Derbyshire side to get to a century if they're to save the game, you fancy. Thompson bowls to Cook, who pushes forward a peel for LBW from largely from David Lloyd at leg slip. There's no run. James Harris, useful support role on uh, 27 in the stand that's now worth 55. Cook down the wicket, plays slightly uppishly towards mid-wicket. Dal Fields 
Chris Cook's no century came off 173 balls. Yeah. It included 12 no balls, right. and it was the 1,000th first class hundred in Glamorgan's history. There He's we are. been desperate to say that, hasn't he? he? Has. He's been absolutely desperate to say that. 1,000 first class centuries recorded by Glamorgan in the. 104th, 5th, yeah. 104th season as a first-class county, nice. knocking off a couple of seasons where a little unpleasantness in Europe prevented cricket from taking place. So actually, that's, uh, that's not a bad rate, is it? 10 hundreds a year. I suppose it uh, reflects the larger amount of first-class cricket that used to be played. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wonder how many centuries Derbyshire have scored over the years since 1872. There was a little spell when they weren't first class. Really? Yeah, it was taken off them and then they regained it. I didn't know that. Mm. When was that? Well, 18, late 1870s, early 1880s. All right. When the demon Spofforth played for them. So he, Prince Spofforth played for Derbyshire. They were a great Australian spinner. Uh, but unfortunately, they weren't a first class county at the time. Here's Tickner then to bowl, down leg side, Harris gets his bat out of the way. There we are, there's a uh, little uh, one to lob at Mr Griffin uh, tonight after your, uh, in your post-match debrief. Well, Glamorgan have got a thousand centuries, Derbyshire each thousand, or they passed it, or... I'd be surprised if they hadn't passed it. Yes, with uh, a few more years to play with. And... Mm, 50 years, give or take. Short ball pulled by Harris, who watched it onto the bat, helped it down towards square leg. Single taken, 28 to Harris, 301 for seven. While uh, Thompson would presumably be uh, willing to bowl on this sort of surface until the end of September, Mr Tickner might be... Uh, Rather challenging that point of view. It's an international baseman who's um, not getting much joy. Cook pushes to Lloyd, who's now up at mid on, having spent most of the game at slip, leg slip, short mid wicket. Now he's brooding at mid on, wondering how much batting he'll have to do to. Uh, Get his side back into the contest in any way. Tickner in to Cook. Short pulled around by Cook. Fielded by Chapel in front of the scoreboard. It's deep backward square. Single taken. 302 for seven. And you get the feeling that uh, Blair Tickner would do best to fire it in around the uh, around the boots at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's almost wasting his energy. I know he, he probably... Well, he might, he might bowl again, I suppose, but it's unlikely after this spell. 17th with the new ball. And uh, that is... Well, Harris trying to cut it, I think, square on the offside, but it's maybe on the shot too soon and played it to Madsen at cover and there's no run. 3.02 for 7. Here on BBC Sport Online with uh, Mr Fletcher, Mr Pritchard, who is busily composing the uh, closer play report or starting on it. Which may or may not include the uh, phrase of the thousandth century for Glamorgan. As that's a short pitch delivery down leg side, Techna continues to try and uh, flog life out of a dead surface. Harris 28, Cook 102, 302 for 7, lead 3 4 1. Was it the thousandth first class? Yes. Not all formats? No, first class. Okay. Championship. Well, first, uh, first class obviously plus the extras they used to play against touring teams and universities that used to be. Yeah. Gentlemen with first class. No left arm against the gentleman with no right leg. <laughs> Those kind of games, they're my favourites. Smokers against the non-smokers. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you could change sides halfway through. 
<laughs> for health reasons. <laughs> Alex Thompson is going to bowl from the River Taff and he bowls to uh, Chris Cook, who pulls this one into the leg side. He's only going to get a single for it, though, because he didn't really time it. And uh, Harry Kane fields. Cook moves to 103, 303 for seven. They lead by 342. It's frightening thought, really, that uh, around about the time when you and I were coming into this world, we probably had still gentlemen against players well, fixtures in the early yeah, 60s. Absolutely. Quite right, too. <laughs> Here is uh, Thompson, bowls to Harris, who defends. And Aaron Donald doesn't pick the ball up cleanly. It matters not. Because there was never a chance of a run there. Days when the, the professionals, a couple of them in each uh, side sometimes, would uh, come out of a separate uh, dressing room entrance. Oh, yeah. Next delivery is driven Oof. down the ground by Harris. Uh, Cook had to leap out of the way of that one, not because it was aiming for him, but it would have hit him firmly on the ankle uh, all the way for four down to long off. Nice shot. He's played a couple of those now. James Harrison moves on to 32. Oh, 307 for seven. Uh, Glamorgan. This is one heck of a turnaround from 136 for six when uh, Ingram was out. Yes, that's the one concern. In comes Thompson, Bowles, and Harris drives again, and it's four more. This time it's to the left of Lewis Reese at mid off. Another really nice shot. Harris fancies a half century here, and he knows he might have to get a bit of a move on. He moves up to 36, 311 for seven. 25 overs and two balls left to today. Presumably, the talk at tea in the Glamorgan changing room would have been how many overs they will want to bowl this evening. At Derbyshire, having already got a lead of 350 now, they have enough runs to make sure that they cannot, they simply cannot lose the game. <laughs> but if I keep saying it, it'll make any difference. Almost certainly not. As Thompson is in again, balls to Harris, and this time clips it up to uh, long on, where Tickner, I believe, is standing, and they go through for a single. Harris moves to 37. Well, 120 overs possibly in the match if it uh, stays dry. That's only three and over to oh, win it. Yeah, absolutely. God, yeah. Can't declare yet. <laughs> Ready when you are. And here comes Thompson and um, Bowles, and the pitch has flattened out. Cook defends it out into the offside. It's picked up by Guest coming around from behind the stumps. It's the end of Alex Thompson's 43rd over of the innings. Absolutely remarkable. On the in the uh, first match that Derbyshire have managed to get out on the pitch, he has now bowled 69 overs, and counting. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Might have another hour or so to bowl. Yeah, 25 overs remaining of the day. Returning to bowl at the Cathedral Road end, Sam Con. Connors then with another blast as Tickner asks when the next flight to Auckland is. <laughs> I've had enough. British County cricket, it's rubbish. I'm off. <laughs> I'm sure he will have uh, better days. Looks threatening in the first innings. Took the first two wickets of the match. Yes. And... Uh, Frustrated ever since. So Connors one for thirty-eight to bowl to James Harris on thirty-seven not out. Uh, there's a gully rather than a slip. Connors bowls. Harris pushes it to came at cover and there is no run. There's also a point a cover mid off mid on. Mid wicket, short mid wicket, deep square leg just behind the umpire, and a deep fine leg somewhere down in the distance at the uh, River Taff end. As the sun becomes brighter, and Connors bowls down leg side, Harris 
doesn't make contact as he looks to hit it between the two boundary fielders on the leg side but uh, no joy 312 for 7 Harris 37 Cook 103 the men out today Crane for 19 Ingram for 51 and Douthwaite for 32 Thompson the only wicket taker of the day as Harris nudges that out onto the offside once more and again came fields and again there is no run well David Lloyd at the moment looks to be uh, happy from the seamers point of view just to uh, keep the runs down and try and frustrate the batsman out Connors started his spell with three dot balls is in to bowl to Harris, make that four dot balls as it's driven back to the bowler who is uh, somewhat shaven at the sides. Is that uh, mullet territory yet? Oh, very yes, much. Yes. Very much so. Yeah. I would say so. He wanders back towards us aerodynamically shaven at the sides of the head. Bowls to Harris on 37. And Harris drives through the offside. We'll get runs here. Don't think it'll quite reach the boundary. Oh, it will. Uh, as a desperate attempt by the point fielder to flick it back. And in the end, took the ball over the ropes with him. Another boundary from Harris. And he moves into the 40s. He's on 41, not out. Not even Anuj Dahl can save that one. 316 for 7, lead 3-5-5. Five, five. Oh, you might as well stay out there now. Or someone, <laughs> Harry Kane will stay out there. On the point boundary, which means there are a couple of easy singles, square of the wicket. There's Connors balls and Harris drives it back to him. Connors can't stop it, but it is mopped up by Reese at mid-off. No run. One boundary off the over. Harris has 41. Cook has 103. To Morgan, 316 for 7. Lead by 355. And you're listening to BBC Sport Online. Yeah, let's keep having a quick glance over to the, the balcony where uh, a couple of the Morgan players in whites are waiting either to bat or to uh, say, come on in, boys, let's have a go at Derbyshire. I'm just seeing if they've got their pads on, actually. I can't see anybody with pads on up there, which is something, <laughs> I suppose. Perhaps they will call it in if uh, a wicket falls now. Mm. It'd, be, it'd be harsh on, uh, on Harris, having got to 41, whether to... Uh, Call them in. Yeah. Won't make a huge amount of difference, will it? Alex Thompson begins a new over, and that one is driven out uh, to the extra cover boundary for four runs. Cook moves to 107. 316 for seven. No, I'm all right. I'm happy with Tapau. <laughs> I like a bit of Tapau. I'm sticking. I can't, I can't do it with half and half. Smallest woman I've ever met, I think. All right. Yeah. Must be a long way for you to look down then. She was tiny, absolutely tiny. It comes Thompson and Bowles to Cook, who whips this one into the leg side for a single. Picked up by Sam Connors out in the field. Cook moves to 108, 321, 4 7. She's I'm impressed by your ability to instantly recognise a, a Tapau hit that is not China in your hand. I hope that we're all right, Tapau. Yeah. But I don't think I'd have been a, uh, able to name anything other than the... Uh, it is Tapau, isn't one. it? I'll take your word for it. Oh dear, perhaps it's not. <laughs> Here comes Thompson and Bowles. That's cut away by Harris and he's going to get four runs for it out to the backward point boundary this time in front of the grandstand. Harris moves to 45 now. The lead up to 364. 
Glamorgan 325 for seven. There are a number of teapots out uh, there, double teapots at that. Alice Dahl and Aaron Donald, Lewis Reese double teapotting it, and uh, also Sam Connors. What do we do next, boys? So, new record four double teapots as uh, Thompson bowls, and that one is driven down to long on by Harris for a single. He moves to 46, 326 for seven. I say I met her. I was in her presence because she'd sung the uh, theme tune to the 1995 Rugby League World Cup that was held in this country. As Thompson bowls, and that one is clipped into the leg side by Chris Cook for a single. Cook moves to 109, 327 for seven. I mean, in Britain, I'm sure there were games at Ebba Vale. And it's, I apologise again for the pronunciation very much anglicised <laughs> you know where I mean though yeah yeah there's not much shooting too wrong with Abu Vale really. <laughs> how do you be surprised <laughs> it's Thompson hit and bowls to Harris who gets one that just keeps a bit low it seems and up an inside edge played into the leg side Donald does the fielding Harris moves to 47 and keeps the strike so he's three away from the half century Glamorgan 328 for seven leading by 300 and uh, 67 runs. Well, apparently Hart and Soul reached number four in Britain. So it was quite a big hit, really. Mm. Mm. Yes, do them a disservice. <sighs> they, were, they were a big deal at, at one point to power. You're yeah. right, China in your hands was uh, clearly the, the, the big hit. Yes, it was... Um, Strange, really, that uh, I could fail to remember a number four hit. I must be losing my touch. Mm. 3.28 for seven. Where did Derbyshire go next, apart from home tomorrow well, they night? Just, they just wait, don't they, really? I mean, it, it is a waiting game now because the lead is clearly sufficient, I would say. Uh, Derbyshire's record run chase in the 350s, they're not going to get 367. There's Connors bowls and uh, Harris plays defensively on the offside. Lewis Reese looks like he's getting ready to have a bowl. Why not? Well, might be a day and a half late, but so 22 hours left today, 96 tomorrow. That's 118, is it? Yeah, three, three and a half on over, but it, teams simply don't do it, and I know that's not a reason to not do it, but... Connors is in to bowl to Harris on 47, and he defends it, and this equals his best score since returning to Glamorgan a couple of seasons ago. Top score of 47 last year and in the 30s the previous year. Not much is getting past the bat anymore, is it? If yeah. it ever did. And, uh, well, it clearly it did on days one and two. Nothing's going past the bat. So if you were... A little polish. Sets off on his way. Driven by Harris. They call for a quick single. Reese has a shy that might have been out. Had he struck, he didn't. I think Harris was struggling there. Five. And Reese knows it, head in hands. Yeah, five sets of, head, of hands on head. <laughs> they don't, there was a bit of synchronised hands on heads yeah, on the outside then. beautiful. Having been synchronised teapotting a few minutes ago. It's now a, a shrug of the shoulders from Connors. Why do we play this game for a living? <laughs> 3.29 for seven. Harris moves to 48. <laughs> Connors is in to bowl and Cook drives straight to mid on. What was Donald you up to at midweek? what Aaron Donald was doing there. Well, he, he seemed to be uh, trying to plant a header into the top corner of the net, I think. He's taken his fielding pads off, hasn't he? Which is why he returned to the field with one trouser leg rolled up above his knee. But you're right, he did a little bit of a dance, then leapt in the air and nodded one in. 
<laughs> Reese is definitely He's coming either there. trying to keep warm or telling Lloyd that he ought to be bowling or bowling imminently. Connor's in, bowls and uh, plays into the offside by Cook. He'll pick up a couple of runs out towards the cover boundary and he will move on to Nelson 111. Harris has 48. But, uh, in full answer to your question, where did Derbyshire go from here? Well, they, they, they just bat for the last, what, 10, 15 overs of the day? Hope that they don't lose a wicket and come back tomorrow and hope it rains a bit. Session by session, mm -hmm. I believe. Connor's in to bowl to Cook, who looked as though he was going for a quick single there, but Lloyd ran across the ball, giving the impression that he might be able to f field it. Tickner did field it, and they were dissuaded from running. 3.31 for seven. 370 is the lead. Another radio update coming fairly shortly. I'll keep quiet. Harris will want to get to his uh, 15, not having had one for a while. And he is on strike. He'll get there during the update. The, <laughs> the timed update. <laughs> now we're alright on this one. It's not a... Uh, Oh, an exact yeah, right. time update. And uh, my better half is producing the subsequent radio right. programme, so if we're 15 seconds over time, uh, I don't think she's going to worry too much about it. She might berate me jokingly <laughs> and tell me it's my turn to, cut the, turn to make the tea or something like that. Lewis Rees is coming on. He is indeed. The man whose father hails from Llanelli and who has a brother called Yayan. Mm. Making it a two and a half Welsh person, Derbyshire 11. Here comes Rhys then. Left arm around the wicket. Bit of welcome variety for Derbyshire. And his first ball is defended by Harris. Back to the bowler, no run. His first bowl of the season. He did bowl in pre-season, of course. Last season, 20 wickets at 30. Pretty respectable. Yeah. Injured for a lot of it from a bowling perspective. And he comes to bowl now, and Harris drives slightly uncertainly up to mid-off. Had to check his shot a little bit, and there is no run. Wasn't even in the side at the start of last season, was out in the cold. Strange that for yeah. a, an opening batter. Although he did score most of his season, he got past the thousand runs, but most of them literally yeah. were against Glamorgan. <laughs> but uh, a very handy contributor with the ball. It's Reese Bowles and uh, Cook drives to cover. Glamorgan are 331 for seven in their second innings, a lead of 370 over Derbyshire, and they look like playing themselves into an unassailable position in this championship match, thanks to Chris Cook, is 111 not out, and James Harris, who has his highest score for a couple of years, he's on 48 not out. Earlier, there's a half century for Colin Ingram as well. He made 51, Dan Douthwaite 32. A good effort from Glamorgan's batters as the pitch eases today. 331 for seven. They lead by 370. In comes Lewis Reese from the uh, River Taff end, bowling to uh, James Harris, who's going to get to his 50 off a very thin in, uh, outside edge down to third man. Not perhaps the way he would have wanted to have got there, but he's got there, and that's the most important thing. 82 deliveries, that was his ninth boundary, James Harris. He's batted really nicely alongside uh, Chris Cook. They put on 90 in 134 balls. And Derbyshire will be hoping that uh, Harris's success means that their batters might have it slightly easier on day four when they will be battling to save the game. Here is Lewis Rees 
in to Harris, who guides this out into the offside. A magnificent tumbling stop there from Aaron Donald. I'm not sure it was necessary, but it was beautiful to watch. <laughs> There's no one. 3.35 for seven, lead 3.74. Boyd by a success of planting one past the reach of a diving imaginary keeper in the last over. Yes. In comes Reese again, bowls, and that one's a horrible oh. delivery down the leg side. Has he got something on that? No, he hasn't. Oh, he has, has he? Hang on, we'll wait and find out. Uh, they've come back for two, and uh, they will only get two, and they're going to signal leg by, so no, he didn't get anything on it other than some part of his leg. Harris remains on 52. Cook has 111. It's 337 for seven. Uh, the batters are having a drink, which doesn't suggest they're going to stop anytime soon, unless it's a, uh, a, a message being brought out to say, we'll get down to 16 overs, and then we'll declare, I don't know, because they've got enough runs now. Uh, the weather's started to close in, by the way, so uh, this game's going to end in a draw. <laughs> Yeah, for the first time today, we've got some heavyish dark cloud spreading in from our left. And, uh, well, we went off early for bad light last night. Well, so that's gloomy. obviously a possibility. It is nowhere near as gloomy, <laughs> Mr. Fletcher, <laughs> as it was last night. I can barely see the middle. Who's, who's, who's batting? <laughs> Get that miner's helmet lamp on. Uh -huh. 3.37 for 7. Having been 136 for six, so Glamorgan have added 201 runs for the loss of just one wicket since uh, Ingram went, which is a remarkable turnaround in the game, which we described, we've been describing as low scoring for two and a half days. Connors is in to bowl and uh, Cook plays that one. Back past Connors up to mid on. Kirk, Kirk Jones makes a good point on uh, on Twitter. With a dodgy weather forecast tomorrow, surely Glamorgan should consider declaring soon. Uh, but now that there are a ridiculous eight points for a draw, he says, mm. what incentive is there to try and force a win? It, it's a fair point. It, it denies the opposition the points in the, in your battle to get up the table, but it is a fair point. Connors in, balls to Cook, who swings that one high in the air over mid-off, and it plugs, and they'll come back for a couple of runs. Reese with a throw at the non-striker's end, well backed up. All action, all of a sudden, and maybe that is the sign that Glamorgan are going for it. If they declared say at the end of this over, that would mean... Uh, 18, they'd uh, get to bowl at uh, Derbyshire this evening. Good maths. Lead 3-7-8. Cook swinging the arms on that occasion. Connors is in, bowls to him. And uh, Cook punches that one hard down towards Kame at backward point, but it's too hard to have any chance of coming back for a second run. So having... Uh, Batted all day in the sunshine, <laughs> Glamorgan will look to declare and uh, put Derbyshire under pressure once the cloud comes over. It's the it's the Caffili Cloud Factory. It's been uh, <laughs> opened up just in time to make life difficult for the visitors. Virtually no one in the catching position now. Five saving the single. Lloyd Shortish mid-wicket is the closest, and that's hit hard away on the leg side by James Harris. Four more down past uh, the despairing chapel at Backwood Square. Harris moves to 56, 3, 4, 4 for 7. Could this even be the last over, I wonder, mm. the way that they've uh, started to open up. Those Reese will be... Uh Batting, opening the batting with uh, Harry Kemp has just looked over his left shoulder. I don't think he likes what he sees particularly. Connors then, away from us. Number 59, right elbow strapped up, balls, and uh, it's played straight to cover 
by Harris. Dahl does the fielding. There is no run. So scoring rate has risen gently. It's been by no means out of control. 3.35 now. There's Connors balls and so oh, there is a big swing at that one outside off stump. Connors bent his back into it and it just sort of went apologetically past the the bat. It's not a declaration quite yet. As Harris and Cook come together, Cook's got his turn, Harris has got his half century. So they can uh, have a, a little bit of relative pressure free hitting, maybe, for as long as they stay out there. And Derbyshire's field is starting to spread far and wide now. Wow, there's a lot on the boundary now. Mm, there are, aren't there? Lloyd's, Lloyd's maybe suggesting that, come on, boys, you've got enough. Well, I think you have a fair point. I'm just trying to sort out my uh, evening tonight. I'm fed up with the cricket. <laughs> Here is Lewis Rees from the River Taff End. Balls to Chris <laughs> Cook. Almost induces a false shot from him, but the ball goes off the toe end of the bat all the way along the ground. Back to the bowler. There's a cover. And that's about it in terms of saving the uh, single. It's, it's mad, isn't it? Well, he, yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're treading water here. And uh, Riggs is in again around the wicket. Um, Bowles is launched down the ground. Is it going to go all the way for six or is Tickner going to catch it? It goes over Tickner's head and goes all the way for six. Cook will move to 120. Empire Bainton's looking around as though he has no idea what's happening. <laughs> Did he signal six? It was a six. I presume, judging by the fact that the boundary fielder was leaping upwards well, at yes, the time. It looked fairly straightforward. Yes, pitched yeah. on the covers. 350 up, 350 for seven, and this time it's a one-handed shot out <laughs> towards the uh, cover boundary. That looked like a baseball player who's, who's trying to hit a home run. The uh, opposite way, as they say, um, towards the offside. He picks up a single. Moves to 121, 351 for seven. The lead is 390, so we might be ten runs away from a declaration, for goodness sake. Third six of the match, Carlton and Chapel, the others. In comes Reese again. Harris just clips that one into the leg side. Lloyd will trot around to do the fielding. Harris will move to 57, 3.52 for seven. It feels like rain to me. It's clouded over. It's very grey above. Uh, I'd be surprised with the pace of the uh, Glamorgan mm. opening bowlers whether they're allowed to use them, but uh, <laughs> we shall find out. Cook on strike at 121. Here comes Reese around the wicket and bowls to Cook, who slaps this away into the offside. It's difficult to work out who all the fielders are. That's an Aaron Donald, but who all the fielders are, because nobody's standing where they should be standing anymore, because you normally know who's in the slips and short leg and mid-on and mid-off, but everybody has got their heels on the ropes, other than David Lloyd at a mid-wicket, Anna's Dahl at uh, short third man, and Wayne Madsen in the covers. Everybody else is on the boundary as Lewis Rees comes in and doesn't use his uh, front arm at all with that delivery. It misses everything, I think. It's gone down for four, and it is only to come off the edge no, of the edge. bat. Yeah, yeah, it's an edge. edge from you, have a look when, you have a look at the delivery uh, when it comes up on the replay. Harris has moved to 61, 357 for seven. No front arm. Hmm. I have never seen him do that before. It's quite a thick edge, actually. My apologies. Uh, he had his back to me. I couldn't see it, and my eyes are old. My uh, knees are weak. I'm a feeble old man. <laughs> 3.57 for seven. <laughs> Glamour can lead by 396. Harris 61. First century, uh, first half century in this period with Glamorgan. Cook 122. He's used to big runs. 3.57 for seven. Lead could go past 400 in uh, this over. It is quite 
dark. There's apparently a sprinkling of rain um, earlier on, just uh, I think it's raining around now. when the intervals are local photographer Chris reported. Yes, Griff told me it had been raining as well. I think it's raining now. So no reason for Glamorgan to declare then because uh, no. Derbyshire wouldn't start their innings. People are starting to move. The ground staff are sort of ready away to our right in that little gap that they go down when they go back into their, uh, their hut and a lot of the equipment is being moved as well. The, the bags. David Lloyd is in no hurry at all for his team to start a new over. There's uh, just one man saving the single or anything like as that's hit by Cook up towards wide long off. Reese sliding stop. Ten metres inside the ropes in front of the indoor cricket school. And they're safely back for two runs. Cook 124, Harris's 61. As uh, umpire Bailey looks up at the skies and really? wondering whether precipitation is about to hit the nation. Connors to Cook. Short. Pulled away or punched away in a very similar place. And Lewis Reese again slides, this time a couple of metres nearer the ropes and again fields. And again there are two runs which take the Glamorgan lead to 400. Come on, where's the applause? There is no <laughs> crowd uh, lulled into or battered or bludgeoned into submission by the weight of Glamorgan runs. Not something we thought we'd be saying today as Connors is into ball to Cook wide outside off stump, hiding the ball. Cook went across to try and hit it, missed it, stares at the umpire, Rob Bailey. Oh, come on, can I have a wide for that? No, you can't, son. It was inside the tram lines. And it now has got uh, rather darker, so light could be an issue. Yeah, get the metres out. As well as uh, a bit of light rain in the vicinity. And the umpires yeah, are off. heading off with Glamorgan on 361 for seven, leading by exactly 400. 18.3 overs remain theoretically of the day. We had a bit of on-off, on-off last night. Um, where the batters wanted to go off. Is it raining about like what we're saying here? I thought I thought it was raining, but it's gone down as bad light on the screen. I think I think there is some rain out there. You know, general. Do you not think? I mean, general my eyes murkiness. aren't one hundred percent anymore. It's a weather delay. Nice. They're going to lose uh, eighteen overs and three balls. <laughs> Dave says, hopefully, it might be a passing shower. It is now a reasonably heavy shower, and they need to... Absolutely hammering it down. They need to uh, get that hover cover hovering its way to the middle. It, it, it gives me no pleasure. Edward's just walked into the box at the back there, and last year he absolutely hammered me for about an hour and a half. When are they going to declare? When are they going to declare? And this was Derbyshire batting, and I said, well, they won't declare, and, and was proved right, but Edward quite correctly kept saying, when are they going to declare... Glamorgan, it, they've only got themselves to blame, really. 50, 60 runs ago, they could have declared even more than that and already have a couple of wickets and then get on and off in between the showers tomorrow and complete a victory. It seems bizarre to me. They will have their reasons, I'm sure. And uh, well, you could tell from the way the field was spread, Derbyshire were just in a holding pattern, just bowling balls. You could have put a bowling machine out there, really. <laughs> uh, such was the... Uh, state of the game the big hover cover has come on it is you can see the window away to our left at the far end of this uh, media center covered in water it's hammering it down uh, so, <laughs> wow who'd have thought who'd have thought yes it was only a five percent chance of rain but that five percent has obviously uh, come about it's just after quarter past five the cover is now over the wickets Will they unfurl the uh, sheeting off it and over the rest of the square? Not quite yet. I've seen enough rain this season already for... Uh, I'm sure you have. ...too much for my liking, if I'm honest. <laughs> but an interesting one. I'll I tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do for you. 
What are you doing? One off deal. Here are the scores from elsewhere in the second oh. division. Yeah, Gloucestershire have already lost their first wicket in pursuit of 498. Uh, they're 21 for one in their second innings against Yorkshire at Bristol. Uh, Leicestershire 39 without loss, uh, still trailing Sussex by 317. Sussex declared earlier on 694 for nine. Um, in the the least fascinating match of the round in Division Two, uh, Middlesex are 481 for two in reply to Northamptonshire's 552 for six. Uh, they trail by 71 runs. Durham have made a real fist of it against Warwickshire, and fair play to them. They're 507 for seven. They trail by 191. Uh, Somerset are 150, 160 for five. They lead Surrey by 17 at the Oval. So Surrey very much in control there. Nottinghamshire 125 for four. Lead Worcestershire by 169 at uh, Trent Bridge. It'll be insufferable. Uh, Hampshire are nine for one in their second innings at Southampton. They still trail Lancashire by 108. Uh, and in the other game, uh, Essex are 79 for two. They lead Kent by 196 at Chelmsford. You are bang up to date. It's still raining here. Over to Nick. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, well, it uh, falls incumbent on me to uh, declare a, a temporary pause in this uh, commentary service here on BBC Sport Online and on Glamorgan and Derbyshire websites with Glamorgan 361 for 7, Cook 126 not out, Harris 61 not out, the lead is 400. I suspect we've seen the end of this Glamorgan innings. If we do get back out, it's likely to be Derbyshire batting, and uh, they will need to score 401 to win. We will be back when or if there is anything further to report this evening.
The news from the middle is that play will be resuming once the ground preparation has been completed and Glamorgan have declared. So in case you missed the public address system, we're about to resume in a few minutes' time once the uh, covers have been removed with Derbyshire chasing 401 for victory in uh, 114 overs, weather permitting, and that's 3.51 runs an over.
returning to the field, the Glamorgan team led by captain Sam Northeast. And fielding a substitute for Jamie McElroy, wearing shirt 55, is Asa Fry. And to open the batting for Derbyshire in their second innings, Lewis Rees and Harry Kemp. Welcome back to Sophia Gardens where play is about to resume after a short rain delay and during that time off the field Glamorgan have declared they finished their innings on 361 for 7 setting Derbyshire a target of 401 to win I'm David Pritchard you're listening on the BBC Sport website and Glamorgan and Derbyshire's streams as well, alongside Dave Fletcher from BBC Radio Derby. And I suppose, Dave, we'll be looking at uh, a record run chase for Derbyshire. Funny there's you should mention that. Uh, from here. I have to be doing some <laughs> research. Uh, David Griffin, obviously the, the, the largest successful run chase was the 371 for nine against the Australians in 1997, Kevin Dean and all that. Um, the record against Glamorgan was in Derby in 1947. 285 for six they scored. So some questions in these corridors as to why Glamorgan batted quite so long, but should the weather remain as it is, we'll have 16 overs before the close. And the Pakistani seamer Mir Hamza will bowl the first of them from the Cathedral Road end. He comes in over the wicket to Harry Kame, who defends the first ball safely. Yeah, Glamorgan looking to make inroads this evening. They've got three slips in place for Kame, who's opening the batting with Lewis Rees. Nick Webb rather mischievously suggesting they only need to score 3.58 runs and over if it's a win from here, Derbyshire. Well, that's the, that's the strange thing about ridiculous run chases, isn't it? Oh, yeah, they've got all day tomorrow. It never works like that for some reason. Here's Hamza. He's in to Kane, who plays onto the onside. James Harris does the feeling at mid-on. Firstly, the, the pressure, the scoreboard pressure, needing a 401, and you look at it thinking, well, nobody gets 401 in the fourth innings of matches unless it's a timeless game and it's on day 12. And the fact that Glamorgan can attack for the entire time, there is no point at which they will have to necessarily have a lot of players out near the boundary and things like that. I mean, they've got a long leg and that's it. Here is Hamza on the attack. Full delivery which came defends comfortably. Yeah, the conditions a little more seam friendly now than they were earlier today. It's been a bright and sunny day albeit cool but still and with a bat on top throughout with Glamorgan posting 361 in the second innings but yeah, as we've said throughout this match the Cookaburra ball not doing much the pitch looks a bit flatter today it might be hard work for, for Glamorgan making inroads into this Derbyshire batting lineup. I think the Cookaburra ball and you're absolutely right but the Cookaburra ball, I thought Alex Thompson bowled beautifully with it throughout, really. And I thought that the Glamorgan quicker bowlers got more out of it when it was old than the Derbyshire bowlers did. And that's that's how that, that's how I see the, the, the Cookaburra ball as far as the bowling side is concerned. Here's Hamza over the wicket to Kame, who allows that to drift outside his off stump. The one thing that we haven't seen, and, and it might happen, but it, it would, the way the way the pitch has got easier, if it has got easier, uh, we haven't seen any variable bounce, particularly. Perhaps the odd one from Thompson that might have put a bit of top spin on it or something like that, and the same with Mason Crane. But the pitch feels as true now as it ever has. 
I'm still exceptionally nervous for Derbyshire having to bat for uh, 112 overs. As Hamza charges in to Kame, it's a full ball which beats the outside edge. First false shot of sorts from Kame so far. So, um, well, I'm absolutely fascinated to see what happens in the remainder of the game, and that's good because it, it, it is going to hold our attention. Yeah, it drifted a bit this afternoon, but that shouldn't detract from from what has been a terrific game of cricket. No matter what happens now, from Morgan trying to force the victory, the debate on wh whether they should have declared early, earlier or not becomes immaterial, really, from here on in. Hamza, his final ball of the first over to Kame, who defends and shuffles it down the leg side. They're looking for two runs here, and they'll make it relatively comfortably. So Derbyshire score two runs off the opening over. They're two without loss, trailing Glamorgan by 398 runs. Oh, Harry came almost forgot to run then. I don't know whether anybody else spotted that if you're watching it on the stream. He played the shot and it went past the man close in on the leg side. And uh, I think he had to be uh, reminded by Lewis Reese that they, they also have to keep the scoreboard ticking over because uh, that, that would be terrible if one batter stayed at one end and the other went to the other. They've just destroyed a white towel in the, uh, in the cause of drying the ball there. Uh, one well, of the coaching staff brought a full-sized bath towel to the side of the pitch, and they've just ripped it into strips. It's quite, it's quite bizarre that they didn't a that they didn't go out there with towels in the first place because uh, it has rained. I know they ran the rope around the outfield, but that doesn't usually do an enormous amount other than just knock the water off the top. But all three slips now have towels sticking out the back of their trousers as. James Harris begins a new over, or his first over, the second over of the Derbyshire second innings, and it's left alone outside the off stump by uh, Lewis Rees. It might have been Grant Bradburn himself, the head honcho. We bumped into myself and David Griffin when we were bringing our gear here on, on Thursday. There was a point at which Bradburn might have ended up at Derbyshire. There is... Harris bowling and Reese defends it out into the offside. There is no run. I think he was there for a short spell during a T20 competition when he was helping out. And uh, I know he has his supporters. Yep. Well, he'll have worked with Mickey at Pakistan as well, of course. When Mickey was in charge of like, the head of cricket or whatever he was, and Grant Bradburn had a, a brief spell in charge there. Is Harris bowling to Reese, who pushes this one up to mid off, and there's no run. That's two impressive coaching CVs in this match between yes. Mickey Arthur and Grant Bradburn. Lots of international experience, particularly for Mickey Arthur. Yes, so it's easier to name the test playing nations he hasn't coached. <laughs> he's, uh, he's done Australia, South Africa, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan over the years. Here comes. Harris in and bowls to Reese. That one's uh, clipped away down to fine leg for four runs. There's a uh, hands on head for uh, James Harris, but Lewis Reese just whipped that one away. A little bit off target. One of our drinking companions is his back with his, his long trousers on and his hood up. Paul has arrived back at the cricket ground. I think he's got changed from earlier. They very rarely the people uh, I associate with during away trips but very rarely wear long trousers so it's very strange to see everybody wearing long pants at the moment as Harris comes in fifth ball of his first over and that's dug out a full length delivery he's done well there as Reese digs it out and it's fielded at uh, mid on by Kieran Carlson it feels like long pants weather now though to be fair I, mean, I know I had my shorts on on day one but they're firmly packed away ready for going home tomorrow. I don't blame you looking at that sky. It's uh, pretty broody and grey, isn't it? Well, it got light, didn't it? It got brighter. The sun came out, but if you look away to our left as Harris comes in to complete the first of his overs for the evening, for the second innings, 
The ball is clipped up to mid on and there is no run, so uh, just the four runs from that over Derbyshire. Six without loss after two, uh, chasing that nom notional 401. It looks as bad now away, so that'd be the north, wouldn't it, away to our left, but it's coming in from the west, and which is behind us, uh, and it looks very grey again. Very grey indeed. Don't forget, we went off last night. It was very gloomy last night when we went off, and it was later than this. Hamza will hope that aids his cause as a seam bowler, continuing from the Cathedral Road end. And Harry Kane leaves his first ball outside the off stump. Yeah, trying something slightly different. This time, Hamza, he was coming around the wicket, wasn't he? A lot more in the first innings, angling it in, and now he's going for that natural angle across the right-hander. I assume the substitute fielder is out there, unless uh, McElroy has taken his place in the field. I can't quite. It is a substitute fielder. I can't quite see who it is from here, but yeah, McElroy's not. Is he the one at cover? In go, oh, it's you. Here's Hamza. <laughs> a full delivery, which Kane drives to the covers. And no, that's Mason Crane. Fights down at long leg. Oh, there he is. I've got him. Ace of Tribe is under the helmet at short leg. Well spotted. Oh, he just turned around and showed me his number, which <laughs> helped enormously. <laughs> Here's Hamza, the top of his long run up from the Cathedral Road end. The left arm seamer charges in. Pulled a full ball, which came. Meets with a full face of the bat for no run. A couple of goals doing the round. Now that everybody's left, just about. There's a, a knot of supporters at the far end of the ground. They're uh, searching for many little bits of food that are left. Enormous things, aren't they? Absolutely enormous. It's ridiculous. If they knew how frightened we were of them. Hamza around the wicket this time. Came defends. Fielders are interested for a moment, thinking he might sneak through his defences and hit the pads, but Kane manages to get a bat on it. If they knew that how, how scared we were of them, they could gang. To, they could take over the world, goals. <laughs> what a thought. They just don't know, do they? I mean, they'd find it difficult to operate heavy machinery, I imagine, but they could take over the world. Ridiculous birds. Beautiful things. Plenty of them overhead as Hamza runs in around the wicket to Kame, who defends, and the ball squirts down the offside, and they'll run through for a single, the Derbyshire openers. Derbyshire move on to seven without loss. Only another... 394 runs required to win. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only another 109 overs to survive. <laughs> Both are very large numbers. But uh, so far, so good. But Derbyshire did lose uh, Lewis Reese early in their first innings. Played on with a score on two to a delivery from James Harris. Here comes Hamza for the final ball of his second over. Over the wicket to Rees, who defends. And again, the fielders are excited. But you get the impression that's just because we're in the early stages of the Derbyshire second innings. Glamorgan have that scoreboard pressure to apply on their opponents. But Derbyshire survive for now. After three overs, we're seven without loss. I think it's in the, uh, the coaching manual, isn't it? The coaching fielding manual. Be excited, especially early in the innings. Lots of noise, uh, and then they all get quieter and quieter and quieter. It's Derbyshire's batter's job to keep them quiet if they possibly can. It's in the laws of the game. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I don't imagine for a minute that any time in the remaining 13 overs they'll be particularly quiet. But get them close to lunch tomorrow and see how that is. Harry Kane just uh, settling himself down. 
He's going to face James Harris for the first time in this second innings. And Harris balls to him and came, who did that an awful lot in the first innings and lasted a long time out in the middle before he was eventually dismissed for 25. Faced 113 deliveries. Leaves the ball alone nicely there. It goes through to the keeper. Chris Cook. Who went... Morgan declared was on 126 not out. Here is Harris in and bowls to Cam. Now strike on the pad and he's been given. And there's the breakthrough that Glamorgan were looking for. And James Harris, who got the first wicket in the first innings, gets the first wicket in the second innings as well. And Derbyshire are seven for one. Harry Kane has gone. That's a long way for Derbyshire from here. Glamorgan, they're on their way. Yeah, just looking at the replay. It shaped in and it did move a fair bit down the leg side. It would have been close, but you'd imagine if DRS was in operation, it would have been the old umpire's call, at probably at least clipping leg stump. So uh, an important breakthrough for Glamorgan. They'll feel vindicated with their decision-making as it's been this afternoon. I still think they could have declared earlier, but there we go. The, the big breakthrough for Glamorgan is there. And James Harris, who bowled very well in the first innings, taking three for 28 from his 19 overs, strikes in his second over in the second innings. The unlucky 13th ball he faced. Harry came, if that is a thing. He still hasn't got off the field of play, actually. Uh, when you get beyond the boundary, there's another 30 yards, 40 yards to go, <laughs> which is, must be very dispiriting. And this will be David Lloyd who came out and attacked in the first innings. I wonder whether we'll see the same kind of thing from him second time around, or whether it'll be a little more circumspect, the former Glamorgan man. Being coming back to Paul Derbyshire, the visiting captain, David Lloyd. Yeah, clinging on doesn't really seem to be in David Lloyd's vocabulary, does no, it? No, no, and... and David Lloyd and Aaron Donald, batters who, if you're on the attack and on the front foot and playing the shots and all the rest of it, is fantastic. If you're having to bat for an entire day to save the game, or in the case of today, the remaining 12 overs and four balls, they've got to strike a balance here. We will see. And be, there will be no lack of fight from uh, any of the Derbyshire batters, I'm sure. But it's a, it's a tricky task. He has to try to uh, delay things as much as he can until it gets dark enough for the umpires to take them off. I think that's probably, probably the, the M.O. here. As he takes his guard, we did make a half century in the first innings in his first game. As Derbyshire skipper made 60, but from just 86 deliveries. Was the second man out with a score on 78. They're 159 behind at that stage. They're currently 393 behind. So the position has deteriorated somewhat from a Derbyshire perspective. And here is Harris in and bowls to Lloyd. Well, there we go. Drives him square on the offside for four first ball. Uh, any questions we might have had have just been answered in one shot, which was glorious. And Derbyshire moved to 11 for one. And Lloyd off the mark with a boundary. Uncompromising start from David Lloyd. I suppose if it's there to be hit, you have to hit it, but it wasn't particularly wide, was it? No. It was on a friendly length, perhaps, for Lloyd, but, yeah, like I said, not much width. Here is Harris. A bizarre one-sided conversation we're having. Here he comes. Um, balls to Lloyd, who leaves that one alone, and he almost swings his head off its shoulders and looks to see if the bales are still on the stumps because that didn't miss by much. Okay. That goes down as a uh, a good leave. Do you know who we're listening to here? No. no it's a one-sided con. We can only hear one side of the conversation. Yeah. Nick, Nick Webb and Travel. Lovely. Here, here comes Harris. And bowls to Lloyd, who pushes this one to mid-off, where Kieran Carlson is fielding. And there is no run. 
I once did uh, a, a cricket commentary, plenty of time, Nick, don't worry. Uh, I once did a cricket commentary listening to an interview conducted by somebody at Radio Bristol or Radio Gloucestershire uh, with Billy Ocean. Uh, but we didn't know who it was to start with. We had to guess who the interviewer, interviewee was. Once they mentioned the going gets, once they mentioned the going gets tough, we were there. Lloyd defends this next delivery from James Harris. Up towards mid-off, Harris ends a successful over. Four runs from it, but more crucially from a Glamorgan perspective. The wicket of Harry came, leg before wicket for three. That was seven for one. It's now 11 for one, and we have 12 overs left in the day's play. And with an impending update for Radio Wales, I'll make way for the returning Nick Webb. It'll be an absolute privilege to sit alongside him. <laughs> I've got my evening sorted out now, Nick, so I'm feeling quite chipper. Might cost me 15 quid, man. <laughs> Here comes Hamza to bowl, and that's uh, knocked away through the gully area by Rees, and uh, he'll pick up a single for it, 12 for 1. 15 quid a pint in the centre of Cardiff isn't that much, no, is it? <laughs> I've been leaving, I have left my car here for the last two days, but it seems sensible with bags and stuff to bring in in the morning to take the car back to the hotel car park, which is 15 of your finest pounds. All right. Park it in the street outside my house, if you like. I have to walk back a couple of miles. But <laughs> yeah, that's very kind of you. Hamza on his way to bowl to David Lloyd. These days, the Derbyshire captain, and uh, he's pushing that one up towards Carlson at mid-off, but the ball doesn't get there because it's been intercepted by the man at Cavo, who's usually Billy Root or Mason Crane these Crane, days. Yeah. Crane it is who picked up on that occasion. My car also has my big coat in it. All right. Which I might need tonight as well. Fair enough. Hamzet left arm around the wicket. Balls to Lloyd, who drives nicely into the offside, intercepted by Crane, and there is no run. Tribe is again the subfielder for Jamie Mattelroy. Took a nice catch in the first innings to get rid of uh, Madsen. Gorvin may be uh, a seam option in the next game if uh, Mattelroy is injured. Van der Hoogt and Podmore both injured and Miles recalled by Warwickshire. So we'll have to check up on that at the close of the match as... Hamza is in to bowl, whipped off his legs by Lloyd to fine leg. Getting slightly difficult to pick up the uh, course of the ball in this evening's session. There's some rather dark clouds come overhead. Don't gloomy. Think, don't think it was quite as gloomy as it was last night when, uh, when they were driven off. But uh, you wouldn't be surprised to see this play curtailed this evening and Derbyshire would be probably rather grateful to get off. David Lloyd will be quick off the mark I'm sure should the umpires be prevaricating. Hamza over the wicket to Reese through low outside off stump. Cook takes no shot played. The person who thought that was closest to the off stump was Kieran Carlson who's got a pretty similar view to us and we had absolutely no idea. <laughs> He is considerably closer, though. Mason Crane's warming up. Why or, not? As you said yesterday, keeping warm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, umpires coming together. <laughs> Hamza had started his run up. The umpires are going together. <laughs> so look at that! Look at that! Um, look at that meter reading. That everybody off. Everybody off. I'll leave it to you, Nick. 4.5 overs have been bowled. Lloyd and Reese wander towards the pavilion. So they take a reading on the stumps, but uh, 
Sam Northeast obviously saying, oh, any chance? Oh, it's not that dark, is it? Having a chat with uh, umpire Bainton. Batters David Lloyd's halfway off. Glamorgan reluctant to depart the scene. But uh, looks as though Glamorgan won't have time to uh, add to the success of their day so far. Update for BBC Radio Wales. Derbyshire are 13 for 1, chasing a mammoth 401 for victory. More likely, Glamorgan have around about uh, 96 overs tomorrow, plus any time left tonight, but they're heading off, it seems, for bad light, having dismissed uh, the first Derbyshire batsman, Harry Kane, LBW Harris, for three. Earlier, Chris Cook, 126 not out. James Harris, 61 not out. And a half century for Colin Ingram enabled Glamorgan to declare at 361 for seven. Derbyshire chasing 401, 13 for one. And uh, one observation. Well, that may be it. One observation before hmm. I uh, before I go. Um, you, rem you may or may not remember at ten minutes past five last night when Glamorgan first were led off the field by the umpires for bad light. Mm. Uh, Billy Root and Kieran Carlson were halfway up the steps by the time uh, <laughs> uh, the umpires had finally decided it was bad light. They'd made the decision. So uh, any Glamorgan dissent, uh, I think, is, uh, is, is is slightly futile. I'm not suggesting they have shown dissent, but they're just standing on the boundary's edge. And the well, that's fair enough. They've, brought got, to they've them. gone off the playing arena. They're standing by the ropes, just in case further play should be possible. And to be fair, uh, the umpires are still out on the square themselves in conversation with uh, groundsman Robin Saxton. Uh, Lloyd and came. Uh, Lloyd and Reese have, uh, as you'd imagine disappeared there is uh, they're in the shower already <laughs> <laughs> they'd be ill-advised to be in the shower already uh, Glamorgan were briefly awarded a game by default in 1969 oh. but then the uh, the win was later revoked uh, Glamorgan hung around on the final day in Southampton when Hampshire thought the game was off but wasn't, and the um, <laughs> they trotted out about tea time, and there was only one team on the field. Wow! Uh, Glamorgan were initially awarded the points, uh, and then the uh, Teston County Cricket Board, I presume it would have been in those days, yeah. uh, said uh, no for some reason. Thankfully, it didn't determine Glamorgan's success in winning the title, because they would have been uh, extremely cross had they been denied the points and. Uh, uh, that would have been awarded as a default, if you like. Uh, 13 for one then, Derbyshire, chasing 401, or needing to bat for 100 plus overs to uh, complete the draw. And uh, when the Glamorgan team is practicing walking on his hands on the outfield. Oh, excellent. It's uh, Kieran Carlson. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, we'll take a break there. There may not be any further play this evening. If there is, we'll bring it to you. Otherwise, we'll uh, be back on the microphone either at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning or at such time as the weather permits action to resume. Derbyshire, 13 for 1, chasing 4.01 from Dave Fletcher. Dave Pritchard, myself, Nick Webb, at least for the time being. Good evening.
Being news from the middle is that the play is about to restart. We have lost one over as a result of that interruption because of the bad lights. Well, a very good evening, dear listener. Wakey, wakey. We're back here from Sophia Gardens on BBC Sport Online and on the Glamorgan and Derbyshire County websites with the news that cricket is about to reoccur here at Sophia Gardens. Derbyshire are 13 for 1 of 4.5 overs. What uh, Mr Fletcher insists we should call a nominal target of 401 to win because it would have been higher than anything Derbyshire have ever chased before. Notional at best. So to complete the over... Mir Hamza has got a ball left in his over. But we have lost another over. I've no idea how they work these things out, but... Potentially ten overs after this, <laughs> should it remain bright enough. We had various comings and goings last night because of bad light. So uh, Glamorgan was suffering at that point, so it's only fair that Derbyshire should suffer in turn. We all want to see cricket, don't we? We do. And that's what we're here for, And I'm told. There are as many as three, four paying punters left in the ground. Oh, somebody hiding in a corner over there. Look. Oh, someone pretending to be a blue seat. Yes. Five. <laughs> Uh, so no one could really complain about the supporters from going home because A, it looked very much as though there wouldn't be any more play and B, it's blooming cold out there. Yeah, it's not nice, is it? Hamza into the left-handed, Reese on five, not out. And he comes, balls, and Reese drives to Carlson at mid on. No run, end of an over that's taken about half an hour. 13 for one, ten overs possibly remaining here on BBC Sport Online. Remarkable. Yes, well, ten more overs to survive, or until it gets so dark that we can't see the noses in front of our faces. There's a change of bowling. And, and we're going uh, to see Mason Crane. Mason Crane. Understandable, I think. Yes, it's liable to keep them out there longer. Bowling spin. And uh, also, he bowled very well in the first innings, the four for 60. But, uh, well, the turn is even slower than... I mean, it wasn't hugely reliable, f sharp turn on the first couple of days, although uh, he did uh, bowl a couple of gorgeous balls at the Derbyshire tail-enders to baffle and bemuse them. And he's going to have another crack at the top order this time. Why not? Reese on five, Lloyd on five, Lloyd on strike... One slip, and Crane is in, and oof, but of a top edge, really, went over the wicketkeeper's head, or just to his left, uh, as he tried to sweep it there, Lloyd, and uh, he picks up a couple of runs, but it was uh, a couple of heart-in-mouth runs for the Derbyshire skipper. He was, of course, aiming for the helmet behind the keeper, in which case he'd have picked up five. Oh, that would have been great, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> the deliberate... Sweep over your own head. Crane is in again and um, balls. And this one is uh, cut away to the cover boundary. There is cover there. It's James Harris. And they come, go through for a single. Lloyd moves to eight. 16 for one. Not hanging about again, David Lloyd. Eight from nine. Tens not to hang about. Mind you, Lewis Reese's five have come off ten. The, this innings is very much in its infancy. Just... In the sixth over. It is a little bit brighter, I'll give you that. It's the, uh, you can't, the scoreboard tends to glow when it gets really dark. As Crane is in and bowls to Reese, who just guides that out into the offside, and there is no run. It's Billy Root at point. Yes, he's got a, a polishing towel flapping out of the back Did of his Did you see them bring the towel Crane. out? I'll, I thought it was excellent. Crane bowls, that one is guided into the leg side. They're going to go through for a quick single. Many of them have got towels. Mm. Uh, largely, as it goes on to 17 for one, because 
Grant Bradburn brought a huge white towel out and just said, well, just tear that up. And they were tearing, oh, it, tearing it up out in the middle <laughs> and passing it round so that everybody could have a towel. Which means they came out initially without towels, which I thought was slightly strange, but they're all, they're all fully toweled up. As they used to say in the Sweeney, as this next one is uh, turned into the lakeside by David Lloyd. Might been, they might have been tooled up back in, <laughs> back in the uh, 70s. 17 for one, for the 384 to win. And in comes Mason Crane. Bowls. Oh, that one there was a little flipper, I think, because it certainly skidded on a bit as Lloyd plays it out into the offside. You might have noticed a moment of panic in my voice. Lloyd moves on to nine. Reese has six. Derbyshire are 18 for one. Yes, you couldn't have got more disparate deliveries than the ones with which he uh, dismissed. 9-10, Jack. Or the last three wickets anyway yesterday. One was a filthy full toss, then uh, a beautiful googly to get rid of uh, Connors, and uh, then a ripping leg break for the last wicket. Double spin. Double spin. That might have been the uh, contingent on which Part they were the brought back out. Uh, <laughs> Amza can bowl his one ball and then he'll have to bowl the spin if you want to stay on. Did they ask him to bowl it wide of the off stump? <laughs> can, you bo can you bowl a sp uh, something of slow left arm, uh, please, Mayor? What? <laughs> <laughs> so Carlson is going to uh, have uh, however many overs we've got left from the Cathedral Road End. And he'll be bowling to uh, his former skipper, David Lloyd, on nine not out. And he's bowling with a slip and a short leg. And Carlson bowls short and flat and pulled away on the onside for a single out to James Harris, lurking behind the umpire and in front of the grandstand. Lloyd moves into double figures. He has 10. It's 19 for one. Reese slightly less aggressive. Sam Northeast pulls off the helmet of one of his teammates and puts it behind Chris Cook and returns to slip. Tribe is at short extra cover as Carlson bowls short of a length. Cut away chase for Dan Douthwaite but the ball is going to reach when that one as it reaches the uh, backward point boundary in front of the scoreboard and uh, Rees in turn moves into double figures on uh, 10 not out nice shot from Lewis Rees that just waited for it cut it away 23 for one apologies for a slight buzz on the line I hope it's not affecting Enjoyment too much as Carlson bowls and Reese defends on the offside and there's no run. Not bothering me at all, Nick. You're all right. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can't get to the bottom without taking everything to bits, which would probably stop the commentary. Carlson to Reese hasn't quite found his length yet. That was short and uh, nudged into the offside. Tribe fields from cover and. Uh, presume we'll see Tribe out there for the remainder of uh, this game by the look of it. As it is announced right at the start, Jamie McElroy, one of Glamorgan's bowlers, is off the shoulder injury as Reese plays on the offside. No run. 23 for one. Target is 3.7, a three, a further 3.77. Initial run rate, asking rate was 3.58. Carlson again drops it short. Reese doesn't cash in this time as he pokes it again straight to try but cover. And Carlson's over has cost five as Crane's opening over also did. I see Leverkusen have won the German title without losing a game. They're still in the uh, German Cup. They're in the Cup final. Mm. They're still in the... Uh, you wait for whatever it's called on a Thursday. That's an absolutely remarkable effort. 
Well done to Bayer Leverkusen. These two teams both unbeaten themselves, of course, as uh, Mason Crane begins a new over, and uh, it's cut out into the offside. The ball is fielded pretty quickly there by uh, Ol Hassan. But they do scamper through for a single. David Lloyd moves on to 11. 24 for one. They're still going late into the evening at Bristol as well, where Gloucestershire are 97 for four, needing another 401. Ollie Price, 44 not out. Crane in again. Balls to the left-handed Lewis Reese, who turns this back of a square on the leg side. Harris comes in off the boundary. They only get a single. Reese joins Lloyd on 11 25. For one. Leicester battling to avoid defeat against Sussex. 86 for one in their second innings, 270 runs in arrears. In comes Crane again and bowls to Lloyd. He drives that in between the man at extra cover and mid off. And it goes all the way for four. I'm not sure whether it was a bump ball, but it. I believe so. Yeah, Mason Crane doesn't seem to think so. Hmm. So I'd like to see, will we see that again? Let's have a look. I'm not sure we'll get to see it. I'm not sure that it was, Ooh, you know. Him, yeah. I'm not sure that it was. Crane's likely to be right than I am. Uh, again, we are, he has his back to us, David Lloyd. He's on to 15, 29 for one. Going to continue to play his shots. As Crane bowls trip, and this one is guided out into the offside. All the way along the floor. Not quite sure why Crane was as excited by that one as he was with the previous one. Harris does the fielding. Lloyd moves on to 16. And Derbyshire already up to 30. Oh, dear. They're, uh, they're making large inroads mm. into this notional target of 300. Well, of 401. A further 371 runs away. It's a very amusing <coughs> scorecard at Northampton. Excellent. Will we chuckle? <laughs> Her fifth ball of the Mason Crane over balls to Lewis Reese, who has a bit of a waft of that outside the off stump. It goes through to the keeper, Chris Cook. Northamptonshire, 552 for six declared. Middlesex, 553 for two. Middlesex lead by one. <laughs> yes. Could be a draw there. Uh, as Crane bowls to Reese, that one is turning to the leg side. Fernandez got a century. Holden is 211 not out. And some chap you may have heard of called Leas deploys 196 not out overnight. Yes. May he prosper on the flat pitches of Wantage Road. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure whether we might as well write uh, a draw down for next week's game as well on that, uh, that evidence. Glamorgan at Northampton. Every game at Dar Derby last year, apart from one, was a draw. And that was the one that was won by Worcestershire first game of the season. Here comes Kieran Carlson from the Cathedral Road end. To bowl outside off stump. Lloyd plays no shot. The uh, I thought there might be some of the uh, ultra marathon runners from the Big Moose still charity going. lot still going. <laughs> we haven't seen any runners recently, as uh, that's rather ugly off drive from uh, David Lloyd, if he doesn't mind me saying so. It's a dot ball. I won't tell him if you don't. Fair enough. So. Uh, Carlson with the chance to bowl a few overs in the evening half light. Bowling to David Lloyd, 16 not out, and Lloyd steps back and cuts and hits it straight to backward point, and there's no run. In uh, Division 1, good heavens, they're still playing at Chelmsford. Essex, 2.29 for four in their second innings, a lead of 346 over Kent. Carlson bowls and uh, Lloyd knocks it into a large gap in the covers and jogs through for a single. Jordan Cox has got a century for Essex in that match. Lead Kent by 3 4 6. So, presumably a declaration early in the morning at Chelmsford, weather permitting. Carlson round the wicket to Lewis Reese, the left hander. 
two slips, hands in pockets until the last minute. And Reese back on his stumps to defend. Sun's out. Yeah. Scorchio. <laughs> More like Coolio. Uh, Hampshire, 39 for two in their second innings. Still 78 short of avoiding an innings defeat against the Lankies. As Reese defends on the offside and the shadows emerge across the fire gardens. Not... 151 for 7 in their second innings, they leading Worcestershire by 195. They do like a second innings collapse, oh, don't they? Nottinghamshire. That, that's a filthy collapse as well. They were 125 for 1 at one point. Not as bad as last week's when they were out for double figures, but they do like They've a collapse. 6 for 26 in the evening. And uh, Worcestershire's Nathan Smith has taken four of them. Not a familiar name. No. Surrey b looking to press home for victory against Somerset. As Crane starts a new over. He does. You're absolutely right. I should pay attention. No, no, he doesn't because David Lloyd <laughs> stepped away. I don't need to pay as much attention. Somerset are 204 for six in their second innings, but that is only a lead of 61 runs going into the final day. Nathan Smith is a uh, New Zealander. Ah. So he's there overseas, born in Otago. Or is it Otago? Let's call the whole thing off. The first <laughs> delivery was uh, left alone of the new Mason Crane over by David Lloyd to go through to the keeper. Tomato. Uh, Durham made 517 against Warwickshire, but are still following on, and they're 12 for two in their second innings. <laughs> oh dear. Here comes, for shame, here comes Mason Crane Bowles to Lloyd, who's edged it, and it's not too far away from the fielder at slip. He, he's going to get four runs for it, I fancy. Yeah, the ball just about reaches the boundary rope, but that wasn't far away at all. From Slip, is it is it northeast in there? Ingram. Ingram, I beg your pardon. Colin Ingram moved away to his right, but couldn't yes. quite get there. Fling himself. Second slip might have been in the bread basket. Durham still 169 behind, going into the final day. 35 for one now, and this next delivery from Crane is just guided into the offside by Lloyd for a single. 36 for one. Crane seems to expect a, a wicket every ball. Andrew Salter used to be quite uh, enthusiastic, arm in the air, Glamorgan's uh, previous spinner. Uh, uh, yes, Jack Morley's like that, from, judging from the pre-season friendly as Mason Crane bowls. There we go, his arms are up. It's defended by Lewis Reese into the ground and fielded by a Tribe. Carlson bouncing away. They're all having fun out there, aren't they? Probably trying to keep himself warm I since he so. doesn't appear to have uh, long sleeves on. Two balls left of the crane over. First of those is defended by Reese out into the offside. Reese has 11. Lloyd has double that. He's got 22. Derbyshire 36 for one. If they could get, get that down to a 300 before the close. <laughs> they might have a chance. Uh, five overs remaining today. There's a sweep shot coming out from uh, Lewis Reese. There is a man down there at uh, long leg. It's James Harris. And they come back for a comfortable two. Reese moves to 13. 38 for one at the end of the over. Lloyd has 22. And five overs to go. And for completeness, Derbyshire need 363 to win. Yes, well, these two uh, going nicely at the moment. And welcome to listeners to uh, Five Sports Extra with Derbyshire on 38 for one, needing 401 to win. We had a delay for bad light, but it has improved slightly and uh, back out there with Glamorgan bowling spin possibly under umpire's instruction in these uh, closing overs of the day as Carlson starts a new over. 
to his former compadre, David Lloyd, who takes another run to move on to 23, slashing it out towards the cover point boundary. Derbyshire 39 for one, having lost the wicket of Harry Kame. Leg before to James Harris for three, with the score on seven. Glamorgan eventually declared their uh, second innings at 361 for seven. As Carlson comes around the wicket to the left-handed Reese, who uh, blocks that one back to the bowler. With Chris Cook, 126 not out. James Harris was 61 not out. And a couple of big partnerships in the Glamorgan innings if they, after they had been at one stage in some difficulty. As that's pushed away on the leg side. And there's no run for Lewis Reese. Glamorgan were 136 for 6, leading by 175. The, we thought at that point the game was reasonably well balanced. As, uh, that is defended by Reese, and there's no run. But a century stand between Dan Douthwaite, who made 32, and Chris Cook. And that was followed by a stand of 116 unbeaten between Cook and uh, Harris. Harris, 61 not out, his highest score in this spell back with Glamorgan. As, uh, that's driven into the offside by Reese, Tumbling stop by the young sub to try but cover and there's no run. Cook 126 not out. He became... Uh, oh, that, that was the 1,000th first class century recorded by Glamorgan. As Carlson bowls and Reese defends. Who of course are relative newcomers to the uh, first class scene as recently as 1921. And the over, Derbyshire, <laughs> 39 for one. 11 overs gone, potentially four to go. 362 more for Derbyshire to win. And, uh, well, Oof. David Lloyd doesn't seem to have been unduly becalmed by the situation. A run of all. He's 23. Uh, has had a, a, the odd scare here and there. A, a sweep shot that went straight over the wicketkeeper's head. And an edge... Both off Mason Crane down to uh, find third man for a boundary. Four overs to go, light permitting. Mason Crane bowls to Lloyd, who guides this out to the cover boundary, where James Harris will do the fielding. If you were wondering, if you've just joined us, uh, whether we've turned our effects microphone off to uh, <laughs> save us from the noise of the crowd... Uh, most of them went when it rained, uh, in fairness, and I, I can't say I blame them. Although it's been sunny for most of the day, it's still a little bit chilly once that sun disappears here in uh, South Wales. Beautiful part of the world, of course, and we all love it. As Crane is in and bowls to uh, Lewis Rees, who's flicking to the leg side, hits Asa Tribe under the helmet at short leg. And as a result, there is no run. It's been a chilly weekend, hasn't it, after a very pleasant Friday. But uh, the spectators have been wrapped up under several layers all weekend. The next delivery is uh, pushed into the offside by Lewis Rees. There is no run, as it's uh, fielded there by Mia Hamza. Well, the good thing is, I haven't been wet on the outside uh, at all during this trip. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, we haven't been caught in any rain, which is great. That one is uh, guided down to a short third man by Lewis Rees, fielded by Billy Root. And we have been beautifully refreshed in the evening, which is exactly how it should be. We, we hadn't planned on being here tonight, necessarily, as this next delivery from Crane is driven by... Uh, Lewis Rees straight to Mir Hamza. There was a school of thought that we might have been finished by now, but uh, I think it would be remiss of me not to suggest that this pitch, which was doing all sorts, turned square before lunch on day one, has flattened out considerably as Crane bolts. It strikes the pad of Lewis Rees, big appeal, and it's uh, outside off, says umpire Neil Bainton, who always gives you a little clue. Not always, but more often than not, gives you a little clue as to why that might not have been uh, out. And he says it's hit him outside the line of the off stump. I think that's probably it, fair enough. It'd be right. 
I think that's probably fair enough. And the evidence of the replay, which video stream viewers, it was a good six, nine inches outside off stump at yeah. least, I think. Yeah. It would, probably would have hit the stumps. There is another ah, consultation between there, the there umpires, yeah, and it looks as though that is going terminal. to be the end of the day's play as we leave for the second time for bad light with only three overs remaining. We've done well to get this far, I think. On a satisfied Derbyshire 40-4-1. Glamorgan in particular will hope that the uh, scheduled rain around about breakfast time doesn't cause too much of a delay tomorrow and that uh, we can be back with full commentary from 11 o'clock or close to it. So, Glamorgan, 361 for seven declared in their second innings, having started overnight at 74 for four. Ingram made 51, run out. Cook was not out, 126. A century stand with Douthwaite, who made 32. Harris made 61, not out. Glamorgan declared at one of the previous weather breaks, and uh, that set Derbyshire 401 potentially to win, or Glamorgan 112 overs uh, potentially to take 10 wickets. They've lost a few more of those to bad light. After 12 overs, Derbyshire 40 for one. They lost Harry Kane leg before to James Harris for three. David Lloyd, though, the former Glamorgan captain, now the Derbyshire captain, is 24 not out. Lewis Rees is 13 not out. And uh, that looks like the end of entertainment for today. Beautifully done, Nick. Beautifully done. From Dav Pritchard, from uh, Dave Fletcher of BBC Radio Derby and myself, Nick Webb, we will be back, God willing, at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning on BBC Sport Online. No star. With the light having deteriorated once again, that is the close of play for today. Thank you everyone for your company as you shortly prepare to leave Sapphire Gardens. Please remember to take all of your belongings with you and to make an unhurried and safe departure from the stadium. A reminder that play will be resuming at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning and we look forward to seeing you then. If you can't be with us, we hope you have a safe onward journey. Once again, many thanks to Jochen Valdian for your support. Good evening. Nosso Infant.